please be seated. Thank you very much, media. We will start with a quick opening prayer. The team advised that I give the prayer. I don't know if when I retire from journalism, I'll become a pastor. But let's bow our heads for a quick prayer. Our dear Lord, we thank you for a time like this to deliberate on economic transformation for the future and sake of Ghana, our motherland. We thank you for the gifts you've given us in the form of leaders who have the nation at heart to drive a conversation that will bring transformation. We ask for wisdom for the moderators and the MC. We ask for insight for the speakers and the panelists. We ask for understanding for the audience. At the end of the day, let the right message be communicated and we'll be careful to give you the glory. This we ask through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please put your hands together for yourselves as we welcome you to the National Economic Summit happening here on the 2nd of February, live Mevin Peak Ambassador Hotel in Accra, Ghana. And for those, the sake of those who are not here, let's give a big round of applause for all our viewers online. My name is Bernard Koku Avle. I am the MC for the program. There are four big panel discussions, four very excellent moderators, two co-MCs, and a lot of excited audience. Yes, if you're happy, put your hands together. My good friend Adakabre Frimpon Manso, accompanied by Akusia High Tension, will be coordinating for our online viewers with their commentaries and summaries throughout the program. Whilst this is not on the program, I think it's important to acknowledge a few key people. I want to first welcome again the founder and leader of the movement for change and convener of the summit, Alan Kujocha Manting, accompanied by his wife. Let's stand together for him. We are privileged to have the Secretary General of the TUC, Dr. Yaoban, here with us. Round of applause. The President of the Ghana Private Enterprise Federation, Nana Osaibo, is also here with us. We are very happy to have diplomat, former ambassador to US and Japan, Excellency Ambassador Beiwa here with us. CEO of the Ghana Association of Bankers, Dr. John Iwa here with us. Former flag bearer of the CPP, and I think now he is the convener of a very important organization called the National Interest Movement, Dr. Michael Abu Sakara Foster. We have an economist in whom I am well pleased. He is an independent economic consultant, Dr. John Kwachi. Some of our distinguished speakers include investment and finance analyst, Mr. Winslow Sakifu. Round of applause, please. A whole raft of leaders from the private sector are here. I'm happy to announce that we have the president of the Ghana Union Traders Association, Dr. Joseph Obing. He's accompanied by his executives. We are very privileged to have him here as well. We are also happy to have a list of former members of parliament, former ministers of state, too many to mention. They should just give us a wave from wherever they are seated. I see my good friend Boniface Abubakar Sadiq and the rest of them. Thank you very much indeed. This program is a nonpartisan platform to discuss important economic issues. Ghana is in the middle of an IMF program. The country has been saddled with jobless growth, which has not led to economic transformation. The question for the people in the 40s and 50s was the question of political independence. The question for our time is development and economic transformation. And under the auspices of the movement for change, we are here to address that critical question, which has to be answered if the potential of Ghana has to be achieved. So the purpose of this summit is to bring diverse minds on four important thematic areas. Macroeconomic environment, which is the basis for every economic development. Industrial transformation, which has been at the heart of the convener of this meeting's work. We would also talk about a new agric revolution and tourism, which is seen as one of the most important pillars for national transformation. 
These discourses will be held before a live audience and broadcast live on many TV and radio stations. We urge you to tune in. If you're watching online, please click and share the link. Let's have a fantastic time as we chart a path for Ghana's economic development. Without further ado, it is my singular honor to introduce and welcome, without reading a long speech, the founder and leader of the Movement for Change and convener of the summit, Ghana's longest serving trade minister, former ambassador to the US, and nearly WTO DG, an economist and a lawyer of international recognition. Please rise to welcome the man of the moment, the Honorable Alan John Kujo Cheremating, to bring us opening remarks and to officially declare the summit open. Please, it's a long walk. It's a long walk. Put your hands together. Keep clapping. Let the applause continue. Let the applause continue. As he joins us to open the summit. Please, please sit. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed an honor to have the privilege of hosting a gathering of such distinguished personalities from across the length and breadth of our country. I'm humbled, but at the same time elated for your kind acceptance of my invitation to attend this very important event. I'm truly grateful. This summit has been convened as a result of a number of key considerations. First, the need to mobilize all talents in our country towards the development of our dear motherland, irrespective of our political, religious, or ethnic affiliation. Second, there's a compelling desire by a majority of Ghanaians to move Ghana beyond party manifestos towards the formulation of a national development plan, which all Ghanaians can, can sign up to. Thirdly, the majority of Ghanaians are deeply worried about our current economic circumstances and are looking for an opportunity to contribute ideas to finding solutions to our problems. It is against the foregoing background that over the last few months, I have assembled a team of some of the best and brightest in our country from different fields of specialization to formulate a plan that will move Ghana from poverty to prosperity. The outcome of these consultations has been the development of what I have christened as the Great Transformational Plan, GTP. The plan is anchored on 15 pillars, which have been grouped under five clusters, namely economic, infrastructure, social services, governance, and behavioral and attitudinal change. The economic cluster of the GTP serves as the working document for our conversation today. The unique feature of this document, of this GTP, which will be reflected in the presentations, is that it focuses on solutions rather than debating the causes of our problems. There's absolutely no doubt that we have had the opportunity as a people to diagnose extensively the causes of our problems in the country. What Ghanaians are looking for now are solutions to these problems. It will therefore be apparent to you as participants that the content of our discussions will be solution-oriented. The presentations would focus primarily on very specific policy recommendations or prescriptions. In evaluating the viability 
of the prescriptions that we will present today. It is important for us to appreciate the integrated nature of the problems that confront us. And therefore, what you find contained in the four other clusters, aside from the economic clusters, have an impact on our economy. For example, some of the key governance challenges contribute directly to the economic crisis we find ourselves today. I'm sure if we are able to abate the level of corruption, we may not need to borrow as much as we've done. In the light of this, there will be another summit which will soon convene to discuss the governance cluster to enable us to have a more integrated solution to address our economic challenges. But be that as it may, I'm sure you all agree with me that it is appropriate that we start this summit first by focusing on the economic cluster. It is my fervent hope that we will have a constructive and enriching dialogue at this summit, which, as advertised, is a nonpartisan gathering of Ghanaians. At the end of the day, Ghanaians would want to know from this summit the following. One, how the country would be reset on a new path to prosperity from the economic ditch in which we currently find ourselves. Two, what specifically will be done to generate much more wealth in our country? And how this wealth will be distributed, distributed among all of us so that it is truly inclusive? Three, when, how, and who will be punished for the collective acts of misappropriation and misdeeds, misdeeds under successive administrations. As a politician, it is true that I'm fighting for power, but it is equally true that I'm fighting for a noble cause, which is to bring economic prosperity to our nation. This, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is my motivation in convening this summit. I do hope that it is also your motivation in agreeing to participate in this very important summit. I wish you all very successful deliberation and would like on this note to formally declare the summit duly opened. I thank you and God bless you. Please put your hands together one more time for the summit convener, who is also the founder and leader of the Movement for Change, the Honorable Alan John Kojucha Martin. Put your hands together. The clarion call has been sounded. The coordinates for the summit have been well set out. The objectives have been laid out and clear, and we are ready. To set us off, we're going to set up the first panel discussion, which will be moderated by a man who's been working in the financial sector for many years. He is currently the CEO of the Ghana Association of Bankers. Incidentally, I interviewed him on radio yesterday, and the interview was very interesting. His two speakers on this panel, as the convener said, will be deliberating on the macroeconomic environment. The way we've arranged these topics We've clustered them into key thematic areas. So distinguished audience, cluster one is on inflation, low competitive interest rate, stable currency, expenditure management and control, all under the rubric of the macro environment. We also have the second aspect of that, 
which is increasing financing for SMEs, revenue, mobilization, debt sustainability management under the same rubric. Each speaker will speak for a maximum of 15 minutes. The moderator will moderate around 30 minutes before we engage the audience if we have to. To engage our online audience while we transform the stage to make it fit for the panel discussion, I want to invite from the back to remain at the back, my very good sister and friend to engage our online audiences, Akusia High Tension. Let's put down together for Akusia. Thank you so much, Benadavle. Thank you. Yama yen sem mano. Bowen sem emma Benadavle. Very good. Yeah, yeah, they better look all dilates. You know, send your baby will be able to free her corner. What see program no as say National Economic Summit. I will see for the moon. You know, I see. Yeah, 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 be brewa ha ye be fa adun afo oman no ho oman ni sikasem ene oman ni mpunto o oman ni nkan ko se de be ya ye nyina ye ho beto ye enu nti ene ye wa ha eni nti wa ba tena se na program na ye ye no nya bi bi fefrim wo be fri ha ko no adun bi ya wo wo e de fa wan kasa wo man ho ne ye wo ye e be bo oman no de ye wo ye yi sinto e mo oman no wo be sesa wa adun efri ho ne ejidi ye pa se Media stations be brave wa high streaming live and so e wa other social media platform ni nyina so into do do na e sheye Ghana mpanyimfo cabinet eni nanan mu nyina ne ye wasade ye 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 menso masade ya e ha dwen a omane enkon kai no e ho komo e na ye di it oxy kabi bi kakra na ye nto aso good enti abusu afo interactions no kakra be koso e di amam jidi ye pa se mu suya de ye and yeah, Papa and Chamartin, so what Casa, your political parties are would be brave and a war may be so and any vision, yeah, a kutanoa or semi ba may implement it, but still, baby, our money, a team one, a team independence day and check, now you celebrate it. You will see, I will say natural resources, yeah, your media ma or may ye, and so still, it took wine, crop one mile so, quadilla la sula la, yeah, the boy, man, mukrana, so. Ye who the edi sika yi e ye biya e day eni ye ye e di afam day solution eni ye wo e di ma ye ma ino ni se biya o biya ka problems ni so so ka bi we sa ngo se o so bua beng na o di bua o ma ino ami ye tumi akong kanti ane ya tina si ya be fa o ma no ho adrain o ma no ho adrain ena ye ba be fa into what take a decision one way sa na ufuse emwa e tu de biya. No one sacra when Sarah no kakra. So what you are seeing? Me just seeing you now. You are seeing us. Any of our some so what you are seeing, mommy. Me dance it pa. You come no one way. Sarah no one. So there be a more. We should develop countries. No one. Sarah no more. No dynamics. Eba sacra eba. I was on my own, and she said, "Yeah, about to move, be be moved. We should never be alone. I'm a wawa. Now, what's the crowd? Why do you think I can't see? And you made the name be free. How can I? Yeah, you know, you be so yadi. Eh, be a new name. But in church, check a crowd. CEOs name paying for. Oh, my dear, companies are not at the bare minimum. We should be nyia at the so yadi. A crowd so at the a free mo. Yeah, yeah. Politics. Eh, waha. It's a say program no. Yeah, the country is saying your politics. Any be ye a ye solution a ye be pe a di ama omano. Bernard love. Ah, Bernard. What be juma wati? Inti ya usi afwe mo ya nsem efa ma Bernard Avle. Wa bra wa sign e. So mti ya di ya wo e chwe ya. Or the bra funi ben ba muntu wo ya. Na chesi ya di loka no. En suwa wo wamo. Send ya be yo biya be free ha no. O bet ya si ya mo ya nsem biyo. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. We want to now invite Mr. John Ewa, who's the moderator for this session. Put your hands together for Mr. John Ewa, Chief Executive of the Ghana Association of Bankers with many years' experience in the banking sector. And he will take his seat. And we invite our two panel members, Dr. John Kwachi, an independent economic consultant. Please put your hands together. Please come upstage. 
many years of experience with the IMF, working in various capacities. And of course, Mr. Winslow Sakifu, who is a finance and investment analyst. Please put your hands together for him as well. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Wua, you have the floor. You are going to allow 15 minutes maximum presentation from each of them. You have about 30 minutes panel discussion. Let's wish him good luck and be praying for him. Put your hands together for him one more time. Thank you very much, Bernard. Thank you, Honorable Alan, for this honor done all of us. And as you know, the people seated here, uh, uh, as has already been said, non-politicians, but people who have significant stake in the progress um, of the country. Um, Dr. Kwache uh, needs no introduction. Um, he's a well-known economist, and he's been quite vocal on economic matters um, as it impacts our um, economy or country. The subject matter for this summit, and particularly for this cluster of the discussion, um, it has not been selected, I'm sure, by the organizers by accident, because everything borders on the economy. If we get the governance right, it's the economy that will benefit. If we get investment right, is the economy that will benefit. If the financial system is right, it's the economy that will benefit. So we have our experts here. Dr. Kwachi will start the discussion with the presentation. And we have our time properly laid out by our chief moderator, Mr. Bernard Davle. So Dr. Kwachi, you have 15 minutes after yours. Please, if you have questions, we'll open the floor for a few questions. You keep your questions brief. When they are done, you file in the aisle, and you let us you identify yourself by just raising your hand and file in the aisle, and then we'll give you opportunity to ask questions. I'll ask just one or two to prove further, you know, in the presentation that they will be delivering. So, Dr. Kwachi, after you. Yeah. So, after uh, Dr. Kwachi's 15 minutes, uh, Mr. Maslus Akifio will then um, pick up the mantle and also take the next 15 minutes. Then we'll dedicate the remaining 30 minutes for the tough discussions about the solutions Honorable Alan Chamartin has talked about. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Moderator. I must say that um, I am happy to be part of this uh, summit because, um, as uh, Alan has said, we want to mobilize uh, the opinion of uh, uh, Ghanaians. Um, we want to avoid the past mistakes that we have made, whereby um, you know, we have this winner-takes-all syndrome, and every, any party that wins power ignores about 50% of the human capacity in this country. We all want to come together to solve the problems of uh, Ghana. Well, I have been assigned to talk on um, well, the macroeconomic environment, but specifically inflation, low competitive interest rates, stable currency, uh, expenditure management and control. And I did a complete paper where I had the problems as well as the solutions. But as we have been reminded, um, as Ghanaians, we know our problems. So let's go straight you know, to, to look at the solutions. And especially because I have just 15 minutes to do the presentation. Please. So I make the point that uh, 66 years after independence, Ghana's uh, economy has seen a little trend. And because of that, we have narrow industrial base. We export largely raw materials. We are heavily dependent on imports. We have food insecurity, vulnerability to shocks, high unemployment, high indebtedness, aid dependence, pervasive poverty. I mean, you can go on and on and on. Um, please go, go ahead. Now, this, we have all these problems 
in spite of the fact that uh, we have a huge endowment of natural and human resources. In fact, some of us have data that shows that our total natural resource wealth on the ground is over $10 trillion. $10 trillion. But we are sitting on it, and we are poor, you know, with inflicted poverty on us above, above uh, ground. So we need, well, for decades, we have been implementing orthodox non-transformational policies, and this has contributed to the economic malaise. So clearly, we cannot continue to pursue the same policies and expect different uh, outcomes. There's a need for a paradigm shift in our policies if we are to achieve uh, better outcomes. And the Great Transformation Plan is seen as a well-directed response you know, to uh, this need. Uh, the GTP aims to break with the past and chart a new path of transforming the Ghanaian economy into a vibrant, resilient, export-oriented, self-reliant, and private sector-driven economy, eventually positioned beyond aid, debt, and poverty. I think this is where we want to take the Ghanaian economy. Now, these outcomes will be achieved through well-spelled-out, cross-cutting, inclusive policies and strategies. We expect the policies under the GTP uh, to be guided by the state providing a conducive environment for the private sector to thrive and lead the uh, jobs and wealth creation. Now, more importantly, the GTP should try and internalize Ghana's development by fully harnessing the country's resources and capacities to support internally generated or homegrown policies. Now, we all know that a conducive macroeconomic environment is necessary to promote a savings, investment, and economic growth. So macroeconomic stability is an important component of the GDP. As I said, I'm supposed to speak on inflation, low competitive interest rates, stable currency, expenditure management, but I'll go on straight to the solutions to the problems because we all know uh, where the problems can come from, the causes of the problems. Please, go ahead. So this is the problem. Ghana has had persistent inflation, you know, forever. Um, and we know the adverse consequences of inflation and so on. But let's go on to the solutions. So that's the problem. Let's go on to the solutions, please. Faster. Well, this is our inflation profile recently. 2016, we, we started at 15.4. We took it down to, by 2019, to 7.9. Then started going up all the way 2022-54. Uh, as of end uh, 2023, it was down to 23.2. But that's the inflation profile. Please, let's go on. Again, that's the profile, inflation profile. Let's go on. Ghana has had higher inflation than our ECOWAS peers. Um, so we cannot attribute it all to external factors. There must be something wrong with uh, domestic economic management because the other countries are experiencing the same uh, shocks, external shocks that we are also experiencing. Now, this is uh, data for other countries in the ECOWAS region, and if you compare, you will see that Ghana's inflation on average has been higher. Please, let's go on. Let's go, go, let's go ahead. Well, I've written something on the way Bank of Ghana manages inflation by using the inflation uh, targeting framework, essentially manipulating interest rates. And that has contributed to the high, you know, well, our high interest rates in the country, high cost of, uh, you know, doing business. So the question is whether the IT framework is appropriate, especially when you are using it exclusively as the Bank of Ghana has been doing. Please, let's go on. Let's go on. So these are the solutions I've proposed. Uh, we, should, we should adopt a, a comprehensive approach to fight inflation because the IT framework, I don't believe that uh, using it exclusively has been effective enough. Um, so we, I believe that 
we should supplement the IT framework with measures that directly target the key uh, supply or cost drivers of inflation in Ghana. Of course, demand pressures must also be controlled as well. And that is why monetary financing of the budget should be strictly controlled. In fact, under the IMF program, um, the IMF has imposed a zero ceiling on Bank of Ghana lending to government. But the Bank of Ghana Act still has 5% uh, ceiling. Please let me go ahead. Now, I have detailed on the exchange rate stability that we need to try and stabilize the exchange rate so that we reduce the pass-through uh, to import uh, uh, prices. Uh, and then food. We have to do something about food, fuel, and transport, because they are key drivers of inflation. Now, when you talk about food, if you look at our CPI basket, almost 44% of it is food. In other words, as Ghanaians, on average, 44% um, of uh, our monthly budget goes to food. So if you are able to reduce uh, food prices in this country, you'll be able to bring down inflation drastically. Uh, steps should be taken to increase uh, labor productivity across the public sector. Uh, because, you know, if you pay wages which are not matched by productivity, that will be a source of inflation. Um, and we should take steps to improve the supply chain you know, across, uh, across the country to reduce uh, disparities in prices. Sometimes you have some goods uh, in the rural areas or in the northern part being cheap, but if you come down here, it's, uh, it's uh, more expensive. Now, low and competitive interest rates. Again, let's keep the problem. Please, can we go ahead? Well, this is, I mean, data on interest rates, um, monetary policy rate. Uh, well, I have the latest data after, after the Monetary Policy Committee meeting, which is 29%. You look at the other interest rates, almost all of them about 30, 30%. You cannot be a competitive country when your interest rates are above 30%. How many businesses can borrow at 30% and be able to make, a, you know, profit? Um, so we need to do something about it. Well, let me say something about the monetary policy rate, which is 29%, because that is a driver of other interest rates. It's, it's a benchmark rate. So I was really disappointed when the MPC reduced the policy rate to, from 30% to just 29%. I was expecting them to decrease by at least 250 basis points, because that is a driver of inflation of uh, interest rates in this country. Please, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. The causes of um, high interest rates in this country. Look, I place it at the doorsteps of government, Bank of Ghana, and then commercial banks. But let's go ahead. Let's go ahead, please. Let's go ahead to propose solutions. Um, finding effective solutions to the persistent high interest rate should be a policy priority to reduce the uh, production costs, engender private sector investments, and improve the competitiveness of the Ghanaian economy. I believe that the strategy to achieve this objective should involve collaborative efforts by government, Bank of Ghana, and then the commercial banks. First, well, first, government should reduce its borrowing from banks by, through fiscal consolidation um, in order to help bring uh, down interest. Because what government has been doing that is been competing, you know, for loanable funds. And this drives up uh, interest rates. Uh, let's go ahead. Now, government should streamline bank taxes to reduce associated costs with the parcel. There are too many taxes on, on even the banks, and they pass it on to in higher interest rates. Government should reduce, well, I said, primary reserve requirement, because that's a cost to banks. Um, then Bank of Ghana, as I said, should review the IT framework to ensure that the policy rate does not place unjustified pressure on other interest rates. I believe that interest rates are prohibitively high, and they are suffocating this economy. So we should do something about that. 
Bank of Ghana should pressurize the Credit Reference Bureau uh, to help improve customer information because if you don't have enough information about customers, you know, that uh, increases uh, the rate of uh, loan default and so on. And then the deposit insurance scheme also should be activated. Please, let's go on. Bank of Ghana and government should provide financial support to parallel specialized financial institutions such as the rural banks, National Development Bank, and so on, and subsidize credit to small and medium scale enterprises because they cannot get a favorable rates from banks. Okay. Let's go on. Now, the stable currency. Again, let's go to the solutions. We know why we have. Um, you know, unstable currency. So let's go on. Well, this is the exchange rate from 2016 uh, to 2023, from 4.20 to 11.88 over that period. That is a huge uh, increase. Let's go on to the solution. This is the exchange rate. Let's go on. This is the depreciation from 2016 to date, depreciation of the CD. Let's go on. The re proposed solutions, we need to exp expand our export, diversify our export, add value to our exports. Um, local manufacture of imp import substitutes should be uh, uh, promoted. Now, we need to restore our strategic assets, our shipping line, airline, refinery, so that we don't rely so much on foreign um, you know, services. Please, let's go on. Then we need to promote consumption of domestic products uh, so that uh, we, we reduce our imports. Fiscal discipline will help um, you know, to reduce pressure on the exchange rate. And I've also suggested that the Bank of Ghana should progressively increase its cover, you know, foreign exchange cover for the CD. Presently, the ceiling is 40%. We should raise it progressively to about 70%. That will help to strengthen the CD. Let's go on. Please, let's go on. Now, expenditure management and control. Again, we know the problem. Let's go on. Um, look, go back to that structure. Well, this is uh, the structure you know, of government expenditure compensation of employees, interest payment, and so on. But let's, let's look at the graph. So you look at compensation of employees. Uh, well, that's total expenditure. Compensation of employees being the highest, interest payments, and then grants to other, that's the stat statutory funds. So we need to, you know, rebalance the expenditure. Look at capital expenditure, which is pro-growth expenditure, you know, being... Uh, at that level, low level, we need to rebalance expenditure so that we will reduce recurrent expenditure and increase uh, the growth, pro-growth uh, capital expenditure. Let's go on. Again, this is the uh, components of expenditure. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. So the recommendations, we need uh, the public sector reform right size the public sector and increase productivity. Uh, we need to streamline public sector emoluments. Uh, I believe that we should integrate all emoluments from the president to the messenger into the public sector compensation or single spine system. That's what we should be doing. We should abolish uh, Article 71 emoluments. We need to entrench fiscal discipline to restrain borrowing, debt accumulation, and interest payments. Uh, the recent fiscal responsibility law, well, we should reenact the fiscal responsibility law to reduce the deficit ceiling from 5% to 3%, because that is what we have in the, as a ECOWAS uh, convergence criteria. Let's go on. We need to reform statutory funds to make them more efficient and fit for purpose. Now, goods and services, if you look at the composition of expenditure, does it account so much for expenditure, but all the same, there's always room to cut waste, you know, there, including relating to general administration, travel, entertainment, medical, etc. There's the need to increase capital expenditure to boost growth. 
In fact, if we are to attain our potential growth, we need to raise capital expenditure as a ratio of GDP to at least 10%. Currently, it's below 5%, and, and that's, not, that's not good enough. Let's go on. I think that's the end. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kwachi. I'm sure the organizers will put the presentation together in a more summarized manner so that we can have it distributed to participants who may want to have further reading um, of the elaborate presentation that Dr. Kwachi has taken us through. Um, to save time, we'll move quickly to Winslow to take us through the um, uh, investment side of the presentation. So, thank good you very morning, much, Dr. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Winslow, and I'll be looking at uh, the three pillars here uh, financing to SMEs, debt sustainability, and then revenue optimization. And I'll start first with uh, increased financing to SMEs. But before I do that, let me just tell a short story. So I was on a TV program where we were discussing the economy. And there was this panelist that anytime there's a question about economy, he will say that we have to move from an import-based economy to an export-based economy. And his answer was consistent. So at a point, I tapped him and told him that you don't sleep one day and then the next day you move from import-based economy to an export-based economy. The work has to start from the ground, which is the SME space. So with that in mind, let me start my presentation. And for me, I'm looking at the solutions. Uh, as His Excellency mentioned, a team worked on it. They looked at the problems, and then they focused on the solutions. Some of the solutions here are very audacious. Some of them would shock you. But that is the essence of what we are doing, to make sure that we move from the rhetoric, where we say you have to move from an import-based economy to an export-based economy. What we are doing is to provide the solutions to do that. So I'll run through, since I have just 15 minutes to do that. So the first solution is to liaise with Bank of Ghana to direct banks to allocate an equivalent of a minimum of 10% of profit after tax of the previous year. Two collateral free concessionary lending to targeted SMEs engaged in import substitution. So this goes to the heart of moving from import-based to export-based. So the things we import, in providing those products here, what we are saying is that we want Bank of Ghana to step in and incentivize the banks so they can lend more to the SME space. The second point is about the same Bank of Ghana to provide regulatory capital incentives to SME loans given by banks at concessionary rate. So what we are proposing is an example is that they should give more favorable loan rights of regimes to banks that are actively doing the first point I raised. And that would encourage more banks to come into that space. The third point is to facilitate the setting up of bank loan recovery courts that will sit on a regular basis with strict delivery timelines for closure of loan default cases. This is to improve the borrowing culture in the country. We know that sometimes defaults come in when businesses fail. Because the businesses don't want to pay the loans. And if there is a specialized call to handle these defaults, one, it would encourage the banks to step up in this space, and two, 
the culture of borrowing would be improved. So if an SME borrows and they know that if they don't pay, there's a specialized court that will come after them, then they will look at trying to make do on their promise to make those loan payments. So the other solution we also provided is to have the Ghana incentive-based risk sharing system for agric lending, Development Bank Ghana and Exim Bank to focus at directing 50% of their support interventions to targeted SMEs. And these targeted SMEs, we are looking at a great value chain, import substitution, and then general manufacturing operations that are scalable so that there is that room for growth. We also propose an incentivization of the banks that fast tracks their pace to lending to SMEs. And our target here is to have banks lending about 25% of their loan books to the SMEs. And we are looking at achieving that in two years. When the banks are able to do that, what we want to push for is for a 5% tax credit based on their corporate income tax paid in the prior financial year. This is something that we think would encourage the banks to do more in the SME space. We also propose a solution that has been used in the mining and the petroleum sector, which is to have local content enforced so that we can increase demand for local SME products. So there will be a legislature that would force institutions to buy from SMEs, like we have in the mining and the petroleum sector. I move to revenue optimization. And uh, I'm sure all of us know that our revenue collection systems are not the best. There are a lot of leaks. So in as much as we are capable of collecting the revenues, there are leaks that always leads us to underperform when it comes to revenue collection. So the first point is to enhance the application of technology in revenue mobilization and equip revenue collection agencies with relevant tools and facilities. Currently, we are moving into the IT sector. We have AI and to collect revenues. And that is something we think can be leveraged upon to make revenue collection optimized. The second point is to expand the tax base. I think the recent report I saw was uh, I think around just 10% of Ghanaians, of the 30.8 million Ghanaians, are paying taxes, just 10%. So what happens is the base is very, very small. And so we impose a lot of taxes on the small base. What we want to propose is an expansion of the tax base to draw in other sectors of the economy. And here we want to include the artisans and the technicians. We know those are areas that currently we are not taxing that much. The next point is to review the GRA's organizational structure to make it more responsive to emerging challenges associated with revenue mobilization. Currently, the GRA structure is so rigid that as time changes, they sort of lag behind when it comes to improving their systems to keep pace with the changing conditions in the economic environment. And then we also propose that there should be a review of the current corporate governance structure of the tax administration organization. And here we are looking at ensuring efficiency, transparency, and accountability. 
in the delivery of their service. The main focus here is accountability, which is a very big word when it comes to collecting revenue. The next point is link access to essential public services such as permits, licenses, passports to payment of taxes. So if you want to procure a new passport, we have to make sure that you are paying your taxes. Now everybody has a tax identification number, so it will become much easier to do that. This is being done in some areas, but what we are looking at is a more global approach so that if you are not paying taxes, then it becomes very difficult to assess essential public services because it is these taxes that will be used to enhance these uh, services. So the next point is to conduct a comprehensive financial and technical audit of port operations to identify revenue leakages at the port. There have been a lot of reforms in the work at the port, the operations at the port, but there are still leakages. I think there's a joke that even if you seal all the leakages, new ones would appear mysteriously. <laughs> and that's an area that we need to focus on. We also said there should be a design mechanism to address trade misinvoicing and transfer pricing. These are areas that we also have the leaks. So there's always under declaration when it comes to especially invoicing and then transfer pricing. If we can plug these holes and make sure that they don't mysteriously appear elsewhere, we'll move forward with our revenue mobilization. And then we want to introduce windfall tax. So if companies make abnormal profits or unexpected profits, what we are proposing is for a windfall tax to be charged on those abnormal profits. So the normal profits would go with the corporate income tax, which we all know. But when the profits are excessive, then we look at introducing the windfall tax. I think last year and last two years, when the petroleum sector, international petroleum sector, were making unusual profits, some countries came in to apply wind tax, windfall tax, to make sure that some of these profits go into government to provide more essential services. And then we also looked at reviewing of existing customs exemption regime, regimes, especially to remove specialized individuals. Uh, we know this one would rub a few people the wrong way, but mostly we have political office holders. That's what we're looking at. And normally the exemptions are supposed to be the exceptions, but what we are moving to now is they are becoming more of the rule, and then we have the opposite happening. And we get a lot of leaks from this area too. So under revenue optimization, we said there should be a review of existing rates for road tolls, and then expand its application across various road networks. Currently, we are leaking revenue because road tolls are not being charged. And our proposal is that we look at the existing rates so that which will go to keeping our roads better. So currently what is happening is the wear and tear is not being paid by the users but money will be taken from somewhere to repair these roads, which is not an efficient way of doing it. We also propose the development of innovative ways to leverage uncompleted houses through equity releases on properties. So if there's a commercial building, 
is about 80% finished. That 20%, if it's not done, the facility cannot be used. But that 80% that has gone into the cost is locked up in there. So what we want to do is to look at innovative ways of dealing with that so that these equities trapped in these residential properties will be released. And when you look at the complete document, we have proposed those innovative ways of doing that. <laughs> okay. And then the next one is to introduce luxury taxes to target consumption of luxury items. Uh, this one, I wouldn't go into it too much. It's self-explanatory. So if you want to live big, you have to pay more. And then we want to look at recalibration of existing tax regime structures to optimize revenue mobilization from direct tax, both personal and corporate, and reduce over-reliance on indirect taxes to make the corporate sector more competitive and profitable. So when you take direct taxes, because there are few institutions that are paying, institutions and individuals that are paying, they tend to take more of the tax burden. When it comes to indirect taxes, let's take the port, duties at the port. They are very, very easy to collect because if your things come in, if you don't pay, you can't clear your things. So we tend to put the burden there because it is an easier way of collecting the tax. What we are proposing is that let's increase the tax base and then we focus more on the direct taxes rather than the indirect. We tend to increase the burden on businesses. Okay. We also want to look at an extensive review of the operations of SOEs with a view to enhancing their contributions to the tax revenue. SOEs, I think the 2020 report on SOEs indicated that about 747 of them are making losses in the year 2020. And it was a little above 2 billion. And in the report, it said that was an improvement over 2019 which was five billion. So there is a problem in the SOE space. And I think what we have to do is to have a very complete review just to make sure that they run as profitable businesses. Debt sustainability management. I have just about two minutes, so I would uh, run through. So the first one, which is extremely important, is to review existing legal and regulatory regimes on the capping of government borrowing, both from domestic and external market. We know about DDEP, so I won't burden you with the details again, but that call has been very strong after the government restructuring, that there should be a cap and it should be enforced by law. That is what we are proposing. And then we also said we should look at shifting government focus from borrowing to finance capital expenditure to the private space so that the private sector will lead these infrastructure projects. We all know that the private sector is more efficient at directing resources than government. So that's our proposal. And then we also want to enhance government revenue from exports to provide resources for budget support and thereby reduce our reliance on debt to finance car deficit. So here, we want to look at the exports. And the story I gave in the beginning, this is what it says, that we move from imports to exports so that we are able to manage our fiscal deficit, not with debt, but with the exports. Okay, so I think this is the final one. So 
We align government expenditure control mechanism with government debt sustainability management. So here we want to link government expenditure controls with debt management. Because the more government spends, the more debt government goes for. If we link these two strategies, what we want is to have a situation where as the expenditure is controlled, then the need for debt is also reduced. And then we want to refocus government's debt management strategy from borrowing from the international market to providing incentives that would attract foreign direct investment. So instead of going out to go and borrow money, we want government to provide incentives so that foreign direct investments would rather come into the country instead of us doing it the other way around. And then we want to develop a comprehensive and compelling case to support government's negotiation with external creditors for debt relief. Recently, IMF said that even with our debt restructuring, the painful debt restructuring, our debt levels are still unsustainable. So at some point, debt relief would have to come in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sakifu and Dr. Kwachi. Um, you've eaten into the audience time by five minutes. So we'll try and take that time back from the questions. So first, we we'll open the floor. I have a few questions here, but I'm sure uh, this forum is for you. So if you have any questions, kindly file in the aisle. Uh, maybe two, we can have two slots. And if you have any questions to any one of them, you can quickly then um, put our questions to you. But please identify yourself by raising the hand so we can, we can make you out. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Dr. Kwachi, I have um, one question which is twofold. Uh, you talked about inflation targeting and linked it to productivity and again linked it to um, the cost base of the economy, mostly driven by compensation. Um, if you ask public sector workers here, I'm sure they'll have a lot to say about the level of compensation. So is it more about how, as a country, we are unable to drive productivity from what we are paying, or, in your view, it is rather the compensation which is misplaced? Um, would you want to say something about that? And secondly, um, on the inflation again, are we proposing, you know, there are some economic watchers who have said, um, as a, a developing country, do we, are we aiming for the inflation rate of an economy like the US or the UK? Is it a fixation on single digit inflation or there is some value in some level of inflation to drive productivity and production? So if you could quickly um, take these two questions together. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the first was about compensation versus productivity. Well, the data I, I showed up there uh, was uh, about aggregate. In other words, total government compensation um, going to the entire public sector. It, it even includes the Article 71 and so on. So I'm not suggesting that workers' are, workers salaries are maybe adequate or not. Um, the figure is about total government, I mean, compensation. Um, and it has to do with the size of the public sector, as well as the, the salaries they are, they are, that are being paid. I, I don't think anybody would argue that uh, public sector wages are, you know, too high. I don't, I don't believe so. So maybe that it has to do with uh, the size of the public sector, and it's not just civil servants. It's about the entire public sector, including government, uh, Article 71 holders, and so on. So there's a need for some kind of uh, rationalization. Now, in terms of what level of inflation 
Maybe, is there a threshold? That's a, that's a, a threshold inflation that is you know, acceptable. Um, yes, but it will differ, differ from country to country. Um, developing countries tend to have higher inflation than uh, you know, developed countries because of the supply bottlenecks that, that they face. You know, the inflation comes mostly from the supply side. And that is why fighting our inflation with inflation targeting, which is more of a, a demand management tool, is, 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 is problematic. Um, and that was the point I was making. But uh, there must be an inflation threshold for every, every country. In fact, in terms of Ghana, when it comes to Ghana, I think the research that some people have done puts our inflation threshold around about 6%. So we are nowhere near our inflation uh, threshold. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to ask a follow-on question, but I will go quickly to Winslow to pick your mind on some of the suggestions that you have put out, and you call them audacious, and they are actually, um, particularly with the suggestions that brings in the central bank into the governance structure of the country. Um, more or less mandating the central, central bank to, uh, I don't know whether it's a levy or um, compelling banks to commit a certain percentage of the exposure to SMEs at collateral free and at concessionary rates. So how do you propose that the central bank does this? Bearing in mind that there is this general talk that central bank is supposed to be independent and therefore what the central bank is doing is to feed a certain objective, policy objective of the of Bank of Ghana itself. Whilst you are that, you also talked about Gesal, um, Ghana Exim, Development Bank Ghana, and recommended that 50% of their exposure be targeted to these t sectors that will be pushing for import substitution. Are you recommending that these state institutions be put under one umbrella, perhaps so there's one administrative umbrella, but different scoped areas for um, the various sectors that will be of interest uh, for this agenda that um, is being pushed. So the two questions, if you can take them together. Okay, let me take the second question. So putting them under one umbrella, I think might not be the best thing to do. Because uh, I think all of them were established with very different objectives. What we are looking at is to have them target 50% of these exposures to SMEs. So it's more of the push to have those targets in place, but not necessarily to put them under one umbrella. So that at the end of the day, they would provide that incentive to the SME sector. And then for the first question, yes, I know Bank of Ghana has to be independent. But what we are looking at now is an SME sector, which provides 60% of our GDP and employs 80% of the working force in Ghana. So what we are talking about is the heart of the economy. And if we will need Bank of Ghana to come in to compel banks to do it, then I think that would be the best way to go. Because if we don't, we'll have a situation where our SME space, we, we all know the SME space is very, very important, but we pay lip service to the SME service. What we are proposing is a push so that it sends the signal across the banking sector that now we want to provide the necessary financing to grow the sector. And when you take other economies, it's the SME sector that drives growth. And that is what we are planning on doing. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Kwachi, once again, um, it's widely held that currency volatility in Ghana has been the number one enemy um, of the country. It drives inflation, interest rates, everything. Uh, but we also know that Import substitution is a key uh, solution 
for solving the volatility in our, the behavior of our currency. In your presentation, you touched, you touched on this. I want, to, I want you to delve a bit deeper. If there is a word or a phrase which has been overused in this country, in economic circles, it's import substitution. Every year, everyone here from the 50s to 60s in secondary schools would have talked about import substitution. So what about this phrase that other countries have been able to convert, to actually converting the structure of the economy to manage their dependence on imported goods that Ghana, we have been unable to do, that you are proposing new ones, and if there are low-hanging areas that you want this forum to live here, having in mind that it's something that we can actually pursue. Um, I don't think I'm proposing new ones. <laughs> I, the point I was making is that the exchange rate is determined by you know, supply and demand for foreign exchange. We have because there's a gap between our well, supply of foreign exchange to us versus how much we pay out. That's why the CD is always depreciating. So we need to close that gap. So we need to do something about exports. We also need to do something on the import side. It, it, it's, it's both ways. Um, so it has to do with the back to the transformation of the economy. The economy needs to be transformed such that we produce higher value added exports, which will give us more foreign exchange. And then also we build our industrial base such that we can produce most of the things that we import you know, domestically. That's what will allow us to you know, bridge the gap. The floor. Thank you very much. The floor is now open if there are any questions, but in the interim, I will invite Nana Osei-Bonsu, the president of PEF. He wants to say a word. Um, Nana, you have two minutes to do justice to it. Thank you very much. So after Nana, you, and then I think there's a question on the front row. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the key points that I want to make uh, comments are uh, agriculture, uh, the cost of agriculture to us. We import a lot of food. We have vast lands that we don't utilize, and agriculture use are very low. How do we increase our use, and how do we prevent decay of our products? Uh, solution is agriculture inputs should be provided at low cost. Warehouses should be built across the country to prevent the uh, use going rotten. The next part that I want to talk about is the chicken imports. We can do a value chain approach in chicken, where we segment various players al along the value chain to do specifics, yields on the, uh, the eggs, the uh, fertilizer, I mean the uh, various uh, medication that we give to the chicken, and the chicken production. So if a agri uh, the uh, chicken farmer wants to segment himself to the production of their old chicks, that's a, a key that we provide for them. If they also want to do uh, uh, the uh, processing, we segment that. So the value chain approach in the chicken would definitely yield a lot more than what we have this se separate uh, chicken going, everybody doing from A to Z. Now, if we look at housing, once we fed ourselves, we need to sleep. Housing cost is very prohibitive now. People cannot afford to do housing, basically because of the cost of cement. We have from old days to now, uh, what we call atakwamedain, using our brick, uh, local bricks that can be manufactured. If you go to uh, different countries in South America, brick is what they use instead of cement. And we can do that by limiting the cement use and creating incentives for the use of bricks. So that's for housing, that's a solution. Uh, then the cost of financing, cost of doing business. 
The cost of money is too high for anybody to be able to do what we need to do. You and I talk about 1,001 times a day. How do we increase the quantum of capital mobilization through pension schemes? That would increase funding available for begging for destination of financing. And that is one of the areas to increase and lower the cost of doing business. The fourth point I want to talk about is the big one, taxes. 25% taxes on everybody whether you're low cost, whether you're high cost, whether you're a big player, whether you're local, the small and medium enterprises cannot afford. 25% on 2,000 is worse than 25% on 2 million. So we think that there should be staggered tax system. That staggered tax system, you pay according to your code or according to your income. So the big players who pay 25% come down 10% to 2%, 3% that can be also what we call the tier tax system. We're waiting to present this to uh, uh, Parliament to discuss the, how we do the tiered tax system. Then the other one is what is causing us and difficulty. I should be wrapping up. I uh, should be wrapping up, but that is the big one, the tax exemptions. That's granted to the foreign people coming in, and they repatriate at the end of the year. The profit margins plus the tax exemptions. If you're going to command a tax exemption, yes, let's give it to them, but the tax exemption should be utilized 25% in locality where you do business, 25% to philanthropic purposes locally, and then the 25% also to create a partnership with the small and medium enterprises in Ghana. So we boost the businesses in Ghana without the quantum of repatriation that is affecting our foreign exchange earnings. Thank you very much for the Thank opportunity. Thank you very much, Nana. Thank you for the fantastic delivery. So, lady, please identify yourself, your name, and where you're coming from. Uh, please, I respond to the name Bridget Ozu Amante, and um, I'm from Accra. Please, my question is directed to Mr. Winslow Sakifio. Um, in part, um, Connect, in connection to uh, the enhancing the collection of tax. Please, e-levy, the understanding I got for paying e-levy was for wear and tears or maintenance of our roads. That's why the tolls were canceled. So now if the tolls are being brought back, does that mean that e-levy will be canceled? If no, please, why? Thank you very much. Um, okay, see you, and then we come to the responses. We have time for only two more interventions, please. Only two, and one question each. Yes. Please um, give us a summary of your intervention, as short as possible. Your name and where you're coming from. Thank you very much. My name is Yalba. I'm the Secretary General of TUC, uh, also representing organized labor. Uh, Moderator, I think you took too much of our time. And uh, I'm sure many people may want to say something, but you alone hijacked the thing, and now you are saying we have only two minutes. This, this, uh, this summit is about us. Uh, you see? So I have a a comment. Of course, I, this cannot go without comment from organized labor. Uh, look, Dr. Kwache made a point about the size of the public sector. Uh, I can disagree, and I have my comments here. Look, we live in a country of 30 million people. Public servants are only 700,000. That's not a lot. The problem with the compensation in public sector it's about the ratio government is committing to public sector pay and the revenue we are generating. And that is the point Nana made. If you give tax exemptions to foreigners, you can generate money. If indeed, Ghana now, our total tax is just under 13% of GDP. 13.5% of GDP. Ideally, we should be generating about 22, 23, 24. If 
we generate 22% of GDP in taxes. What government is paying to public sector workers will not be much. So the point, the problem is that it's not about public sector. Look, where Ghana is now, if we want to bring discipline to this society, we need more police officers. There is one police officer for 1,000 Ghanaians. Elsewhere, there is one police officer for 250 people. So we need more public servants. No private sector person should be allowed to hire a police officer. It's a public sector which should hire a police officer. That is my comment about, about that. Having said that, let me make my important point here. Look, look, uh, we all looked at your macroeconomic variables, interest rates, exchange rate, inflation, the key ones. This came from the structure adjustment. It is not one important thing missing in our macroeconomic framework is employment. We've been here talking for more than two hours. We have never mentioned employment. What we need to do is to change our macroeconomic framework, make employment the key target, and then we link all the macroeconomic targets to it. It's not a single, you know, it's, it's not about single digit. It is not about single digit or anything. If you say this year, I want to create one million jobs, then the economist, I can tell you, Bank of Ghana has a lot of people who can help us. We want to create one million jobs. What inflation will go with it? What exchange rate will go with it? What interest rate will go with it? That's how we should rule this country. That is how we should manage this country. Uh, my brother, my last point, is, it goes to you, Winslow. You made a terrible comment about only 10% of Ghanaians paying taxes. But at the end of your presentation, you corrected yourself. Governments in this country are relying on indirect regressive taxes that affect poor people. Let me tell you, every Ghanaian, the poor Ghanaians are paying more taxes than the rich because, because of VAT. And now they are not ashamed. They want to now go and go into our houses and tax our electricity. And you say we don't pay taxes. Mr. Every Ghanaian pays tax. Okay, this is thank not you, a trade union form. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, please, organizers, if you could just put on screen an email address that uh, contributors who will not have an opportunity to. Um, send through their comments, can pass their comments through these emails or telephone numbers. Um, it, will, it will help because we have a lot of hands and we have so much, you know, um, just two minutes left um, to, to, to hand over the microphone. But please, you'll be, you know, I'll give you some time. Okay. Please, yes, you, and then we will, we will shut um, the discussion from the participants. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you, th thank you very much. Um, my my name, name is Dr. Ramzi Inusa. And I must put on record, um, I have been hiding, I would not say hiding this record, but I have to make it public today in this forum. And I take inspiration to that. I was the first black African techpreneur in the Silicon Valley of China. I built a startup company valued at a post money valuation of $40 million. Now, we tend to preach the same anachronistic methods of financing for our SMEs. As a country, we need to promote venture capital financing for SMEs and also to promote uh, investment by angel investors, which will not put a lot of stress on entrepreneurs. Now, if entrepreneurs go and take loans from the bank, and we all know that at the seed, seed level of any startup, the risk of you failing is, is quite higher, right? And so how then do we encourage our people to go into entre entrepreneurship if the same 
uh, method of financing is via banks. And I would like to ask Doc a question. We all know that there is an inelastic demand for technology as a factor for productivity, economic productivity. We're talking about import substitution, but we live in a country where there is not much allocation to the investment and the promotion of research and development in our tertiary institutions. And we need to look at that because we talk about import substitution. You do not finance universities, you do not finance institutions to be able to research and develop Ghanaian-owned, Ghanaian-centered technologies to solve our problems that can enable us to compete locally and internationally. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank you, everyone. Um, I know there is still a whole lot of interest. We are going to put the email address on the, on, uh, on the screen so we can capture your views. They are very important to us all the views that have been expressed. Uh, Dr. Kwachi, I'm going to give you a minute to summarize everything that you have heard from the participants and a minute to um, Mr. Wins, um, uh, Sakifio to also use to um, summarize some of the things that you have heard. Please, let's stick to the minute so we don't eat too much into the next segment. Well, I think that the purpose of this summit is to come and dialogue you know, and share our views. And I'm happy that people are expressing, you know, their views uh, openly. I don't have to summarize uh, for others. I have my own independent uh, views. So you can uh, agree or disagree with me. You know, it doesn't matter. Now, let me, but just specifically, uh, my friend. Uh, yeah, Dr. Brian. Now, when we talk about the size of the public sector, I know that is a very sensitive subject. I mean, every time it comes up. We've been talking about reforming the public sector forever. When I talk about the size of the public sector being too big, um, the public sector includes uh, even government, the size of government. We all talk about the size of government being too big. So why wouldn't you agree with me that the public sector is too big? You go to the ministries, including Minister of Finance. You go there and you see that there are so many workers there, some even don't have seats to sit on. They can't find seats to sit on. How about productivity? You know, we are in a country whereby at the end of the month, whether you have worked or not, you, are, you get your full pay, you know. So there are, there are serious problems there, you know. I would wish that we, we mark, I mean, if workers, you come to work, and then we, might, we, we, we are paid on an hourly basis, you know. Uh, we, work, we calculated the number of hours you have worked and pay you according to that. But if you are going to pay somebody for 30 days when they have worked for 20 days, that in itself is a source of inflation, you know. So I know that because of where you are coming from, uh, when it comes to public, you're, I'm not talking about your pay. We all know your pay is not, is not the problem, you know, but we talk about the size of the public and the productivity in the public sector. Thank, thank you very much. So, Winslow? I would you. touch on, I think, the taxes. It looks like it, there's a lot of passion when it comes to the taxes. And uh, there was a question on e-levy. Yes, it's very political, so I don't want to <laughs> venture into the area. But... When, when you look at the, the road toll I talked about, that has a direct link to the usage. So you use the road, you pay, which is very, very easy to understand. Rather than using another tax to deal with the roads. So for me, I think the road toll is crucial and it's very easy to collect. And it affects everybody who uses the road. And as we have it, and I think Akuli was saying that we have a lot of foreign cars coming to buy goods or deliver goods in Ghana. And they all use our roads. And we know the big trucks pull the road more than the smaller ones. And because nobody is paying road toll, we can't get those revenues coming in. 
So I think for that, the root tool is very, very important. And the other one is about the number of people paying taxes. What I mentioned is that the tax base is small. So we sort of burden those who are paying now instead of widening the, the tax uh, net. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, um, Dr. Kwachi, and thank you to uh, Mr. Um, Sakifiu. And to the gentleman um, uh, investor from China, Ghanaian Chinese. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you've raised a very important point on venture capital and angel um, f um, investors and the like. But I will just also you know, um, raise the other option of putting the issue back into the court of promoters of businesses and entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, that they should be open to people joining in shareholding and not close out and own 100% of 100,000 instead of maybe 2% of 10 million. That is also another big problem that we have with entrepreneurship in Ghana. On that note, I thank you all for your attention. I know it's been very educative and productive. We will do the summary, and I'm sure the organizers will make them available to you. Thank you. Please put your hands together for Mr. John Kwachi. Sorry, Mr. John Ewa, uh, Dr. John Kwachi, and our other panelists. Please, you can do better. Thank you very much. You know, if you, if you want to go far in Ghana, you need John in your life. So John Ewa, John Kwachi, John Chermatin, John Abu Sakara, John Avle, all the Johns. Wow. So thank you very much. This program is very spontaneous, so we recognize a lot of you want to make contributions. We apologize we didn't make enough time. What we are thinking of doing is that these people are not like experts to be questioned. This is not a press conference, so we would prefer more comments and contributions because we are putting all the information together into policy formulation. So if we open the floor for the next round, we would prefer you to add something or to maybe make an input that can help the policy formulation process. Is that a good idea? Put your hands together one more time for the panel. This is the National Economic Summit brought to you uh, by His Excellency Alan John Kujutra Mating, who is the convener, and this is for Movement for Change. The first panel discussion was on the macroeconomy, which is the basis for everything. But really what we want is industrial transformation. Ghana has been an agrarian economy for many, many years. And some people are saying we are transforming because right now services have become the largest chunk of the employer and also contributing the most to our economic development. But for all countries that have advanced, you cannot short circuit industrialization. And therefore, this particular thematic area is very critical. Also because the convener of this program has been at the forefront of attempting to industrialize Ghana since time immemorial. Indeed, he's the longest serving Minister of Trade we've had since records started. So for this next plenary, it is my pleasure to welcome our moderator, Madam Felicia Chumesi, who's the founder and CEO of Home Foods Limited. Please put your hands together for her. If you want to talk about industrialization, you need to talk to somebody who is in industry, who's producing. So put your hands together for Madam Chumesi. She will take the moderator's seat. Our speakers are in three clusters. Uh, cluster one, Mr. Martin Mensa, who is an industrial management consultant. Uh, I don't know if he's here. Let's put our hands together for him or his rep. Our cluster two, Mr. Theodore Makam. Sorry, are you presenting Martin Mensa? Yes, please put your hands together. Come forward. Please come. So this cluster is on boosting local production and productivity and strategic anchor industries. Please put your hands together for the rep. <laughs> Boosting local production and productivity and strategic anchor industries. Our second speaker for, for this group is for cluster two, Mr. Theodore Makam. Put your hands together for Mr. Makam. <laughs> now, Mr. Makam is an export development, export promotion and business development consultant and his thematic area is on export promotion and development and SME development. Thank you very much for being here. Put your hands together one more time. The third and final cluster 
for this plenary is on business regulatory reform and private public dialogue. And our panelist is Mr. Daniel Eku, who is the CEO of Empretech Ghana Foundation. Where is Mr. Eku? Or his representative, Mr. Daniel Eku, or his representative? Rep, please hurry up and come, put your hands together. Empretech is one of the institutions that our convener, through his record in private sector, put together, and it remains one of the foremost platforms for growing sustainable entrepreneurs. And Mr. Daniel Eku is our third and final panel member. Each panelist will have 10 minutes to tease out the issues. Our moderator would ask a few quick questions. And in this round, we will take more comments and contributions. So, Madam Moderator, your panel, panel, your moderator, please take it up. So, good morning, everybody. And uh, our panelists, you are all welcome. We're going to touch on the industrial transformation. And interestingly, the microeconomic panelists did a lot of justice to this. We all know that transformation involves of changing that is triggered by internal and external events. I hope you all agree with me. Events like technology, I think one, one person asked that question institutions, events like altering the rules of governing competition in industry, and also events in disrupting part of evolution. And we are here to turn this and initiate a course of redevelopment of all these events. Is that Mr. Eku? Our industrial transformation by the GTP is anchored on nine, ten poles. We have the vehicle assembly, garment, pharmaceuticals, petroleum, vegetable oils and fats, industrial chemicals, industrial starch, integrated bauxite, aluminum, iron and steel, machine equipment manufacture. With what was discussed in the first uh, panelist, on the microeconomics, they touch on, before we can move on in any country, there should be industrial transformation. They touch on package for existing local industries, for medium and long-term capital, for industrial development. It has been an issue in this country uh, there was an attempt of ID 1D1F, which I think it was implemented very interestingly, and I know it's around 267 companies that have been initiated in this country. But then comes in the raw material base, as the microeconomic panelist said, our chain, value chain, that is really costing us. We in industries are having it very tough for our loans, our interest rate, the inflation, talk about it. I am in export business, I've been in export business for the past 28 years. And it's very interesting to know that in a country like us, when our currency goes down or depreciated, our exports are never cheap. I would, I would like to ask the economists this question. Because normally when your currency goes down, the exports must be cheap. So now, what can we actually do, uh, Mr. Professor in your sports? The export, yeah. Oh, Mr. Enko, hi. Yeah. So what can it actually do to help the industry really transform? Because uh, it's very competitive. When you travel outside the country and you go to your, visit your customers, it's very interesting to know that they don't plant one tree of peanuts or pepper, but they grow so big. What really triggers that? It's very, very worrying. 
what is happening? And as I said, um, Dr. Kwachi, and we've touched on a lot of issues that I think our transformation plan should be geared towards. Because we need to turn into this, all this course, into redevelopment. The country has a problem. What are your suggestions? Yes, the, the industrial transformation. Because we have the 1D, 1F, I, I can say 50% to 60% is moving on right, but the problem is the value chain. We have large tracts of land. We cannot depict one district with a plantation. Very, very serious. They are all small farmers. I've been dealing with farmers from the world go. I said we two. We are now over 5,000 and we are still struggling for value chain. So what will you suggest to help us to do this transformation in industries? Without industries, we cannot move on in this country. Okay, I will want to share the experience of a country that is Thailand. You know, I happen to have listened to a presentation by a team of experts from Thailand and how they were able to transform their economy and make it really an industrial one. And basically what they did was they identified, just like what we've tried to do in Ghana, what you call the economic resources available in each of their regions or provinces. And what they did was that they divided the country into what they called cities. So they had, let's say, a peanut city, plastic city, this city based on the resource base of that. But because, before you go on, can you give a presentation to show us all this? Okay, my for presentation for, okay. Thank you. Can we have the presentation on the Ghana's uh, industrial transformation agenda? Thank you. My name is uh, Francis Osekusi. And in the other area, I also wear the hat of a reverend minister. So I'm also a reverend minister. <clears throat> so we're looking at boosting local production and productivity, and then we also focus on strategic anchor industries that we need to make sure we put resources in to be able to transform our economy. Sorry. First and foremost, we want to review the implementation of the one district and one factory initiative and then provide additional financial resources for its operationalization. You know, on the onset of this administration, one of the flagship programs was the one district, one factory initiative but unfortunately, we didn't realize the benefits because we didn't put our money where our mouth is. So we also want to look at enhancing the scope of Ghana's incentive-based risk sharing system for agricultural lending to cover other strategic industrial sectors of the economy to facilitate access to affordable medium and long-term capital for manufacturing companies. And basically here we're talking about providing what we call uh, guarantees. Basically the GESA provides guarantees to the banks and therefore shares the risk with the banks. It's been working so well and it's, impo it's important or we need to now consider how do we extend this instrument which is helping the agricultural sector to access funding to other strategic sectors of the economy so that needed capital will be made available to those sectors, especially the manufacturing sector. Then, of course, we also need to look at providing tax incentives to banks who are willing and ready to extend financing to sectors that we think are crucial and critical 
to our economic development. And of course, this happens in a number of countries, other jurisdictions. You find that tax incentives are actually given to, uh, to induce banks to lend more to sectors we think are very important. And then, of course, on this same issue of boosting local production and productivity, we're looking at providing tax relief for companies that will employ new and long, young graduates up to a specified threshold. Now, this is very important because you're going to employ young graduates. Now, Ghana, the issue is that people are saying, hey, we want to experience so many years of experience. So these companies who are going to train and develop these young graduates. So they're actually providing hands-on training. And this is a public good. And we believe that they need to be given some incentive to do this. Then we're also looking at providing training grants to support local enterprises in strategic sectors to cover costs of skills training. Again, if you look at the banking sector, one of the reasons they don't want to lend to SMEs is what they say, the demand, uh, sub, uh, demand side problem. You rec recognize that SMEs actually require hand holding and it's very important that banks and financing institutions are ready to enter into smart partnerships to enable this kind of skills training to be undertaken. We want to move on to strategic anchor industries. And here we are looking at industries which we think have the potential of giving us the highest net productivity. And here we're looking at one, vehicle assembly and components manufacturing. And basically, this is recognized globally as being a 2.52 trillion industry. And currently, Ghana, we are blessed in having six of the major auto companies which are in this country assembling vehicles like VW, Toyota, you, you know that. I don't need to belabor it. Then we need to further localize the autom automobile manufacturing industry in Ghana. The manufacture of components and parts is another strategic industrial activity to focus on. And again, you find out that if you go to other jurisdictions, there is a concerted and a coordinated effort to ensure that SMEs especially are integrated into this kind of industry, whereby a big company like Toyota can farm out certain aspects of uh, components that are required to SMEs and therefore provide a ready market for SMEs. It is also envisaged that plastics, steel, and aluminum products to be produced in Ghana will provide the raw materials for components and parts needed for the auto industry. So here again, it's going to spawn off, you know, or generate other business opportunities in the plastics and other components required. Then garment and textiles. This is one area which provides opportunities for mass employment. You know, if you have a good, a big garment factory, it can employ about 3,000 people. And especially when you're also looking at a 24-hour economy, then opportunities are even doubled. So again, we need to focus on the garment and textiles industries. Of course, it's very labor intensive and it is also capital intensive as well. And the skill base for the development of the sector in Ghana is strong based on what we started 2,000 years ago. This President's Special Initiative, which actually identified a number of garment industries and trained them in mass production of garments for exports. So the base is there, and what we need is to focus on it and develop it. Then the pharmaceuticals. Again, we are currently importing about 70% of our pharmaceutical requirements. And there are opportunities for import substitution in this sector. Currently, there are three large-scale World Health Organization, good manufacturing practice, certified companies in Ghana, 
capable of producing a wide range of Ghana's pharmaceutical requirements. And in addition to this, there are also the multiplicity of medium-sized pharmaceutical manufacturing companies that are leading suppliers of pharmaceutical products to the ECOWAS market. So again, Ghana, we are strong in this area, and all we need is to focus more attention. Petrochemical industries. You know, I always say that at the time during the Kufu administration, we were talking about developing the salt industry. We didn't know Ghana was going to discover oil. And if we had really paid attention to the PSI on salt, I believe when we discovered oil, that would have been the best combination for us to actually launch a petrochemical sector in this country. You have two minutes. Sir. Okay. Shall we move on? Then, of course, integrated bauxite and aluminum. We, we have a bauxite uh, deposits in this country, and the global market, as you can see, is two, 276.8 billion. So all we need, is, again, is a program to develop this sector of the economy. Shall we move on? Iron and steel. As for iron and steel, I don't need to talk much about that. Almost every aspect of our production, fabrication, and all those things will require iron and steel, if in construction and all those things. So again, it's something we cannot do without. It's basic, and we need to focus on developing that industry. Industrial salt, I just said something about salt. And industrial salt, Ghana is blessed. If you look at the West African coastline, it's only Ghana and Senegal who have the capacity to actually produce salt. And if, it's some, if we've taken this seriously, we realize that we have 137.8 one billion global market and Ghana will have been reaping immense benefits if we are taking this seriously. Assembly of electrical and electro electronic appliances and components. Again, we have a 3.4 trillion global market and we need to position ourselves as a country to get a share of that market. And so whatever we need to do as a country to ensure that the local assembly of these appliances provides an opportunity for high quality technical jobs. And of course, again, we are blessed with technical institutions. Almost all our polytechnics have been converted into tertiary institutions. And so we have the base for such an industry. Agro-industry, Ghana, as we all know, is, is an agricultural-based country, agrarian economy as we've termed it. And again, the market is 12.2 trillion. And as a country, we have been developing cocoa, we have oil palm, cassava, rubber, cashew, cotton fruits, and vegetables. There are other exotic fruits, actually, or uh, crops that can be cultivated commercially, and we need to explore these opportunities. Add up, please. And then finally, manufacturing of machinery, plant, and equipment. Again, this is something we need to look at. We have gratis which can, if properly resourced, can produce most of the machinery and equipment we are importing. So again, as a country, we need to look at how we can develop our local institutions, such as gratis and other technical-based institutions, to be able to manufacture some of these products locally so that we don't import them, but we are able to manufacture them locally. And the market, as we can see, is about five trillion. So it's a big market, and again, we need to position ourselves to get a share of that market. Uh, no Thank you. <laughs> Very interesting presentation. And it looks like we have loads of uh, mind to put together, but we led with the implementation to transform this country. Um, the trillions and all that, I believe it, because uh, I see a lot of money lying gutters in this country. 
and we should know that our country is very agrarian and we can do a lot. He spoke about the vehicles. It's all linked to agriculture. Byproduct of cashew can be processed to be used in vehicles as brick parts. So now, Markham, can you also give us your presentation about <coughs> exports? Because uh, there are laudable exports, uh, yeah, a lot of them. And uh, it looks like the implementation is quite tough. It cannot be implemented. And I think most of it is discipline in this country. So can you give us your presentation on your export plan for this country? Should we transform? Hello. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the floor. <laughs> uh, a lot has been said mentioning products. Uh, so I'll avoid repeating the same thing. Uh, as we have been here this morning, the key word seems to be transformation. Now, transformation, what is the evidence if we are heading for transformation? We are looking at the structure of the eco economy, and that should be reflected in the structure of our exports. And uh, to do the transformation, uh, we are looking at a very high proportion of manufactured products and services as distinct from raw products that we have been exporting in large volumes up till now. So we are heading for, in that direction. Now, we, to actually focus our resources to achieve our targets, we have to prioritize and we came up with 17, in fact, priority products. On one side, we had products that have a quick payoff. But on the other side, we also have strategic anchor industries that we are counting on to transform the economy. Uh, the first one, processed cocoa, but I don't want to go through it because my predecessor, Mr. Kusi, has done that already. So this is the list. Now, let's focus on solutions. If you want to, before, please. Yeah. If you want to boost Exports, the, the slide before this, please. Before, exactly. If you want to boost exports, we have to look at our energy and water as the top priority. This has been the problem in industry. We have expensive energy, like especially electricity, and in fact, the, the cost of electricity is still going up, and that may render our industries uncompetitive. We also need abundant supply of water at affordable tariffs. Then we need technology and innovation should be applied a lot and abundantly in our industries. Then we need a supply chain in infrastructure to help reduce the costs in general, and also transporters and carriers. And the critical one is also access to land. When you travel outside Accra, you see a lot of, plenty of land, a vast land. Only bush and grass are growing. But as soon as you want to develop a little piece, families will pop up and say the land belongs to them. Uh, chiefs will pop up and say the land belongs to them, and that has been a critical constraint in our export expansion. Now, for every export activity, you need market access. There are market access requirements which you have to meet. 
There are quality standards you have to meet. You need packaging requirements and trade facilitations to make sure that you have efficient port operations, for example. Then you need export trade centers that will support your exports, export roundtables where you have solutions to all your problems, then trade and investment promotion events to bring buyers and sellers together, and then you need market entry and penetration. These are special activities that should be undertaken to boost exports. Now, the category manpower development. You know, apart from God, it is human beings that do and make things. So we need to develop the human capital. I would say, in fact, to develop the human capital, we need to recalibrate our education system, especially the curriculum, to make sure that technical skills or the students, they have a good foundation to go into technical fields and also these skills should be linked to our natural resource base so that you don't have to get foreigners to come in to always explore our natural resources and end up even taking control of our natural resources. Now, we need the majority and technical skills, especially. Trade finance and access to capital has been an issue all the time, but then there are solutions. Uh, regulatory framework, we have strategic government intervention in export development. Uh, if you have a, uh, the resource centers are also there to do this. Now, the primary policy recommendations under this category will cover the following areas. Gender and vulnerable groups in exports. And the, this is based on the principle that leave nobody behind. It's an all-inclusive activity we are undertaking. Then we have to create the environment the environment in which we are born, by the time we exit, we have to make sure that we do not run down the economy, like what is happening uh, in the Galamse areas, for example. Now, special distributing of export-oriented production. This is an area which is very important because in the greater Accra area, Kumasi, that is where we have the concentration of industries, but we have the whole Ghana. Now, in the National Export Strategy, there is a module which says economic empowerment of the districts. This is to ensure that the districts also participate in export activity in collaboration with the district assemblies. Trade information. Now, with the internet on our hands, trade information has become much easier but this needs to be actually calibrated to actually support our export activities. Now, we have certain institutions we have got the task to support our export efforts. Now, we have the Ghana Enterprises Agencies, for example, working in collaboration with the Ghana Export Promotion Authorities to actually to coordinate very, a lot of export activities. Now, government will provide incentives to improve competitiveness and efficiency of service. But then, competitiveness is a key word, but government has to look at the tax, the tax being imposed on industries, for example. We don't need to kill our industries, otherwise we will not make progress in that direction. Now, we have in the mining sector, especially the oil and minerals, the local content legislation, legislation being applied substantially in that area. But the local content policy issues should also be moved to export sector, especially in the SMEs, to make them more attractive. Next slide. Business development and technology support services. 
The recommendation there is to enhance annual budgetary support for the operations of business resource centers. We have these resource centers, business advisory centers, technology solution centers, rural technology facilities to actually support the SMEs. And this needs to be greatly supported and funded. Product development and marketing support services for SMEs. Every time we are talking about grants. Okay. Okay. Uh, Children, two minutes more, please, sir. Okay, I'm almost there. The recommendation is to establish dedicated grant for the purpose of administering the Ghana Enterprises Agency. Invest in developing domestic retail market infrastructure in all districts. Again, the emphasis is on districts to support the one district, one factory. Identify and support the development of specific major commercial market centers in designated towns around the country, for example, Techiman, Atebubu, Mampong, etc. That is, in fact, linking, linking the domestic market to forest, foreign market because they complement each other. We need to provide financial support to very important organizations like Guta. I'm sure the Guta man is here very happy that we, if you provide funding to you, you should be able to support your memberships. Now, made in Ghana products, products that are branded made in Ghana, we need to strengthen the regulatory framework for standardization to make sure that they meet market access requirements. To boost exports, we need to promote access to industrial sites for SME manufacturing companies. Identify and develop service plots in each district that will also support the 1D, 1F. Identify development service plots. This is very important because we have districts covering the whole country so that we have opportunities for the youth so that they don't, everybody doesn't move to Accra. And this is also to ensure that all districts participate in the national export effort. Thank you. Thank you. A very elaborate export uh, paper and strategy. What is left with us is the implementation. Um, what we've heard so far from the first panelists is uh, very laudable, feasible, strategic documents that we can implement. So where are the implementers? Because I believe that success is more than the principle of serendipity. We cannot live in this situation anymore. So Danny, can you help us the next one? Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about the what to do with our business regulate, regulatory environment. And um, as a country, we are at a point right now where uh, we are constrained because of the debt overhang that we have, um, which is preventing us from looking for resources from those traditional places that we would normally go. But we need to develop. And um, so where is the money going to come from? If we cannot borrow uh, in those places, then perhaps the opportunity that we have is to look for private 
entities that can offer that to us, private people that will come into Ghana to, to invest or partner with others to invest. The moment you talk about private people coming in, then they need to be made comfortable. They, they need to uh, get the sense that elements of risk and so on have been taken away. And that's why regulation is important because they want to be sure that what they are bringing in, they can make the, 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 the money they want to make and, and so on. So business regulation is important. We've done it in the past, but I think that something new is being introduced and, and that's, what, that's what I want us to, to look at. That um, even for the ones that are available, you find them scattered in different ministries, different agencies, and so on. So for the investor or for whoever is putting money here, uh, they have difficulty in even identifying where the regulations are uh, at a go because it's scattered all over the place. So one of the things that is being proposed uh, in, in the area of uh, business regulatory reforms, which is what uh, we're talking about now, is the fact that we need to consider access to the information itself. Where can people go and get the information that guides them? And we're talking about the directives, the forums, uh, and all the regulations for different sectors of industries and enterprises and institutions, all of that. Uh, and so ease of access uh, to information as, as, as uh, a way of, and, and that's the proposal that, proposal that is being made by the regula regula sorry. <laughs> regulatory reforms, uh, the RR is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> regulatory uh, reforms uh, that, that is being proposed uh, for what already exists. So access, so that at a go, there is a depository uh, somewhere, electronic, that people can easily access from anywhere in the globe, okay? Uh, and they can get all the information, all the regulations that guides them to do business. I mean, those of us who are road users, without the road regulations, uh, we'll be bumping into each other. That is what guides us. Okay, so the businesses and those who are coming to do business here also need that. Then uh, there should be some predictability of these regulations. Here today, there tomorrow, and it creates confusion for people. Uh, I don't know if there's any plastic manufacturer here. <laughs> if, you are, if you are into plastic extrusion and uh, the electricity that you use for your operations is irregular and you don't have a timetable and we are shedding, what happens is that uh, you do your calibration and start your machines only for the light to just shut down. And what happens is that all the material in your flow are going to cake or congeal, and you've lost that. You are going to scrape that and start all over again. And if the, the manufacturer will tell you that it takes a bit of time to even calibrate and start the machine and start the process. So predictability is so, so important. Uh, a subject that we need, to, we need to look at. How do we achieve that? Then transparency in the application of the regulations that we know that this is what prevails, this is what we are required to do, uh, and everybody agrees. And uh, it's not something that is being done where some people are preferred and are favored and so on. That transparency is needed. So that, that is one of the things. And then the extent to which the regulations will also improve competitiveness. So these are, these are the key areas that we're going to make proposals, and, and uh, uh, we'll be looking at that shortly, please, uh, if, if we can roll. So the, the problem of access 
uh, is the targeted reforms that we're talking about, the e-register of the business regulations, so that there is a place where all the information is kept and it's accessible to uh, persons who need them. Uh, okay. The other recommendation is also create a portal where uh, it allows for consultation, even in, in the introduction or the review of existing, existing regulations, uh, that the stakeholders are able to quickly uh, put something across or seek clarification uh, in, uh, about any, any uh, legal uh, process or regulation, and it allows for people to interact. Uh, so that portal uh, 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 between the public sector and the, and the private sector so that they can interact uh, is, is one, one of them. Uh, the next slide, please. Okay. Now, once the regulation has been rolled out and is working, it is only proper that from time to time there is some kind of an assessment of, of the impact of what was proposed and what is being used so that it can inform any amendments and adjustment that needs to be done because the business environment we all know is so dynamic. So uh, some new mechanisms will be done to improve this, that even before any, any regulation is put across, it is expected that uh, whoever is making this proposal would have done, carried out some, some kind of a survey or research as to what this would do, so that when they go to where the consultation is being done, the portal, uh, your proposal can be assessed based on the information you've gathered. Okay, and, and, and so, so that is that day, uh, even before the regulation is introduced. And then when the regulation is in motion and enterprises or businesses are using it from time to time also to assess the effectiveness of what was introduced through uh, various mechanisms. And then for those who are using the regulation, we know that not all the enterprises are on the same level. Some are, uh, have vulnerabilities, are small and medium enterprises. So here there is a proposal to give targeted relief in the area of regulation to SMEs and then uh, other groups that we consider are strategic. Uh, they are in an industrial area or an enterprise area that is strategic to the nation. They can be granted some, some of those uh, regulations. So these are, these are the, the, the proposals that are on the floor. Then the, we talked about the public-private partnership the, the framework we are discussing here is that it, it, it's, it's a, there is a, a committee that will be set up. Uh, it's a permanent joint government private sector committee where there are representatives from the ministries, uh, the ministers are there, private sector uh, players are there, and uh, other interest group to uh, pave the way for discussion, either reviewing what is in existence or introducing and assessing the impact of that. And then an all-inclusive dialogue on private sector development as a national priority. Uh, uh, whilst this private-public uh, partnership is, is rolling out, this is also a necessity so that from time to time uh, there, there can be reviews. We can touch on key thematic areas and make recommendations to the effect of that. Uh, next. Two minutes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I think our three panelists have given us uh, very in-depth situations and the interesting uh, documents prepared to move this country forward, transform this country. Uh, Daniel just spoke about the degree, um, the BRL. I think, and then Theodora spoke about the export plan, and my friend here also spoke about the export plan. Um, is it Winslow? The guy who spoke about the microeconomics, 
spoke about something about people talking about changing from import to export. But to him, we need to correct a lot of things internally. Rules governing a lot of industries, competitiveness, so that we can turn this initiative into a redevelopment country. And I think all is not lost. There's a lot of um, positive uh, flags all over us that we can do because we have the experts. Um, the papers are very, as I said, laudable, feasible. But how are we going to implement it? Because we live in a country whereby we think success is just a principle of serendipity. We just want to make money. No, we need to put a lot of effort. Now, thank you so much. The floor is open now. I'm not going to be a victim like uh, a war to take over. So I would like to open the floor for any questions that get to individuals here. Thank you very much. Indeed, brilliant presentations. Thank you. This gives me the confidence that the country will move forward. I've been listening to all these. Um, the comment or the problem I want us to try to address that being a democratic country, um, we always need leadership to lead. And this leadership will have to work in a time frame. Uh, what I want us to address here is, with all these presentations, can someone tell me that given the opportunity, we will need to give leadership such a, such a time for the citizenry to have the ease that the heat at stake now, within such and such time frame, will get, go through it. This is what I want to, us to address. Thank you. Thank you very much. The question is directed to which of the panelists, please? Please, Mr. General. It's a general question. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Ohini Asante, uh, Executive Secretary to the World Technology Forum. Please, my question has three parts. And the first one goes to industrial transformation in the age of digitization, in the age of digital revolution. My, my question uh, for the first part, I want to tackle the issue of investment into the digital infrastructure. What will be the position of digital technology in this, our national agenda for industrializing our country. Now, the second is looking at SDI. Why can't we take a critical look at science, technology, innovation? And I want to just give a very typical example. Our government, we all know how much the government bought Pfizer vaccine. But apparently, the company that invented Pfizer is not Pfizer as we know. The company is called BioNTech, which is in Germany. And from last quarter of 2020, 2020, they made 15 billion US dollars. And by the end of 2022, they've made 195 billion US dollars as the net profit for Pfizer intellectual property. My question is, why can't Ghana, a 67-year-old economy, invest into intellectual properties, innovations, and these technologies? Yes, we can look at traditional industrial sectors. But the brain power of our people, especially the young people, when we invest into it, it can give us a huge sums of benefits and profit. Pfizer is just less than 10 years, and Ghana, 1957, 2024 today. My question is, why can't we invest in science, technology, innovation, and digital technology? Thank you so much. And, and let me, okay, let me correct myself. We need contributions, not... Uh, questions. What you just said about the Fazal is a very interesting contribution. Please contribute. The forum is for contribution. Please. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, panelists. Uh, my name is Yao Foster. I'm the president of the Association of Cosmetic and Detergent Manufacturers of Ghana. Um, I want to make a very uh, brief contribution on boosting export. I love one thing that uh, the speaker said. That is... Um, Theodore Markham, attitudinal and cultural change. This is where our problem is. The mindset of the Ghanaian needs to shift. Needs to shift from seeing the how of how things are 
to the why of how things are being made. Now, the, we, we, we have a mindset that looks at the beauty of things that we see on the outside. We make noise about the Asian tigers. How did the Asian tigers reach where they are? They had a specific mindset of building, developing, focusing the mind on what the mind needs to do. Look at their religions. They train the mind. They train the mind. You sit down, you focus on a candle light, you meditate, and you see the candle light changing from blue to green. That is focus. That is where the fundamental of economic development begins from. I would want this summit to actually begin to look at the mindset of the Ghanaian. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. My name is Mohamed Abdul Somed Chentouni, the presiding member for Tolong District Assembly. Indeed, I'm happy to be part of this particular symposium today. When I heard of this, I took the pain and the risk to travel along from Tolong to here just to have the feeling of what our next plan is coming on board. <laughs> Reality, building a non-partisan consensus for national economic development plan. Ghana as the crossroad. I'm happy the championer who happens to be Dr. and Honorable Alanchira Mantene is on board trying to see the next path of Ghana. And I hope that in 2025, we should be thinking of how we are putting this into action under his leadership. I have such a belief. Ghana, under 35 years of democratic governance, our problem, as I have seen it, is all about lack of accountability and transparent governance. The resources are there, but what is next? The reality is, the winner takes all home. I'm only adding my voice as a rural, typical villager. We need to break the gap between the urban and the rural. That is what will lead Ghana to the next line of promised land. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I think we've been talking about industrialization without emphasizing on factors of production. You cannot um, produce and produce um, where you cannot sell. That's why we talk about taxation. So we are talking about industrialization, but where you produce is overpriced. You are nothing. We are in competitive world. We are talking about production, where we are not even factoring the distributive sector. All the presentation that we did, we did not see the distributive sector. Production is never complete unless um, it, it is linked with um, trading. So I, 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 I didn't see trading the distributive sector that will um, sell the produce. I didn't see it in the presentation, and we have to be taken um, very serious. And then we are talking about industrialization, where the Ghanaian worker is not employable. Who are going to feed these industries? Our workers are not employable. Now, even in the textile industry, we see people going to um, Senegal, Nigeria to bring people to soap. POP, towels, and all that we fall on Togolese people to do that. The Ghanaian workers need orientation and a serious one at that. And we did not capture all those. When, if you, we are talking about import substitution, it's very important that we know what we are producing to substitute the import, import that we do as traders. And we haven't done any conscious effort um, to identify those things that we have comparative advantage so that we can give incentives 
and make sure that they thrive so that we can also fall upon and buy as a way of substituting the import that we are talking about. Are we talking it in abstract forms? No. So it's very important that we take um, these things um, a very serious. Now, industrialization. When we talk about industrialization, are we talking about the agrochemical, the bauxite, and all that? No. If you, are, you do not have comp a, a competitive edge, you do not have. In this modernity, we do what we have comparative advantage. And how do we disregard those that form the basis of our industrialization? We don't even recognize that adding value to our plantain, now the plantain chips, the coconut oil, the cutty cake, all these things that we see on the road that is not well packed are the basis of our industries. We do not even see that. The basis of industrialization is identify what we have comparative advantage, package it, and market it. That's industrialization. And so we have it, and we have it in abundance, but we do not know the ones that we have the advantage to make sure that we make it um, uh, work. Um, people know me to be talkative. That's why I didn't want to talk. I have a lot to say. And, <laughs> but let me say one thing about the argument that we're going on with the, uh, Dr. Bang and the other gentleman about the Ghanaian workforce. It shouldn't be said that the public sector um, is taking all the the chunk of the resources of the nation. And we know that it's about 60 something percent that goes to the public sector workers. Where they do not reproduce or do regenerate employment, productivity is virtually nil. We have to look into it. There are so many. And they took the chunk of the resources. And that has been the bane of our problem in this nation. We have to look at it. Because when we, they go marching on the May Day, Celebration. I've never heard of them saying that the employment that we have have regenerated another employment. Because the employment that we have should be productive and it should regenerate employment. If you do not have it, then we do not have a positive employment. Thank you very much. My name is Benjamin Afrani Amankwa. Uh, I would rather want to tackle our psyche as Ghanaians. Since independence, I've seen that Ghanaians as a people, we tend to glorify theoretical education than going into practical or pragmatism. In my local language, Hui, when you see somebody under apprenticeship, they say that a person is going to learn a trade or a skill. But when somebody is in normal education, theoretical education, they see it to be a different thing altogether. This should be something that we should focus on as a country because when people go to school or attend school and they think that they are just passing through to get a certificate and after that somebody has to employ them, that is where we're having most of the issues coming up. The last speaker just talked about the fact that Ghanaians, most of the youth, are not employable, which is true. Let's go into our institutions of education. I will use KNUST as an example because I'm an alumni of KNUST. When I was a child, I saw that KNUST was having, apart from the education, 
that's the theoretical aspect of it, they were having the whole industry in agriculture. They had cattle and dairy product facility where they were producing yogurt, sausage, so many of these dairy products. They had paddocks and cattle ranches which were employing over 1,000 people. Let's go there today and see the sorry situation of these industries. They have all collapsed. They had UST farms. Cain UST farms had poultry. They had pigs, piggery. They had uh, even ostriches around. Go there today to see. Bush left following. They had pilot plantations like rubber plantation, uh, coffee plantation, cocoa plantation, which was located strategically close to the mechanical uh, facility center. Go there today to see. The whole plantation is down. The mechanical section is down. Nobody is working there. Ironically, the employees who were working under those institutions are still working around and they are being paid. I think it's high time we go into pragmatism, real practical education. And we seeing people coming out of school to thinking of starting something on their own, not just coming out of the school with certificates. At least the final years of most of these courses should be reserved for practical attachments. Thank you. Yeah, my name, my name is uh, Ben Hagen. I think uh, we have to wrap up, please. And I, I have a contribution wrapped out here. Oh, uh, who is it? Who is That's it? me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. The that's, name that's is Ben Hagen, and uh, I'm a consultant. Um, out of the presentations made, a key low-hanging fruit for, for us to grow our industrialization is in the agro-industry uh, sector. And I'm talking about this with, with key focus on what I refer to as uh, farm gate processing, where um, even small-scale producers of, um, of oil palm, of cassava, and other cash crops should be empowered to form cooperatives to do some basic value addition to the cash crops that they sell. There's no reason why even our small-scale farmers should be selling just raw oil palm for somebody else to go and add value to it. As using this one as a specific example, small-scale farmers in oil palm can be formed into a cooperative to do the basic production of crude palm oil. It empowers them to even detect the price for somebody else to go and uh, do some further addition. It also creates jobs, particularly in the rural areas where uh, these uh, cash crops are produced. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Just as a ground powder, I want to make a certain correction because okay. <laughs> this keeps on repeating itself. Yeah. The compensation that you see over there is total compensation. It's not only for public services. You have the president, you have the parliamentarians, everybody there. So let's get it right. It is not for public servants. Only. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, <laughs> Madam uh, moderator. Oh, uh, okay. Madam Moderator, oh, you, okay. please, let please. me, okay. um, just one last one okay. before you can wrap up. My name is Godwin Kwame Yamwa, um, human resource and uh, travel consultant. Um, I want to make a quick um, input um, to the many good ones that have been said. Um, if we're talking about industrialization, and how to get this sector boost in the country. 
I think it is important to look at the human resource development. We have to look at um, the human capital that can also make a huge input in this sector. We are comfortable as a country um, watching our engineers turn into rather uh, maintenance offices. We are comfortable seeing um, people who are supposed to have the skill, the development know-how, the acumen to do something to help this industry. We are watching them go waste. What is happening to our development institutions? What is happening to our training schools, our technical vocational institutions? We have to boost up our development of the human capital or the human resources, which I believe is a key to developing this industry. Um, many have been said by the attitude, but then if you don't have the people, you don't have attitude to change. So I think that the skill that has to be developed in the industrialization um, sector is important. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, my, please, my name is Enes Jemfi, and I'll, I think this uh, uh, contribution is very important, so I have to. I, I think uh, with all the, um, um, we've not heard anything about health. Okay. Uh, you've not talked about, uh, with all the presentation, we've not heard anything about health. And one of the things I want to ask is, most times, even when the previous government was uh, in opposition, they were doing the same thing. They come, they do most of the things. And when they come to power, we don't see anything. They don't implement it. And even when they implement it, they get to a point, then they, they divert. My question, my contribution is, we have uh, so many products in the market, special drinks. Most of these, chemi most of these drinks are chemicals and it's causing uh, problems for our kids, our children. Most of them are having kidney problems. Meanwhile, we have uh, mangoes, we have all these fruits, and when they, uh, when, during their season and they arrived, nobody is um, producing them. And I think we have to watch this thing because uh, the life expen uh, the expectancy is it's, it's serious. People are dying at a young age. So if we can have a way we can, uh, the government can find a way of, because if you go on YouTube, you see people in, Malay in Asia, you see people producing things in their bedrooms. We have youths who can produce some of these things, but they, have, they don't have access to funds. All the presentation is talking about millions of dollars, millions of CDs. Meanwhile, somebody needs 20,000, 30,000 to build something. So if we can find a way of helping our youth to develop these uh, fruits that are going waste, so that uh, the FDA too should be careful. They are, they are approving some of, most of these chemicals into the market, and it is causing kidney problems to our children. So I think this is my contribution. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. My name is no, we, we have to wrap up. Please, we are, we are running out of time. I'm so sorry, please. I'm so sorry. We are the only woman. Yes, so you are a moderator now. So you're the only woman. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I'm very grateful for this summit because it's very important and it's, it's a blessing to be here. Um, I think that my um, contribution is about wastage. And then I have a package, a pocket full of ideas. And then it's always about connectivity. Uh, you go to offices, uh, your files is being taken, your ideas is being taken, but it's not being implemented. I want to suggest that there should be uh, an, an organization where ideas can be welcomed. Because um, we produce a lot of things in Ghana, tomatoes, banana, a lot of things that can be used as end products. I'm talking about wastage because when tomato is in season, we can use it for so many things, but it's still not being implemented. I had issues about um, me producing banana soap, 
carrot soap and others, and then I took it to so many um, offices. But my file was being turned down because 1D, 1F is not having fans. So I would suggest that we, those that have ideas, would have to be called to bring up our ideas and then find ways of trying to implement them. Um, I was told that um, being an entrepreneur, you should not um, think of being a CEO yourself. But we have issues in Ghana where you even want people to come and help you. Maybe you have the idea, 50% um, investment, and you will not get help from anywhere. You go to um, small businesses, register your business. You have to go back to FDA, to um, Registrar General, and the processes are so many. Trying to package pro products in Ghana is also a problem. We have so many ways of producing things without even using electricity. Uh, for example, I have a soap made of shea butter and it's cold pressed. So that means the process don't even have to go through any electricity, it's purely manpower. We can still use tomato paste without using electricity, packaging, and we just have to promote Ghanaian made um, products. Um, we can just accept using um, Milo without the tin. We can accept consuming shea butter um, oil for producing our food, which will re reduce the cost of production, and then everybody can assess them. Thank you very much. Th thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, the discussions, contributions are getting very interesting, and uh, we take solace in the, that we have, we are very nationalistic, we are all being patriot patriotic, and we are all have a very positive um, mind towards the transformation of this country. As the other contributor said, we need a leader that can implement this because uh, you can have all the strategies in this world. If you don't have the right implementers, it will never be implemented. And that is what we are facing. Um, the human resource is a huge issue in this country. It's a huge issue in this country. The attitude is also huge reliability and uh, stealing you know you engage people they come in and steal because you trust them so it's very very difficult so let's wrap it up but the beauty of it is that we still have that positive attitude that this country can be transformed yes so if the panelists can give us a wrap up can you wrap it up so that uh, we can assure our uh, I, yes, of yeah, what thank you. Uh, I, I'm just echoing my excitement about what has been put forth uh, because I've worked in a space that interacts with a lot of business people. Um, one of the things that uh, I picked up as the presentations were going on is how can a nation industrialize if it does not have the capacity to manufacture its own means of production. The equipment that are needed to manufacture the toothpick that we always talk about, and the tomato paste and all of that. You can't manufacture food processing machines without stainless steel. But the people who are doing it now are doing it with mild steel. It rusts and it introduces a lot of things into our system and so on. So that plan for us to build our own capacity to manufacture our productive means of production, the machines we need for, uh, is something that we need to start. I mean, a common scale. We are still talking Olonka and uh, Nyata, and uh, <laughs> one, uh, the, the Minister of Agriculture uses uh, average tuba of yam. What, what is that? Oh, yeah. we, can't, we can't use ordinary weighing scales in our marketplaces. And what does it take to manufacture weighing scales and balances? You go to places, people are weighing everything, even fodder, fodder, fodder for animals is weighed. We are still doing Olonka. Yeah. So, so these, are, these are the things that we need to, we need to work out. And it's okay. been established there as processes that we need to have a plan a national hierarchy of goals that will direct us to achieve these things. Thank you so much. 
And we're all talking about the mindset. It's very, very important because when you go to a place like Senegal and you go to the marketplace, they all use skills. They are not educated. So I agree with you. So Theodora, can you wrap it up? Yes. Uh, let me address very quickly the issue of human capital and mindset. I made a suggestion that we should recalibrate our educational curriculum, aiming at developing a high proportion of graduates in science, technology, and agriculture. And this also should be linked to our natural resource base. We have a lot of minerals still being exported raw because we have industrialization program, which is very ambitious. And we need the same raw materials to actually transform this economy, and we should not let it go. If you take about lithium, for example, uh, we should be aiming at a complete value chain which ends up with electric vehicles. And the African continental free trade area is big for us to chip in. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the last one, please. I also want to thank all of you who made contribution into the transformation of the industrial, uh, industrial sector of this country. And I want to say that your contributions are, are in the right direction. But basically the presentation was looking at the broad areas for engendering thought and thinking as what can be done. But when it comes to actual implementation, that's where we say the devil is in the details. And most of these things that you have brought up will definitely be considered. We we'll have to look at strategic policy options to make sure that we achieve some of these things that we've outlined. So please thank you once again. And uh, somebody raised an issue on science, technology, innovation. Yeah, we have the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. We also have the academia and the universities. At times, they are not well resourced. And if we really want to get the best out of them, it may be important that we are intentional about developing strong linkages between academia and industry so that we get the best out of the institutions. So once again, thank you for your contributions. Thank you very much. We thank you all. And in conclusion, we all see that we, there's still hope for this country to be transformed. And we need to change our attitude. As a matter of fact, if we change an at our attitude and our mindset, I think we can work. Because we can have the best leader, but if the human resource, the mindset, the attitude, the reliability, the character. Some of us, you know, it's, it's so abysmal. We cannot move on. So, but I'm so confident and happy that there's still hope and people are very nationalistic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Put your hands together for Madame Felicia Chumesi, Mr. Francis Kusi, Mr. Theodore Makam, and Mr. Daniel Eku. Please put your hands together for them one more time. You can take your seats now. We're still here at the National Economic Summit Coming to you live from the Mevin Peak Ambassador Hotel. We've just finished with our second uh, panel discussion on industrial transformation. And I want you to give yourselves a big round of applause. This is just halftime. Hashtag Alan Speaks. Half, hashtag National Economic Summit 2024. We're streaming live on social media. Facebook, Alan John Kojo Chermating. Look for us, we're there. YouTube, Alan John Chermating as well. We're also broadcasting my sister. I haven't heard your voice in a long time. How are you doing and how are our listeners and viewers doing online? They've taken your mic away from yes, you. Yes, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear. What are they saying online? Are they excited about what we are talking about so far? A lot, Bernard Avle. I will say, for some medical culture, but in local dialect, you know, I could say, I think, you know, I'm so aware. Now, we share National Economic Summit. Yeah, and they are your panel discussion. One and two, you know, it's the BBC. Oh, my God, you're lucky, you're my crap. Participants, you know, I have said, no, we share solutions. I'm with you, my idea. I think, say, Anka, we not takes all system, no. If you want to say the may brother, who can you know, cabinet, 
Kebe bwa bai no ama ya sheshe ni ema kama. Into obi a contributions a wadi abano. Eye kama na. Midika for our first panel discussion, Dr. John Kwache, or can simply bring what's the sense independence? Eban economic transformation, Ghana, Kakre bin yet to me enjoy. Eban resources are over 10 trillion dollars. Up you all help people do a job by the seeker and your fellow Ghanaians, dear. Now, one bear soon you bet to me and your son, your mother, when you know, dear boy or man, you hear new policies. And she's here for frock, yes, her achievement. You bet me a Drew Honum, ain't he? Alan Great Transmissional Plan. AGTP is the way forward. Anna, and I have my senior brother here, Parker, or no so or your pa TV, Kumase, and in bedding Komo Kakra. Now, yeah, who send your program? No, AC Echo. So, Parker, at the same, I'm not doing your parents. We did this summit. You want to enjoy part discussion on who is saying, first of all, oh, of course. I mean, discussion is very interesting so far. We be able to do as our mind idea. You hear some of these discussion. Yeah. So now, by the way, you know, coffee, you know, you have a good job. Now, the idea is just one. And yes, our mind, no, for a very long time, no, some of these summits, yeah, yeah, impossible, yeah. Oh, can you pray no? Mika, of course, yeah, yeah, impossible, yeah. But this time, there, with the Great Transformation Plan, there, I have been on. I'm doing sacred air bus system. Number there. Yeah, you know, your vision is there. But yeah, Juma, I'm on my own. It's me. It's you, Ponakoso. Good. I think say we we fast some notes. I would do be a person. No, no. A dear my end. Yeah, share. Ma would do a yekra demo or main we bring importation. Yes, you see the depreciation and also can we be now affected going forward? You know, see, you can see it to me. See your local production. You be bring. We did say you can see the new economic. You know, a bit me aboa. Of course. I mean, one of the things are. Uh, was the review of uh, 1D, 1F, exactly. which is very important. In fact, we team Koma, Air Corso, and in Penifua, Omodanwa, Omsika Samuka, and I bimba. Yadi, a dinner to say 1D, 1F, dear Nancy Sika Samuno, and Koye in Tiama, production of 80 Mimbe, and my Yenya and Honfaso. It's him that has become a challenge. Again, one of the things are, uh, not a Yemi die, I can say, Yamfa Cup, and to. Busia ye bo as a mine. A dosso. A dosso. I mean, obi enim. It's no secret. In fact, I'm not okay. Ye bo busia to the stand that ye bit your back will be crowd on the 2061. Ye bo busia. Exactly. So you can imagine. Yeah, you're right. And ye ma 2061 on the 3rd of March 2061. And I will say you just have And ask yourself, say, I didn't see now Tigana. Now ye bo busia the winning till 2061. What will be there? You know, say the cap. You did silly me too, and you say, We are man bringing our bar. Sabi Sabi, and yet Bibiana is okay. You can farm a crime be a bit to me a fast local yen and and a year your resource person. The kind ah, yeah, domestically, no. A bit to me a boy being your revenue from a year, yeah, 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 and you say, Yes, sorry, yeah, now go far a cap. You continue on air for our viewers while we make some announcements here to save time. Very well. Just to give you a sense that this is a national conversation, lots of people to acknowledge, but before that, a couple of quick announcements. We will be going for a quick lunch break. We are aiming to come back at 2 p.m., which means we have a little above 45 minutes to have lunch. There are three categories of lunch. If you've been given a coupon, received a lunch coupon, it means your lunch will be just outside. We have a buffet for you. He's also at the back, which together for him. From the Christian Council, Reverend Fayose. I think I saw him at the back, which together for him. 
independent parliamentary aspirant and uh, Kwame A plus is also here with us. He's going for Goma Central. He's also a media con a practitioner as well. Thank you for being here. Chairman of PNC, I think the acting chairman, uh, Bala Salifu is also here. Mr. Salifu, give us a wave. We're privileged to have you. The AGI is represented strongly by the cluster rep for cosmetic and beauty, former national champion Sandy Osea Jemain. I think I saw him somewhere. Give us a wave. Thank you very much, Sandy. He, was, he nailed it in athletics. He's nailing it in industry as well. So happy to have you here. We are also privileged to have Francis Nomotete from the Association of uh, Garages. Garages, where are they? Francis, did I get your name right? Nomotete, where are you? Thank you very much for being here indeed. So just to say that we have two very important plenaries. I noticed some of the questions were about agriculture. People were asking about health. The next plenary will be moderated by no mean a person or no less a person than Dr. Michael Abu Sakara Foster, and it's on a new agricultural revolution. Where are the agri people? Let me see your hands. <laughs> Wonderful. Big conversation coming up on the agri sector. We have some very important people from the sector. Dr. Henry Enim Somoa, if he's here, should give us a wave. Dr. Enim Somoa is going to be one of our panel members. Thank you, sir. He's speaking on the enhancing agricultural production and productivity cluster. We also have Mr. Roland Nikwe, managing partner for New Age Agri Solutions. Where is Nikwe? Give us a wave. Thank you very much indeed. Very important conversation on agriculture, followed by a discussion. We are happy with your contributions. Please put your hands together for yourselves. Very, very, very rich contributions. And our fourth and final plenary is on tourism, one of the largest employers in the country. And the moderator will be Mr. Bessa Simons. He is the man of the Belembe fame, president of Musiga. And he would have, is he here? He's joining us soon. We would have Mr. Kweku Lomomenu, who is an international consultant of tourism. Mr. Lomomenu, where are you? Give me a wave. Thank you very much, sir. And as well, Dr. Ofori Kurigu. Big, big discussion indeed. When we're done with that, we have a rapporteur's report. We also have Mr. Gilbert Agri, Abeku Santana, joining us for the tourism panel. I'm sure he'll be here soon. I'm sure a can also join that if Abeku Santana is not here. All of that will be followed by the rapporteur's special report. Chief rapporteur, are you getting any notes? Are we making sense? Can we win? Put your hands together for the rapporteur. <laughs> Wonderful. We will also take comments from the various industry groups after which the convener, Excellency Alan Chamating, will bring us closing remarks. So there's a lot to do. First, we want to invite those with VVIP lunch coupons to move out. Please come and take them out, sir. And then the, those with the normal lunch tickets as well, so we can manage the inventory quite quickly. TUC, thank you for being here. Ambassador Bewa, thank you for being here. We're all going for lunch. So... You want to, oh, you want to make a presentation to him? Yes, please. So before we go for lunch break, I want to respectfully, please wait, don't go. I want to invite the Dr. Yaoba to do a quick presentation to the convener. So please come up. Dr. Ba will do a quick presentation on behalf of organized labor to the convener and the leader of the movement for change. This is for the record. Please bring him a mic to say a few things before he does the presentation. The TUC, headed by Dr. Ba, Repre please come upstairs. Representing organized labor will do a brief presentation to the leader of the Movement for Change and the convener for the National Economic Summit. Isaac Bampuado is also here. He is the leader of the CLOCSAG, which is the civil and local government, local something something association. Staff Association. <laughs> so basically, these two people represent organized labor. And also the chairman of Forum. Also the chairman of Forum. So the, the organized labor, Dr. Ban, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of organized labor, the workers of this country, we have prepared what we call Workers' Manifesto. And we are going to hand over a copy to our brother Alan. 
Uh, this covers a lot of major issues, including some that have been discussed here. But because of time, we cannot go through it. So on behalf of Organized Labor, we are presenting to you 20 copies of our Workers' Manifesto. Thank you very much. And Thank you very I'm much. Here, I'm here with Dr. Isaac Bampuado. He is the chairman of the Forum for Public Sector Workers. I'm the Secretary General of TUC, and Sister Comfort is a General Secretary for Construction Union of TUC. Thank you very much. 20 copies of the Workers' Manifesto presented to the summit convener and leader of the Movement for Change, Excellency Alan John Chamati. Put your hands together. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Wonderful. We'll take a nice group photograph. And the team will lead us for lunch after this. Dr. Sakara and the team will follow. We'll all go for lunch. Dr. Kwachi, thank you for your presentation. We will ask those who don't have lunch coupons to remain here because your lunch is a buffet. If you have the VVIP, head of protocol, please rise. Let them follow you, madam. You follow this lady. She will take you to your lunch. Those with other coupons as well, there's a place for you to have lunch. We are back at 2 o'clock. We are having lunch in 35 minutes. 35 minutes. It's 1.25. We are back here at 2 o'clock to do the third and fourth. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you after lunch. Thank you.
to a dream or Hana. Omo ye and penny phobia, omunim de, or my dream mudo. Yes, a basca semusia, or swan ye and all can was him. Yeah. A ba a juma if you did juma share one, unim be bena crampo, I am worth my pain. Yes, and on my bets now, Mokasa sem no, a brahman your sem and cow. On partisan manner in which, the, and the dispassionate manner in which this discussion is being had. Okay. Seventy one monuments are here. Yeah. Hmm. Any what uh, economists because of what the opportunity cost of that money would have been. Hmm. And no Madudo, I hold a band and can you be to me this as can I? A idea was here dream who he and yes, answer dream. Of course, over some of mine one. Yeah, I was say yet to me a jaw quine, a dawas a kama kama. But send me a city and no dear, my am your YMF, Nipa be brain, Nankasa, who he am, who he am, Bubro Muno. Any quines over some of mine one, you could cruise as can you? It's your no dear. Many doctor Quatia have been power, but said a bayas, I said, Maybe see a talk as soon we know. I will see a yesterday before. Yet me quantify from 92 up to now how much we've spent in this article uh, 71 emolument. Yeah. Near Kafi Infidi Juma industrialization. Near a movie on my. A value addition. And a bema when you ska, and on a bema a baby be in your muscle because say me or uncle fool, that's a mecassa media and carnal bed than it juicer. You obey cha, you obey obeching, you are the be fun for the moon, you are the package, you are the bottle. Oh, my na, a yadina, a juma juma, a kuma kube, a sia, a maca, you create employment for people. But if you decide to just pluck the orange and export it, you're exporting six or seven jobs to the country which you're exporting it to. So, a economy now, and I have free and I don't pencil up to now. And even here, the industries that we have, the work room has seen also. And you're gonna afford ya. Will be free. Another country, no, about not gonna afford the dinner, ni muru, ni ni namua, ni amani license, no, a beer, ha. Oh, yeah, in Fasu, Benyana, Fasu, Chitri, the new puny, and I know the Kony Chrome, near the Akoto Banks, I hold on. Yes, a better no minor developer. Sans in the same way, and I was here, Jinny, who ye and I, Bab and Chrome. Near to me, the a developer plan be a young cassette between your follow and China for I'm a man who say a bit to me. Yes, Korea for I'm a man who say a bit to me. Singapore, I'm a man who say a bit to me. The young say a day, you are dreaming back home and chrome. Near Jaisa, a man you're some near Pepa, a muay, Unimansa, and Yansa, some crown or can. Why and this in your MPP Wabam Tian Yenti? Yansa, some no call your MPP and this Wabam Tianti. Sam Samuel, Sam your man, I was here free. You have said a bear on my base here too. Good. Would you say Sabe and pay for no dear Wookan or Muni Muana? Who can ask Gracia Wassen? Review Nyan Ye, near Bay and Po, and as a politician, you know, no Muni Mudajin, ye ye, and Branos and a Bay, I miss you to one of them. Yea, any day, ye and your review and a young chum, not Emfa and Rafa from Bram. Um, you can say, Yena, Yelma or Mamufono, Yen or Musumia, and yet, and yet, the other way around. They are supposed to serve us. Yeah. And the Yamo Moon say any Abrea. A quampers. Any bread of Ubana, Ubana, near Osa or Yan Wanya. Yan you flew up. Tidabi or Bia Baba Wank, near Yinif Yan for nothing soon, Yan and Penny Fona. A Yakane say it's a Biana say, and ye ye didn't won't come. No moon, a cosso bacum, you know, mean I be who say, hm, say you're gonna for any Abre. Say you're gonna for any Abre. Not yet to me, I had the SSS. Oh, Munim. But you can't say you're my referee. Because of free, baby, are not. I bet now, baby, for the office, your money, car, your money, driver, your money, say, say, problems are also solved. Then you refuse. Then you know, but I was said that be a timid bomb to Jasabi. 
So that be on back, I say, a bibinti and you don't make a copy. Good. Make a copy. Me da sinti me niabe ma opoku ono swa TV three and ono swa sodeni di abane. So Mr. Faka, ni abe opoku ono swa TV three and ono swa sodeni di abane. So Mr. Faka, ni abe opoku ono swa TV three and ono swa sodeni di abane. So Mr. Faka, ni abe opoku ono swa TV three and ono swa sodeni di abane. So Mr. Faka, ni abe opoku ono swa TV three and ono swa sodeni di abane. So Mr. Faka, ni abe opoku ono swa TV three and ono swa sodeni di abane. So Mr. Faka, ni abe opoku ono swa TV three and ono swa sodeni di abane. So Mr. Faka, ni abe opoku ono swa TV three and Pa, about the employment near the day, being here, saying a good campaign for every chunk of one. That's your mercy, especially hourly. A year we know come, okay, you know, how we are going to implement it. And we'll be here, saying on bedding for one of your team. That's your message is no very dear, my right. Thank you very much. So, Paka on also all your parts, if you could must stay in the Ashanti region and or come and why did you make a year, bro? What dear, yeah, come on, say, you know, and say. Ono menu betu mi ejine ye na enya ma nyofu onku na yi ya bro civil servants mo kro mo ye dangerous class ni politicians no but ono ye nhye da enko ono bebre ene ye din komo opoku enti de ne ye kan i think say good of all rezi concerns be say be yanka e ba no package hu niamma ni ukwa register fda register e process no e doso Anka ufisi yeye ni sana bebo wa uma. Anko bebi ya, anko Rwanda. Rwanda haya, nani uya? Umai ano, umukun tofa, popo popo, tese. Yesi yeba Africa, yepre countries, umukun mutumpo wa Rwanda kaho. E dia nami yani ya, adria, e yeye behind Rwanda's ability of transforming, do ease of doing business. E yaga nani? Kana nini nami bafa ano akwata na akwata? Wode sana shi shi nini na at at at? Yes, because umuti asiyese. If you are say, oh, be, uh, you are in competition with other countries to bring in FDI, yeah. which a lot of now we have IMF reported by 155. Almost here, you attracted foreign direct investment yeah. rather than that. Now, semi do me see about my now registrar general. Mm. Obey taking me three months. I sent me to my register company. Um, running your clear, they say, and son, and you also hear you, my mom, no part. They would be a general son, or they also are. Now we call Rwanda. Now within three hours, the bay arm amia. Who can say the music are about my mood? There be the ease of doing business in there. And we are pa. And even apart from that, you do the skate from an neighbor. You are gonna fall be brave. We are bomb bomb music. On base on be be juma man kufonya bidi. And so 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 amanya di amanya sema sem. See, and and niyama niyama sem so kwa frustration. You be frustrating because obi person odi adam odi ansana di oso he no why amam. Mindset, I, I, that's the point. That's that's also a very important point that has been raised again. Yeah. Aye, then I gonna fuck up with ya. I'm gonna conform with you. Recent service, US, New UK. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. I'm I'm in front for I'm gonna go for Chrome. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna dim. I'm gonna fuck up. Aye, no crap. Aye, then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna boss up. System needs you. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Aye, mindset needs system. I create. Into your bit to me, aye. Okay. I'm just talking about Professor Siawa has transformed the ease of doing business in Rwanda. He's Ghanaian. Yeah. Inti, iya ni aye ho. Adrian ni nyansa ni diya waha. Basi ebet na si ni akambo mi ni na yadi nsa akobenkro mu ni epiya agenda nama ede ya kobebi awasi eko na nini asemo. Me dalsi, Mr. Poku akasa ya mindset no ya sesano kakra. Inti, Daddy, pacho somo mama wai. Me ni guta peni pa e waha se ene. We have to continue. We have been industrialization. I think say rural and quadrant chairman. Eh, and this wording will be acquired. We should advise countries to know through industrialization. And I'm going to make me a comment. We see energy. If we want to send a break, catch the energy. Now we say it's here. We are not paying any money. Me do so me rough, rough. Yes, she is here. Ah, me show her, ma'am. Energy. If we want to know what you're doing. Ah, you're here. Good. The other day, we had a national economic summit. Eh, we had a say. You made the energy boil. Ah, dia ayah mesti apa ya afi abad tu, ni se, ni si ada em se, eh sakral mun sakral mun oba, em se ya ye intellectual base. Ushe, orang penida dah, wakofa 24 hour economy ba, ye na urut menyang for alam, and so esy ni economic dialogue, na ye kasar, nu osem, and dia ma, ihi a, ibit mi, edi a tin tin policy bia, so oba. Or no so bit me the ayen you ma na the hear my yen the see any say who's the first no politicians no or more your moment in first to no more but one man the see I know the ayen paper they say yes she had the input a best set manifest to no more prepare because we'll be our no political leader be our no a potential winner to form a government and you know 
Manufacturing is not complete unless it reaches the final consumer and we serve as the vehicle. It's true. And it is uh, important say you be ma what policy makers in it know who the importance of um, the distributive sector. Now for your council, now your case, you need to be in produce. You are not buying no upwarding. And it is factors of production also no as you should be. Because we, um, yeah, we must see any import substitution. We can say import substitution. We want to be producing, we not buy no one. Now the board, now we want to be going on a manani a buafu. We want to be cassette international, a Ghana for no engoto a di a ni board. And it is now say eh yeah, say taxes now yeah cartelization. No, ni na no em wa em ma yeah yeah competitive your sub region. And it is now born say company B eh we togo we must yeah angwa. And a company being so organa or no see and what factory. And so there were Yanu Togo no and go for cotton there and uh they are Yanu Ghana and Yeja because cost of doing business and no air high. Unilever for near Maya, one more one more was a Unilever Bua Ghana and they blew Nigeria. Wouldn't we say what will cock of Nigeria dear no be even Unilever for no crown on your money be break crown on my so won't produce who mo for Nigeria, the other neighbor. Hey, raw materials, no, no, sir. Then, the man, yeah, no, how no, no, boy, yeah, things. Hey, yeah, you know, factors of production, say, yeah, uh, yeah, um, electricity, uh, yeah, utility bills, uh, yeah, taxes, yeah, yeah, come where some, yeah. So, we will be taxes, any cost of borrowing. The cost of borrowing, say, will be a bubble, say, to say, China, no more, more bubble, say, three percent. Now we see, now bubble, say, thirty-five percent. So what no difference in Uncle three percent thirty five on Uncle to me the a two free and it is and all now my yeah yeah no buy no and you productive. It is what we say import substitution. Now say one more and share sign your mana and my yet to me and follow on your local produce on us. Now say I do our mock and do I do our mock because we to make us all produce. No, what can I try? Now they are now producing and it will be producing in Tekua. What do you who produce no? Ten cities. A better in Ghana. In Ghana, in no so no, it's not based there. You are punishing all the time. So then you are in Ghana. You are bored. You are part teaching to not Okay. And don't you? So you are many na na. You see, you see. Now cost of doing business. You are handling. You are not a cost from now. You come with you. You are say taxes now. You do and you too much duties. You do ya. So you are many na. You are back home. Ask them. Ama. Um. One more. We be all your potential when they be ano. What in team I'm going to say, or bar, and say, and your share now, a dead year, so it's me too born a boy or my gun. Yeah, I don't see revenue mobilization to be an Yabedia financial small medium enterprises. No, doctor, suck a few, where can be before loans? I would do our banks and into me and pharma in your market one day at the time. If you say a dear bent. Ah, okay. Yeah, loans are there to tell the truth. Access to loans are not a whole. Okay. But you need access to affordable loan credit, you know. You need any affordable. Nibo adding. Na no na waka wasem no no waka se se kabe ya possible ukrana. On se gapo na edahoma banks, you know, to operate, you know. Wamo no 
more air are the more inefficiencies. One more tasks I want to tear, one more corruption at what bank war, one more be piano, one more canning now, boom, one more the Abaka, yeah, yeah, risk, and now one more can I say, yeah, yeah, risk for that, one more, no more to interest rate in Umbebri. Sadeno, the woman said, I see a new control, I see a new liberalized trade of money, a year banking sector, no, but there should be some control of the trade of money, and it's a beer, will be bad mouth, and Bosnia. Nemo Timi, a body ceremony, a day, um, interest in your PBR, no debate so. And no, 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 support to Papa, say, Sabaya possible, I am my caps to be, and I am my ceiling. Ah, yet me, a day, a mass interest, no. See, it's me, a yes, I be a name, any bank of Ghana, a governor, no, a casa, no, a casa, and yeah, feasible, but me, so make us say, countries be. A year be a site, a Brazil, and other countries. There should be a cap. It shouldn't be said, you be Jenny Natra, Nabans and the Omu Pibiano, or my Ebassana, a Mel Ekronin Tumpo, and me and your competitive. In the sub region, once you are set task to GDP, you know, yeah, yeah, Diano, and a Yakuma cry. Now, who is saying, and a Yanu cry, yeah, yeah, task to GDP, no, it's a extra say. Sir, on the woman taxes, no, and toss up a bunkam, um, who crow for so. Now, I give you your friend of compliance, now you are affected. On the a two two, I know the amount of good news you can in for him, no, 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 so poor, no, no, compliance, any part, a day, a city, any hours, a penny or paper, a two at one. But on my a two, no, a year be brain, a new one, so yeah, the end, yeah, I feel now, man, for Pecotic, maybe, no more Janet one. And in Tina Magana Hano, because you had no yet twenty nine no so saying, your neighboring countries, you know, and Tina Ama Womono is answer compliance and no was low because of say affordability of their taxes and in Tino. No one where me achieve um, um, tax to GDP, you know, Cassia, the woman in them eighteen percent, twenty percent, and Agana, well, you thirteen percent. It is Utah Catrema to Tobia. Now, production. 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 Yang will be at me up manufacture with the chrome in Tina, yeah, yeah, qua, yeah, coto. In Tia de Tinanka, ya manufacture with your chroma and Kianto. And no, no, Cababua, ya send Anka, young coffa ship, young for plane, and I yen Tia, Bibia, Nanka, your one to him. But ya, 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 it is yanya your what stores on your yaya talk and yamani na ma wama shortfall of demand. Dear a bit new chrome ya say no, and I said the woman produce crano, na and no swan and swing no no, and only a yeah kwa man on it, echo for best also. It iti see a ye um uh local manufacturing, na at door so ne bun cam, ne buono ye quality ye a den ye better if ye and cause ya yan is a bad way. But no crew won't pan is same. Say you see a excessive importation. My cousin said we are my bread. Importation now, Ghana for now. Yeah, 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 the ban. Importation, oh yeah, yeah, we mu. Yeah, chef, we mu near about twenty percent. We mu mu di kesi ya pa bano ye. China more, ne China town ne. So foreigners be a. We mu and yes, Lebanese for we be a Ghana for. Yeah. And now we mu up here for a ye foreigners a we mu no end qualify. So be ba be di se dwa no wo mo na e fa do so po no pa e no ne ka se yam fa investment laws no yam sa kram na yam fa en contain an a yam fa en tire sa fo no se bi o mo fa thousands of container fa wo ka se Ghana for Ghana for do e be ko e Dubai no ma ko fa container ba ko no ma te e container no mo de o mo ne ma gu ma ba na wo mo a make o mo se China town na wo ha no se any China mo the swam year, Juma, year, Juma, Cosiada. Twenty four hour economy, no more deal. Romo, a young swa, one more first cut. Scanna as a foreign estate in a year. One more farmer, it's investment law, no, I made trace. Dear, yes, here, Yanis, one can trace our phone. 
no mo fa sika na wo mo de e e import ni ma no e beto bank of ghana na wo ma yusu se sika no e de akofa wo mo ni ma na aba wo ye sa de a e de e affect ye local currency no na eh wo mo ye ja wo mo tra ti wo no no ba investment say investment law no hsf e ni ma 1 million ba ti wo de ba no i plan di part 20 as we qualify na fe wo chicha na ni ma na di begum Ah, one well, fat to ku or my me bin do kwa a de dollar be air ba. It was the near mahunu ba no a bet one for for no as a side your foreign yeah, exchange no, echo. And in tea, now say a woman say you be used to investment law no. Now say the busy car ya no. Ya ya sad ya investment law no say. So won't you across your own work? Now what the near obe obe o open so di a ja we ye trade in India. And yeah, when you mana what they ban for whose can I what they ban? Because in this all person say yes, he can echo. Now for better her. Now what you should say is can they are here? See, I am not sad here. But me, I'm poor. The tiyai, what's the tiyai import be free? Tiyai, you take from no area. Can't you anywa? Can't you? Can't you be pe? It is a matter of baby a problem no. Maybe you should see. Who can say now they are found? Maybe baby a the better. That is the best. Yeah. Yami Ensha. Paka. Let me say something. Yeah. Let me say something. Just okay. Point be about see. Okay. Ghanian workers are unemployable. Ah no crack. They see no skills. A car home. No credit. And so car home. They see ah. What they oh oh biya. What they offer fire your program. Now call oh biya. We are manufacturer. And now say we are trader. They put us say Ghanian worker. No say we need need no need no. So we are what. Then I have to do what they do. Ah, it's the Ghanian workers who don't be accountable. Do you wanna? Do you wanna be accountable? Best thing to say. I see. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. We are not going to do what they do. Into a room, but no, no, some people no be some. Oh, quite sorry, so yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, Kasa wa sorry wa. I see you shall be the head, not the tail. Into a man where some boy you throw try and flew. Oh, no, no, be your head, you know. And it's a man. And can a juma? A di ambi ni mko fubi promos kan komet mdi aji share juma. Ba ku wa be seven million pounds. E wa UK. Ah, wa di three hundred thousand pounds be e be starti bibi. Senke ye ya neka wa di skip fudu na ba. Before the turn of the year, now you see, can you imagine? And to when me, I'm farmer. And it's not about a human to be eight member. They see, I will share. I don't know. You mad down? No, I can't. No, we need a Ghanaian workers and then we go for expertise. They see, I go for maybe I go for Pakistan for Philippines. And a baby. I'm a manager. I'm a manager. I'm a Ghana. Yes, I see. Because we the human nation is a we best say no. And now, uh, you would have young share skills and also no. Also, your pama dear, make I say free boys who penny pencil and will be a real school, a real elementary school as you could see on the farm. Be what? Yeah, if you're going to go for a deeper mupa and see, I know so we shall test our industry now. Will be able to be no up on Captain, no one can want it yet for export to no one can. You will confirm free to go ever for me free. Nigeria, Mali, and and a bayer said you manwa. Yeah, Tasa industry is being eighty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your skill now, your dekusi ya kabano, ah kabano terminal. Your first skill full from here and come home. And now ma sad na abba. Iti I say your real rentier ti wo. Okay. So and now face we would share towns, POP. Wo POP a wa mi a mi a ni a yeti a i. Wo ko yo towns a so me ko peto go for no. No ama bayer. Wo ko yo POP a so me ko pe. To go for no, a barber, yeah. It's a yes, go. Things are in my idea. I control. Sebia, well, you know, I know that now one will be come and set and on the counter. This year, I'm just on your money now. Also, me catch a labor, Ghana labor, I say, yeah, yeah, you know. Also, yeah, 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 because of unemployment, unemployment. I said, a employment, yeah, yeah, what are done? I know that I said, a regenerative employment. What you must say? Employment. We must have four more juma or more year juma. So we must have juma ni year ne juma ni two pounds. Si kano no buy ne bano any DPI juma for four. Every Saturday employment club four. I'm telling you. Since our labour force no, any inactive. No more any productive. And only a man who na ye di tuye. 
Iti ena meka se ye ye ni ye workable labor ye ni Ghanian. We are not workable. I hope that what he has said. Yeah, you can't say. Sabria. Square organa for be brown between my but attitude in Tia Kofa and Kofo Fifi and Kofa Masum Mumba Mali and Omoba be managing a company as well. Oh, my and yes, Ghana for Yasu could rub with China. Yeah, 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 yeah. Environment, no training, no day. I bet me I found said the bear. If it's your son of a now can't say himself. But for the Brinao, it was store set on your money. I did. Ah, be a beer bum, say man, come to me, I shift it. A manufacturer because already more market share and all that. And you might be in a similar coin, some more best surface because Sabre manufacturing are doing now. Share latest research in the reports I have by Eddie Eddie from from and from some kind of one guy. We don't own the commanding heights of the economy. Yo, it's made as a power. Oh, I'm sorry, who bet my year manufacturing? I'm a two pony. And so with me at home now with me who volumes on. And it's not we appear with free outside trading, a beer work manufacturing beer, a failure. It's a year, no, yeah, a natural progression. Set what one day and hold your tabletop, no one your stock, a crown, no one started to walk off fair, walk off fair, walk crown your man, I'll go to a home machine and the idea now they are back. Now, one more, one more work trading more, a more manufacturing more, more than eighty percent in a year traders. And your lawyers in the world trade, which are lawyers in the world, a war manufacturing. There be anything yen 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 migrating now. On say a do baby no, um, so natural progression, no, a sweet try. And only Satama, once a yan no kiss yan, yeah, 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 near your tradition, yes, yan, yan penny forty cents yan, a yan no more, no more, a woman, what woman in yes, yan woman. And you could do pepper and soap, yeah, woman, no. Yet see one more, a brew one more, a year, year now for a month for say, hey, we yes are not near by home. And it's Yana, a year, you know, Yania attitude, and here you pass a Siano, as I started ever, a month for be brie, a call manufacturing, especially in the plastic sector, no, nay, you know, um, Yania Jedi for ya, ya members now, ya in good time members, nay, ya traders, and be brie, see a manufacturing. Ya, you zoom, sir. At the tone for Mokahona, Ghana, and I'm open for so and for so more do 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 for so boom for so boom now, yes, 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 we pia ya ya pia ya pro chat a Nigeria for now. If you dey to say can you know? Until you cannot overprice yourself out of competition. Yeah. What what to me? What not that space you know? Until inflation na a buy ya no cry no. Yeah, I'm why I because I tell you know. Ne fa pin pa no. I dey a dey be a your friend the ten over. Wa no wa no na. What town ni amano? I know the man we nya emphasize. It will pia. What be what be ma? What be swan a bono? Na di pakrono o di mo jedi. Cause see an Ghana market and me person me come again and ni biati say ye wo consumers market. Ye ni the sellers market. Ye ni monopolistic market. Ah se bi ni pa mi an se bi na ebi omu kwa ne wa di ane tse tse bi ah na shortage you all no. Cause see shortage ne di o me ma fa ma turn ni bi a swan a ma edi aba. It won't cotton your ma, we a consumer won't cotton your ma. Who do so janu? Na what of you share the idea for? Now what reward? No, what Danipana say? No, what tona the anamano? Not the any board in what punishment, but not buying. It's as simple as that. Because you are sorry, no part near Nan Cosin could not see a beton your near my bosie. It's the crew won't pan, they say. So near my book, so until the inflation no buy any years soon. Because I dread the end of year, the year no quantum crop. The only consumers no end of few boom. And until now, so we put on more. You see, Papa, we we try and do we customers buy. Now, so until you see, until the near my so now we servicing the customers no. Now we just can be bringing a ton in here. And at your turn in there, the near my body and over the year top. And it is inflation also cost right. That's it, it is up the consumer uh, purchasing power of the 
consumer inflation Osha Africa has say in neighboring countries no I say yeah they no e was true do do aden je ni nko na covid ni be high yen Russia Ukraine war no me say affect nations ni be bre why em say doctor John Kwache Kasa no o make key point is say na ye external shocks domestically no so no ya mo e bre ye and i say this all the time and look in by adjin in 2019 ye world bank director at the time Pierre Laporte this was in 2019. Yes. It's a COVID back March 2020. Exactly. It's already in the year of that. It's a COVID in the It's inflation. It's 23% from 54. But the surprise is jumping from 12 to 54. And then it's from 54 to about 23. A good time present to her. A year not so one be named Senator Kaya, the Bormo, say Omana, on we inflated prices and the Bayer, no matter a question. But then again, who called the local market so I agreed for them. Now you pray something you call a year free market. It's you know, say many Duke and a Tom Bordier and a Bordier and a free Jabus and a bar. Duke Bordier and a be a Sabako or Beton or Hundred Ghana cities. If you remember two to two hundred Ghana cities, it is a Omomade ban. Say two few more. Let's do Kenya do do. Now they are not Now they come here and do what now. Now they have what they know. They are trusted. They are costed. They are not going to inflation or costed. And my men for we inflation. I'm not sure for. And she says here, inflation is the speed at which a normal boy costed. And yet a normal boy air costed. That is the difference. I am not going for fifty there. And yet a normal boy air costed. And yet inflation. And yet the speed you know, the change time you know, into a china. We got top board. Then I five C D S. Are they actually going to six cities? Are inflation? I can't know. It will in a week. It be a body back up. Now, five Ghana cities, but they do twelve cities. And I just say inflation. It is a speed on in ten terms. And I inflation. And you say it be a number one question. Very good. It is even with the twenty three percent that I can't answer me. Still, no both at all. So, but just that and contemporary and a man here inflation. So that's just one. But but good to know. You know, no cry. Woman say. Yeah, yeah, fresh ya. I want my Ghana money. I'm saying, yeah, now no. Many, many Bank of Ghana governor, a new one change ya. A PP. The a woman is saying, yeah, 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 no. And yeah, as a result, say, and I say, be a two factors. Well, no Bank of Ghana say excess liquidity in the system. The system, and so on. But see, I share say. A be a contractor, be a more year, Juma Cry, Yenti or Moka, Nuclear, you see a water and ya. You can be said, say, a excess liquidity. Now, a accumulation of cost. Yeah, your inflation now, your experience, you know, a your cost push inflation. A your cost push inflation. A cost push inflation. I see a Kaya, then I am Kaya. No, 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 no. A year accumulation of cost. So, what's a Obi, a year, Queer Ni, na and then a Queer Ni and Far, as I saw they do. What Papa could talk, chemicals. I want to be decided. No one can come home. No one is I want to be a bonnet. Now, a chemical blue blue spray. Sanya men are you imported? Now, you import to no son or name or I a day and I'm duties are you tria and a year a tassels are you tria a VAT a tria no tea. A man at the end of war, I a day war, you know, they're not buying them. We'll be produce baby in the nanny boy a day. And now, young swa, you're trying to be your cotton, your cockra free. Satana, dear be do port. Now taxes are going to be a salary. The cut taxes and shipping light charges. Any charges, taxes be a. Yeah, no one is going to be that a salary. Any level, any level, any level, any one can go. Yeah, salary is going to be a. What can you now? Boom. Now what the VAT? Can you now get three percent? And then you're migrating to twenty-two percent. What can you now? Boom. We are going to cut. I can't hear don't pay. I hear be a. And you see. And now, you can say a cost push inflation. Okay. And now, SM rate, if you have a SM rate, you could be now work at 54%. 54% you do how? And bra, SM rate, you know, now I could do 15.5. Yeah. It's a whoosh. You start here with 6.4. Now, you're here with 15.5. 
It says, so now we get to a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, what they what funny amount that's a yeah, we get to a six hundred and forty thousand, yeah, Ghana cities, a yeah. beginning of 2022. Yeah. Now, we do a you know, and you know, and you know, and so compare 1.5 million first, and that's six forty thousand Ghana cities, it's here 1.5 million. Doesn't it translate into the cost? Okay, a huge cost. Mm. Mm. So when you have 1.5 million, and they are say was 640 thousand dollars, you know, a bit me at a half container. It look like me at a bare 40 percent of um, the hundred uh, the first and our total. That's a one book. That's a near man's of war. I did it is how many now came for no and I'm a man inflation of course. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah. I'm saying. Well, explain it, baby. Explain it, baby. I think that. I will see regulations and so a prices in a home because any metal board there five cities, over mm. Kwama Hono six cities, over Kwama Kwia was seven. We operate like. an open open market. Yeah. Yeah, we operate open market. Oh, 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 Jum. It will be a pair no ton. The um, two is in the board. Any Jane no. You will be there on the ton. Um, oh, so Mr. Mo. Yana, yeah, yeah, ni akane tra se. A mana a ton di wo Jum no. We mu ko bu farmers no. No ma di wo ma to. Eh, yeah. tomato to no for four four. Oh, my macola, no, my beton aboarding. And you know, cray. And you know, cray the beer that that's a sign. What said, oh, sir, I did about one crop for cray, you say. A bantini, bordia, four, and need tomatoes for no, or more yellow. Sir Farmano, or qua wong, or yalono. We put on my, a mana, a one macolana, a ton, woman, a dica, advance, or muscano cry, a woman, dear fool. No, woman, dear, and no, I have one factor. Anna, they are tossing me. Who could talk to Matosa? Who could talk to Matosa? Who talk was sent out to us at Miami at home? After and then you have a crack at the end. Now, one no quack or tunnel. You panel at the amano. It's one of the baby faces, the ever pruning. Ah, you're not confusing. It will put the tomatoes no what too far go. It will go to you don't expect, sir. I see. So, okay. 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 To the farmer, yeah. at the same time to the consumer. To some risk in a woman, no, no, a journalist in the only bar. And then before, what would have paid for some boom? Well, to my two sons who are going to have what did they say? Me and me, was it when you are a go mentor, do a beer year to a go. Not a crown, a woman, be a forty per cent pet, and you bet me at all. And it is so much. Yeah, sixty percent of the count. And one of the things I'm saying, okay, it is so much. Yeah, petrol. So then, and then you have some party dead. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 one acquiring yet two car at the bar and the petrol prices. Ning in our car, and I just saw the man, the boy, and the one to know. I don't want to know. The Ning in I get in no way, no, 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 yeah. Then you understand. Yes, 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 this is an interesting economic forum. Mm. Uh, it is good for the discussion, okay? Um, we say um, this, Alan Chamantin organizing this forum is a good one. Mm -hmm. But we've all heard some of these comments before. Mm -hmm. We need to put action to work. Mm. Aha! Yeah. It's, you know, Sana, we make a A lot of Afafanto 
butterfly, message to be baby. One cash, yeah, yeah. Uh, just the butterfly, yeah. Yeah. and I just say, What the about to do? What are these are some of the things that, uh, yeah. On my show on social media, yeah, uh, can't watch I, I but so far, so, yeah. it's been great. Oh, yeah, yeah, great. If I'm saying, some it's saying, yeah, qua, 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 but yeah, you know, you didn't come or say the problem is then you know, mm. how to implement that idea now, okay, and you know, you know, your problem, a year need the whole a year, what pay your a year, then I'm paying you for no opposition. I'm with me the implementations, I would do a corner to me, you're gonna forge your but. Uh, I say we are Why? Oh. Uh, can One of the biggest problem with our political leaders, and they say, Instead of say, or better say, if you are going to be angry, but you are going to be angry, but you are going to be but it's in a adrena also omo dwene no mo hu se ye ye en chi she ye ba ku mi onu mi en sa e di mpuntu be ba no enye omo business rather no omo dwene se e she be metim di ye ye a metim di zero is be account di be na metim ya ye a me nya ho kakra e di ahye mo boto that is the mindset and a hard it is here me be some so omo mo ba ba mo no omo di opepa e na e ba ba mo ana se it's a question I've not had answers to. But me my gana for you now swat. Yang Juno, name be say in the last few years, in Penny for a bar bearmon. Oh me now no more bars on your pepper ever sum. I'm a man no aku ye. I'm a yet to And I say omo buy because it's some person omni mobusia for a di yen yin juno. Then for answers and uncle. Who ni say yeni ted force in Tiana because since nineteen ninety two we see Crisis. Right. MPP, NDC, MPP, NDC. Oh, you need some complete sense. No, no. Yes, sir. Two political parties. Ni chimo. Obi aba no aye di openu oko. Yeni a tet for sir. And and not so yet completely right okay. because I'm a, the, according the two big boys, ah. the two big boys in the MPP and NDC. I'm a omenya a lot of uh, yeah. Um, mm. say now can complete sense. You know, I say Bibi and Formo. I'm saying Bibi can NDC beba. Yes. NDC can Bibi beba. It's you know. And of course, if you get a third force, ah, uh, many are strongly suggest to say, it be an independent candidate of the bar. Not the two major parties in that age. And one of the things I got for uh, M Y N S, there are a lot of fine brains. A man from when you meet meeting, you are born a mama kwe. But because so many MPP, so many NDC, so many African and Barbie, all their fine ideas, no. Yeah. Exactly. Ideas are it's when you're independent candidate, no case me ba. NDC no what ideas, MPP no what ideas. But it's me a yejuma, no be yejuma. Yem one no mind into poor things, and you na be poor. I'm a mind. Did you say Ghana for be some? Yem try be that. Yem try be that. Countries need to try afa. But yem a mindset. Yem a message in them call. Yeah, message to them call. Okay. Then you move away from where you have a tradition. Yeah. Where you have a free bar, where you have a war. It's not yet shit and your ma pan on my day bar. Based on sign your man. I think you say if it's in the genus, so at their twamano, okay. at their ma party, a party B independent, A independent B and all of that. It's yet shit the policies are. A year, I'm a big president, you know. I'm a deba. Then she then Tom Tom. So and one of the things that you be you do here, economic development. It's very good. And the great transformation plan of Mama Kang, the Komi year, is a very good policy. Okay. So you be here, you may be there. Good. And of course, I'm a deba. You be you are going to so say you be a big one. How can why are there things that will be about youth, youth employment, youth employment? I think say Ghanaians youth, yeah, break. A banner, Juma, same year, year. But we'll be about so my creative employment youth, two million. Mm. But still, you to new complain, you see, you're Juma, you're deceiving youth, and also then again, right now. That would be a very difficult one. Um, okay. There was a good time president in the Casano. Yeah. Now, okay, about skill, yeah. especially on more inside the Juma DL. Okay. Um, they don't apply themselves. Um, 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 
and, and get come home in terms of these jobs that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. But going back to yeah, yeah, co school, no. Yeah, you know, your mindset is say co school near kwa bema kwa kwa yejuma. And right now, if you look at the world in general now, yeah. entrepreneurship is one of the key things that are driving a lot of the economy. And I must say, say the private sector no, is the engine of growth. Ah, they can't want them. It's in a say co private sector. It's me jinda ho base ni ye. That is when the effects in the bar, the youth are more skilled. Because they are not going to be able to be Even the space self is Just last Monday, I monitor a public accounts committee. I'm for the 60 years. I'm going to be able 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 to be are but just to make the point that public speaking is the whole But yeah, yeah, cool school now you wouldn't be no. It's not just about a white color job. Yeah, yeah, apply it one for your skills and the technology about mm. internet about they are teaching a lot of things. Me as a capital and your issue. Innovation, you go so but, on but, exactly. Yeah. But sometimes capital no your issue, dear. But when you continue to start small, small. You know, sure, sir. But the employment, dear. Okay. And some kind of thing. Yes, mean came here. Oh, my dear, they are So, move on. Oh, my dear. It's really difficult. Anyway, so pack a major one, ma. Ma, Hajiya, ma. Hajiya. Now, the room. We want to say. Yeah, me, I don't know where. We should never. Fantastic one. Fantastic one. Ever a chill better. A band production. Me, I do. I do. In local production. Yeah, ma. Yeah, ni enko. So far, so good. And then we will start meeting. Is saying. Um, and there's some it's in the many ajipa. Very good. And we say organization ni um unko for or modiba on board a webwa unko for be bri. Um me can about um share butter and yeah share butter on kwa. Yeah. And we say and yeah be bri it's me produce you organa ha. Um a kwea for no to me do and no baye be bri. And uh and yeah ma be bri wa hono ma e bit me de and no baya ye do ya wagana no. E bit me dia ye. And we say waste you know. Eh, hmm, eh, damakuma sopa because um, carrot busua, yetugu epro, kokumba e busua, yetugu epro. Um, yebe to me the way ina aye semina. In fact, me di kwedu aye semina. Ah, what's he saying? Mpachoani. It's me the carrot ne banana ye. Mpachoani. Yes. I mean, nimo. Me was so blue shower gel. Oh wow, great. I but aye na aye a thing because oh, ko aku produce ya. A home seeker, any in Kofu, I bet accepted no crown for no a sign. Institutions bear, you can mention their names. Oh, I was so called register was small businesses. Okay, over some called Registrar General and San Wako, um, uh, FDA, Nina, and yes, Kakitwa. And San Albe package you products and a crown. I was so sound called a graphic designer, who caught a robber. Oko industrial area now oko top pack of uh, containers. I order liquid soap, bigu mukra. Tax said that's when you ask them get to And sana transportation. In fact, mm. entrepreneurs unye unye uh, obia eda wakuma swa ubeja. Aha. Enti no we ni na eda makuma so say forum ya omo kriti na mi mi question na na mi bi sati ti unye say. E wase omo biye platform biya. Obi o wo nim diye e wo idea biya. To me work it in. Okay. Not ordinary ideas, but one one D one F a walk or dear. But fun finance in the whole the ideas back or crown or found cry me because only movie out. Yeah, really cry. Yeah, me and mo ain't no share butter soap wo ho. So below shower gel wo ho. Wow. Uh carrot soap wo ho. Uh, banana soap wo ho, kokumba soap wo ho, and a nini na ekita antioxidants. Wow. A yema prop a uh, body no. In the idea would you call moon? And once you get me the refresh it, but okay, uh huh. In the no, when you know your idea, Anka, I was say, I'm to me supporting these small businesses. Okay, yes, I'm training a man into this soap making. Me, I'm a sign, yeah, a training home. But who training in we now or the liquid soap, parazo, so adequate in crowd will be an edding and friend because on package ye. Share butter here or modify for the war. I'm a say, um. You say no market power. I ever seen. Ever seen. Or be products. Ever seen. Me awu hiya ye hand blender. Ene wo inkuto. Wow. One kasa obi tumi ya ye wo ever seen wo fi. Me na me kachi o. Ever seen ya ye this ray ye. Wow. Obi tumi ya ye wo ever seen wo wo dem. 
But Ghana ni en to de. Obekwa koto e wo ko debu. Yenye ni ya na. Yenye ni ye. Ye bo na den. Eh. Wo won say packaging, FDA approval. E na Ghana for wo mindset say bibia FDA en approve ye no. Enye papa. And the advice at the mouth. Uh -huh. yeah. In the advice we a you. Ne mo mo maya nka yeti ti key soup. Key soup, key soup i bar sui. Ne ni rapper mo. Key soup bar. Ne ni rapper mo. Ni a di jare. Ye na a yi ti ti no. Me na na oya mi oya to me pusa key soup the south. Even though it's not good, it's not yeah. advisable, and yeah. that's old age, yes. and you're fine. Right. But I'm just drawing our attention to the fact that everything starts small. Bibia starts fifty years ago, and then kakra kakra, and son ababe It's true. Uh huh. And see, as we encourage our own people to produce, okay. we should also can encourage our Ghanaians uh, community to patronize. And see, not to say, um, Coco. I ah, do our Ghana, mm -hmm. ye export your mice, cabby brain. Mm -hmm. But you can't pour it, no. I ah, touch it, no. You need to see a Sunday seminar. Oh, I'm mm on. -hmm. But you, any no cramp on that. Okay. You better, you better me a Sunday. Aye, seminar. Yeah, it is a geisha. Aye, yeah, luxury soup. Aye, yeah, cocoa na wapai mo. But you, yapai mo na yeah, kwako to watch it, no. Uh huh. Anything we should encourage using our wastage to say, say ni your baby aye do ni a on person better to be be watching it. Oh, oh, yeah, we light soup now blend it. Now, uh, chaff, no, put me sandy, yes, still. No, sir, and say, say, eh, yet so, and near my baby, adding a go. We have to make use of them. Good. Near who can you know, here now, office government, no, a lucky preservation. A bandy thing is a preservation. In fact, um, we have natural stuff and be be a yea, be an onyankopon, I produce it near my naturally. And we have rice, a preservative. Okay. In soap making, a more I am yum, a powder, a preservative. A more yea. And to me, me products today, me you should be be a media me seminar be a natural. Wow. No additives, no preservatives. Yeah. Just the natural things I used to preserve my soap. Good. Oh, my contribution. Oh, can't send back. Okay, I'm a day. We see me lonely do good thing, Mokrano. And this I will see a jay. Um, in fact, in um, fact, uh, I believe in natural things. Okay. Um, paper, if you do. Paper, if you do. Yeah. And a tin, um, 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 uh, aluminium. Aluminium. And then it affects us, ne, 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 uh, side effects yeah. and also. Why not um, en engage uh, agricultural products in making paper? Ah, any. Uh, um, Hazards to the the community, our environment. Mm -hmm. Paper air to me decay easily. Yeah, and you know, man. instead of using tin, why not paper? A better tin. Um, on say China for. Oh, they 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 Ghana for ni China for the yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah mm. business partners. Yeah. Very good business partners. But most of their products, you know, is in paper. Not it's insane. True, it's true. Yes. Into your material, what did you do? Any did you? My adaptation. I'm part of it. My use. I'm part of it. Very good. Yes. Adia, you're that's a power. Part of you. Thank you for having you me. You're welcome. And the only idea, actually, you come here. You pass the us. You had the now because on so as you had the air was summit. Yes. So what? No, I'm an ambassador. Adia, my own. I went to me. I'm now a couple hundred rich. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Four. Okay. Okay. Now, if you catch me, say, oh, 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 that is how we misuse the power that we have in us. I was here, the creature there. Wow. Into your power, 
Uh, Ghanaians <laughs> What we need is a redirection of the mind. I don't think I'm going to be pregnant. I'm going to be pregnant. Why? Because over the years, you know, you have shared with me, you said, I'm going to be here. And yet, my man, I'm going to be carrot seminar. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be carrot seminar. I'm going to be tobolo seminar. I'm going to be samia seminar. They all are very good for the skin. But who are we? Forget about the packaging part of it. Okay. We are, you know, how do you even convince Obise on metal? Because of who said, since I'm a free Ghana, a free Ashama, I'm not a Shama. What good can come out yeah. of it? Yeah. And it's a mindset. You know. It's all about mindset. And once we're able to get that going, that's the fundamental because Nipa Adjuni, who are you bad here? Okay, sorry. I'm a Catholic. Very good. Uh, then uh, David, you can go here. Um, and young Pibo, and young Pibo, David, you can go here. Apart from determination, no, not our skill be a or David Mohono, not our perfected the skill of. Throwing sa sling, you know. Yeah. Enti non ko school, mm -hmm. but no we say se jata ana abwa e tumrika. Mm -hmm. Na se me tu adini se ya na mi jemwa. Mm -hmm. At a certain speed, no. I was say a bono timi bonit. Okay. That is the skill that he was. Enti emra or kasano na o wajidi o ni mumu say me I can do this. If ye yan san ye yan fa applaud ye 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 na school ayi school. Ayi school na. Because the the society no crano, the society no encourage this idea no. Society no encourage say, oh, why what talk her? Why you say? Why you say? Until the society glorifies the outside, the how, not the why. Any bread. Thank you. You say me here. I don't tell me from to social media. So my you say. Me who are no, I can't make fast you here in the middle. Okay. And that is what is encouraging. We need a, a fundamental mindset shift. The whole country. Okay. Any leadership? Any leadership. That be a starting from who? Okay. So we are there. Okay. So once we are there, it's say it's say it's when I say a din komwa. Yeah. When I say a din komwa, I'm far going to a man. I'm going to be a progressive. So if you say channel your phone, okay, okay, phone. 
Always. Why? Because time no one. I was so the until the mind is always working on creativity. True. And that is it. Yeah, Since. Yeah. Since. And yes, cook. It starts. It must start from the home. I was still thirsty from yeah, sorry, whatever, whatever. There, there must be a fundamental mindset shift. And your politicians, you are not hiring. And your politicians, yeah. because they are also carrying what we are carrying. Me, ni amenom kase si ano. Se me kotna, me kotna, me kop into politics. Na se mnyap position, no. Na se adi amiyem. Obi and as a society, no empire. Yeah. Mejai. It's true. You drew one year ref here, hmm. I mean, so I did. Some years ago, see, I mean, so, yeah. some years ago, yeah. now, noise be a cost about importation of rice. Mm? So, what's here? Good. Nippon and no import of rice. Mm. They were only thinking, some of the answer, my cotton, mm. my baton, my money is cut. Fine. At the end, I saw we import about 100 um, containers of a moa. Oh, Cassa, okay, Yan Tissu, Nan Famra 80. Name for twenty, though. And come farmer now, or gonna have. Okay. Because so, you know, this can come on one. Or you, we are. Back to back with Then, as time goes on, my five years, you are able to control what he is, what he is producing. All right. Then, what is it? You stop importing. Good. But we didn't think that way. Yeah, me show you because you just over can send the brain. Yeah, but they were saying you are doing what your mind says, you know. So you answer some no. Abang beko, abang beko. For years you cry, but now you so now are doing no. You answer some man. You ain't me and quit. So that is. And that's what I say. My memory is not very much. Very much, na. And I was doing the other one. Now doing the same. Let me doctor Henny Asante. That's the name of my wife. Let me doctor Henny Asante. Okay, executive secretary. Me executive secretary of the World Technology Forum. Wow. I uh, a international public private cooperation platform. Me can say me the best team. I man sign ina na akabum na what is a platform from Kunaba. Wow. Inti eche asoye eche eche abodi mu nyansa pe. Good. Eju ni ene abefu technology so ene ome yi asoye ya omo she development planning. Oh good. National Development Planning Commission. Good. Good. Ene samiti uhu ni se. In fact, make us say honourable and His Excellency Alan John Kojo Chairman. Why are they? Why are they? Actually, say say they will see a boy a domano. Now you see he didn't come on a year. Jun 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 Jun. Man Ghana. He and Dad Chihone. Oku a baby see a fast wash she. Oh my no. Oh. Let me make us say oh my yes she. And they are total. And so now you see. Now he and Nya Botre and she she. Oh my Ghana. Now. Tokas and Brunica say, Yam Plani in here, Sabe Gana, ye was a Siano, be a Dachi Bay and fear you knew a court at your section, and yes, and a bit on a boy idea. Why are dear pa say, What to me, I can't a doma boom say, and ye in Asia, and I hear Juni Gana and Cosone Gana and Kanko. Good. Panel discussions, best of me, Nuna, a course, we would hear him pan or if he say, Mokayano, a step of the right direction. Second one, I'm about to hear. Aye, adi e unhiya. Eche se, ye ka infi di juma, infi di juma ne mo omai koso. Bruni kes industrialization. Na omai biyansu ni wiasi ya meka se omu be developi. E obra infi di juma enkau. Na me enka se pi me mau enfatu mi enupe. Ye enche omai miti se China, China, Japan, eni Korea. Se oche sa omai mi ensa wea. E ya omai ya be ye infi di unum eni. If you do see a chip, uh, now what they if you do, Juma and a show or more minor and cost was centralization. And now, Menoka say China air rise as the greatest technology and industrialization hope. Ah, and China baby to America, India for Asha, Sia, Siano, the next economic powerhouse ever be India. Now, you miss I who say Ghana and I say Africa, you so a hint and I perceive it. And on a me, a mammy who say, Ne, Samiti, I obey honorable, I shall share no may ye, Emma, or dear name before, but now I are dear. Ye can't equire, ye can't infidijuma, 
say if you juma be koso a e say kuya yo koso ye hwe raw materials a ye produce o kwan be na e be fa so adane dane ani ansa na ye dia kwa brukire amono ni enti e say ye dia dwen ko vidi juma so pa che say because ofa be bit say koko i didn't think that you were cocoa or Ghana. Now, so cocoa, you have chocolate in India. The whole world, on my kid, to a bit is Switzerland. Okay. Switzerland, you can't Ghana, you check Ghana, you can't say, and a Switzerland, in your fan. Since you are a menu, you can say, and Switzerland for population, in do 10 million. That's the moon do even half of Ghana. And so the whole world, Switzerland, and they want the best of chocolate. It's true. And not sure, and say, Switzerland, no moon. Chocolate crap, what do we need? Cocoa production. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Africa, you are officially welcome back. Please, those of us outside. Michael Abu Sakara Foster. He is an agronomist. He's sorry, agronomist international consultant and convener, national interest movement. Sorry, can, can we be upstanding, please? Let's receive. Let's be upstanding. Welcome, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, can we specially put our hands together for Honorable Alan John Kojo Chairman for his ingenuity for putting this event for us to express our ideas together as a people, the way forward for the development of our country. The next segment, like I said, a new agricultural revolution to help us moderate this panel presentation is Dr. Michael Abu Sakara Foster, Agronomist International Consultant and Thank Convener you. National Interest Movement. Can you put your hands together for Doc? Like Bernard Avli said earlier, this segment is in two clusters. Cluster one, 
to be presented by Dr. Henry Enim Somua, International Agri Development Consultant, Agromite Limited. And he is presenting on enhancing agricultural production and productivity. Can we put our hands together whilst Dr. makes his way here? Welcome, sir. Cluster two to be presented by Mr. Roland Nikwe, Managing Partner, New Age Agri Solutions Limited. Okay. And he is presenting on agricultural marketing and distribution. Can we put our hands together for Mr. Roland? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Is he here? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from lunch. I think it is fitting that uh, we've had the food before we talk about producing the food. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to welcome our panelists. If Mr. Roland is here, if he can join us. Uh, the session is going to talk about a new revolution, a new agricultural revolution in Ghana. We are all aware of the low rate of performance of agriculture, but we are not here to discuss the problems today. We are here to discuss the solutions. Uh, agriculture is a driving force for the economy. And as you heard, in the previous presentations, uh, whenever they begin going, they will always come back to agriculture. And that is because essentially, for most of countries which are agrarian based, if the agriculture doesn't take off, the others cannot take off. So we have to put a special emphasis to make sure that the agricultural sector takes off. But agriculture does not take off by itself. It needs to interface with all the other sectors, with industry, financing, uh, roads, infrastructure, etc. In fact, it is one of the sectors that interfaces with almost every other sector, even health. If people are not healthy, they cannot farm. So it's very important that we pay special attention to agriculture particularly in a nascent economy like ours, which is yet to fully industrialize. We are aware of all the previous efforts that have been made in agriculture. I'm not going to recount them. Uh, you have Metasip, Gasip, all these acronyms. But the question is, after all these years of these acronyms, why are we still here? And what do we need to do to move forward? We need to take critical assessment of the interventions we're going to make. So we do it in such a way that it cuts across the other sectors and it breaks the critical impediments which have been holding us back. And that is, in essence, what will be new about it, how we do it. And we have to take care of certain things that have already been mentioned in the macroeconomic presentation and in the other sectors. The key one of which is transaction costs. Bringing transaction costs down so that we can be competitive in our market space. So today we're joined by my colleagues here uh, who are going to talk about the financing or in in enhancing agricultural production and productivity, and also the financing for agri-marketing and distribution, and the interventions that we need to make there to give us a rate of return to the finance that we put in it, and also a magnitude of impact that will lift us above where we are now. So we've already been warned that the uh, moderators shouldn't take all the time. So I'm cutting it here and asking uh, my colleague uh, to please come in to present the first section. Thank you very much. Thank Dr. you Sofa. very much. Um, I just want to start with a very 
short story. As um, a young child, I used to take bus 27A to school. I'm sure some of us would remember the Osa buses, right? It was coming through Kaneshi, through Bubuashi, to take me to Datus. And any time I paid for the bus, the conductor would pick the tickets on his hip. He used the, the peg to hold the ticket, and he gives it to you, and you go on the bus. Any time I got to school, I checked the tickets, and it was less than the money I paid. So I was wondering <laughs> where that balance was going over the years. In 1996, I got the privilege to travel to London. And I had to go on a bus. And I observed they did it differently. I didn't need to pay somebody. I just needed to get a machine, put money in. It gives me a card. And I use the card to board until the money gets finished and I replenished it. It made me understand that there are ways to do things better in life that gives better results. So we all know the net worth of the London bus system and the net worth of OSA. It's not that we don't need buses in Ghana, but it is only about how we went about doing business with buses. The new era is just to bring us to terms on how we can do agriculture differently to transform our economy. Basic pillars. A few countries in the world have come to realize that commercial banks can never finance agriculture in the way that can transform economies. It was first identified by the United States in the 1930. And after that, all the other countries that have used agriculture, for example, India, it took India almost 70 years to come to that realization. We've just seen what had happened in Brazil. So we want the first pillar to be a differentiated agriculture credit and financing scheme that can support this revolution. And the first pillar is that you can't lend to agriculture above 9% interest rate and make it work. Nobody, no country on our planet Earth has been able to achieve that. Your returns on agriculture can never pay for your loans. That is why Ghana has the highest non-performing loans in agriculture. Whilst France has the least non-performing loans in agriculture. So the problem is not agriculture, it's how we finance it. The second thing we want to look at is refocus the investments that we have to look at specific things in agriculture. Number one, modernization. The bus system in, in, in London is modernized ticketing. And ours is just like the cutlass and whole ticket. I'm sure today if you go to Ayalulu, somebody collects the money and you don't know how that accountability is. So the most important thing is for us to modernize agriculture. Stop using the cutlass and hoe. Stop using our grain as seed. Stop letting our livestock graze all over the place before they find food. That is how we want to spend money to do. The second thing is that our production systems. Agriculture is a combination of many sciences. And most importantly, the first profession God gave human beings. If agriculture is not something that can sustain us in terms of income, I don't think that would be the job God will give us. We talked about the processing. We can't just produce plantains. 
and let it rot. We need to look at investment in processing it. And then our industrial drive has been from Nkrumah's time an industrialization that produces surpluses. But everywhere in the world, industrialization is based on organized production. If you go to Florida, the oranges that comes in the series is a special variety grown in special conditions so that it can produce a certain bricks level for the juice. It's not the orange that some will ripe green, some will ripe brown, no. <laughs> so for our industrialization, we need to think about how we are going to produce to support it. The other thing is a lot of discussion has gone on agriculture being risky. I've had the privilege to look at a few other agricultural systems on the planet. And they have managed to really mitigate the risk and turn them into high return investments. And how do they do it? The basic definition. There's nowhere else that agriculture has transformed economies. That agriculture is defined by scale, like we do, smallholder and this. Agriculture is defined by income, the income you make from agriculture. And once you focus your definition on income, then anytime you are putting money in, you put it in a way that you generate the targeted income. The Brazilians have told, shown us this globally. In 1970, next slide please. In 1970, everybody thought Brazil was going to wipe out, out of hunger. Research is what transformed the lands the Brazilians called dead land, the Cerrados. 40 million hectares today is the largest food exporting area on the planet Earth. In this country, we have CSIR in Ministry of Science, Environment, uh, I even forget how MEST. And we have Ministry of Agri. Crop research is where? Not in Ministry of Agri. Animal research is where? Not in Ministry of Agri. Soil research is where? Not in Ministry of Agri. So one of the things we are saying is that there's a need to facilitate coordinated research for agriculture. Because agriculture in itself is a combination of sciences. If I want to grow maize today in Ghana, at the best I can get, it's about three tons per hectare for one hectare. If I move out to Senegal, they are getting seven tons per hectare on average. If I go, if I go further down to Brazil with the same tropical belt, they are getting 10 tons per hectare. So my one hectare gives, or let me put it the other way, somebody's one hectare gives me work to do in three hectares. So how can my food be cheap? And how can we get that yield? It's just by coordinating the research that we're doing in agriculture, a foundational pillar for agricultural development. In the 1930s, the US realized the same thing. And they came up with the land grant universities, the Cornells, the, the, the Texas. I'm sure some of us here have benefited from that. And that led to a coordinated agricultural research that today has turned the US around. India has done the same thing. The India Council for Agricultural Research. We bring a lot of um, seed agrochemicals from India now, a lot of uh, basic machinery, and it's all coming from the coordinated research that they translate then into uh, industries. The other thing is that this entity from what we have learned in the past should have a commercial interest. When we throw research out as a public good, is what we find with the CSR. Brilliant scientists, no laboratories, no funding. All the knowledge to do the work is there because 
we cannot make money out of the research. So one of the things we are saying is that this company, and here we are looking at the Brazilian model, <coughs> that is able to do research, partner with the private sector, and get the research commercialized, and get it funded again, so that they can continue to do the research. And here, I think the lady was asking us, do we have a forum where people with good ideas and innovation can come? This coordinated agriculture is going to do that. It's going to promote, create a platform where new and innovative ideas can come and help the dissemination of that. Next slide, please. Then now, our climate, or for agriculture, you do it in an environment. And today, our practices are degrading the environment. High levels of land erosion, the chemical pollution in our waters. So we want to build partnership with technology-based institutions to develop and transfer appropriate climate smart technologies so that the next generation would come and meet our land still fertile. I happen to know a guy in Canada who is a fourth generation farmer. The same parcel of land his great great grandfather farmed is what he's farming. And his yields are 27 times what his great grandfather had because of the technologies they do. We also want to ensure that each ecological zone has the same opportunity to optimize their environment in terms of how we deal with carbon. Carbon in the air is a nuisance. Carbon in the ground is very good for us. If I put my fertilizer in the soil as a farmer and there's no organic carbon, it's not going to work. But if I put that organic carbon in the soil, I may not need fertilizer. So we need to find how we get that in. And then we need to look at concessional credit facilities for only disseminating technologies so that we can get the returns and be able to pay for them. Next slide. Now, our agriculture institutions. We want to really um, make sure that our value chains work. You know, there's been so much discussions about how our cooperatives are non-existent. We don't have organizations that work together. Um, we are predominantly a smallholder farming um, economy. And it's like broomsticks. Smallholder farming is like broomstick. If we can put it together, bind it properly, then it becomes beneficiary. Uh, benefit, it benefits us. So it's one of the things that we're going to do is to ensure that we have value chains with good governance systems that allow inclusiveness. And then we also want to initiate and strengthen policies that would operationalize these systems for us. And we want to build them around the global best practices. For example, I happen to work with the farmer cooperatives, those of us that would have the time, you can check it up. It's called Hensel District Cooperatives in Canada. It started very small, but because of good governance system, today that cooperative owns its own fleet of sheep, uh, sheep sea, sea freight to export non-GMO soya beans into Japan. That's what we're looking at modeling. I'm sure in the early years, cocoa farmers tried to export their own cocoa, not through the cocoa board. But in these other commodities, it can be done by the cooperatives themselves. So we want to look at that. Then now, the, the meat is here. We want to find a way where we can rally a lot more people on the production side to be able to produce what we eat, and what we can export. We want to strengthen the mass participation in agriculture and its adjacent activities. The, the catch word here is own a farm and farm for life. It's a campaign that will foster partnership with faith-based organizations to drive mass agriculture participation. We also want to collaborate with the security agencies to become food self-sufficient. I was very impressed when I heard 
Mr. Kwam Pinim's experience with uh, Dr. Nyahu Nyahu Tamaklo. I think it's all over the internet now. That whilst they were prisoners at Insawam, they organized the prisoners to farm. And by the time they were going to Anumabu, the prisoners had half a million dollars in the bank account. We want to do that. The security agents can do that. We also want to look at our secondary school system. In, uh, in, North, um, in North America, the high schools have the 4 H. It's a youth program that allows people to get involved in agriculture from the early age, and they are supported to do that. So we want to do the same for our schools, where our school farms. Fortunately, most of our senior high schools have so much land, so much land around the schools that we use for nothing, that we can grow some chicken, have eggs in the school. We can also do some vegetable gardening in a manner that can help reduce that and also promote uh, good health. And then we want to provide incentives to support the youth to participate in agricultural value chains. In North America, only 3 to 4 percent of the population is engaged in farming activity. But to bring the food out into the marketplace, it covers almost 25% of the population. The youth today, we know, will not want to farm. But they can do things along the chain. One of the things I've observed in where I operate in the Tumu area is the motokin, the tricycles. The youth are making it big with tricycles just to convey maize from one point to the other and a few other things that we can do to encourage the youth to participate if they don't want to get in it. Agriculture, like we said, we want to modernize. But how can we modernize agriculture if we are not able to build a few tools that we will need to do that? Um, Ghana has some facilities that today are sitting idly. The six existing technology solution center that was built uh, under his leadership. And we want to see how we can turn this into assembling plants, component assembling facilities, to just do the few things that we need. The plows, harrows, planters. If you go to the livestock sector, simple livestock housing. You now today, uh, the poultry guys are moving into um, cage systems and all others. And these facilities have machines that can bend the wires and do all the things we're doing with that. And this we want to do with private sector. The state-owned enterprises, I'm sure we're told about their, 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 their state. We also want to look at how we can do some incentives that would drive some of the economic uh, issues that we have. For example, um, bringing in parts for agricultural machinery has always been a problem with taxes. And therefore, we see a lot of agricultural machinery when they break down, you can't fix them. So we want to look at how we can also give some incentives for such components to be manufactured locally and see how we could help do that using the same technology solution centers. And then now, we need to look at how our training can be a little more hands-on at the technical and the vocational schools level, just by um, putting emphasis on how we can put things together, by just assembling to do that. And the final thing we want to do is we cannot continue to rely on just smallholder farming. So we're looking at agro parks and agriculture uh, production and processing clusters. If we look at our large-scale irrigation schemes all across the country, they, they tend not to be what they were designed to be because they are only focused on production. So one of the bases is to draw around these existing facilities, bring some privatization, to service that, provide um, input credits, provide mechanization, 
and most importantly, deal with our post-harvest losses. And then finally, these agro-parks will be targeted across all the agroecological zones and in a manner that allow us to deal with specific issues. So for example, if we take the northern part of our country, today is the, is the hub beyond uh, Kintampo, where most of our rice production is being done. The, the rest is in Volta region. So it's important for us to understand how we pull these resources around to ensure that the agro parks will relate well with the ecologies that um, we find ourselves in. These are the seven things we think, if we do, can revolutionize agriculture and transform our economy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Soma. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so uh, before we, we'll give him just uh, a few minutes to rest and before we go to the second part, but just to uh, capture some of the important things that he said. I think in this country, we have always heard about single digit inflation. Everybody that comes wants single digit inflation, but they never talk about single digit interest rates. If you have single digit interest rates, together with single digit inflation, you have the foundation to build in all sectors, especially in agriculture, which cannot operate above single digit inflation. So I think that is one of the key things that he brought up and the method of financing for that. He also mentioned about our research. Uh, I have spent almost 30 years in agricultural research and development working in at least three of the key international institutes that are here, IITA, Mexico, and the ICRISAT. And I can tell you for a fact that if you go across all the countries in Africa, there is no other country that has PhDs in agriculture like Ghana. India is the one which has surpassed us, but then they were able to translate that into a revolutionized agriculture because the government put in place the enabling environment for that transformation to occur. Meanwhile, we've invested a lot in human resources and we haven't made the investments. And I think these are some of the key things that he's speaking to. The other issue that he talked about was the uh, need for a market-oriented focus. You know, agriculture is about money. You think it's about food, but it's not. When the farmer has packed his maize and is sitting down in his room, what he sees is money. And if you pack your maize on the farm and leave it there, it's like taking 200,000 Ghana CDs and leaving it on your farm, because that is the question I always ask them. You've left all this maize on your farm. It is worth 200,000 Ghana CDs. Will you take 200,000 Ghana CDs from the bank and go and leave it in your farm and come and sleep overnight? So when you suffer post-harvest losses, they start crying, but you're the architect of your own demise because we've not done the things that we should do in the order that we should do them when we should do them. So that aspect of it is also very important and uh, lastly, he was talking about the agro-processing and the agro-processing parks. Uh, this will be a key intervention because it goes along the entire stretch of the country. I think this is one of the master strokes in this suggestion because associated with that is also a reduction in transaction costs. The key things that moved development in Europe, in China, everywhere, you go to any of those countries, their development started along their rivers. Why? Because rivers are the cheapest way of transporting goods. So if we were able to get a river flow from Ada to Pung, put in a lock, lift the boats from Pung to Akosombo, put in a lock, lift the ships from Akosombo inland to Bipe. You will have 400 kilometers of waterway 
which will give us the lowest transaction costs in, Ga in West Africa. And on top of that, link that with the railway and you will see the wonders that will happen because now you have brought your water system in, you've opened up your agricultural land and you have your agro-industrial parks to work from. So that is a key aspect which I think this uh, presentation has brought up and now we would like to hear your comments later on in respect of that uh, as we go forward. Uh, our second presenter is not here, but he's part of a team. So he will go ahead now and present the second session. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before the slides show up, I have a, a small story to tell again <laughs> on, uh, on marketing. Um, I think I was about 13 years. I followed my grandmother to Tiasi in the front plains yam market. And I, uh, I observed that, you know, she, she went round, you know, they have the heaps of yam all over. And then she goes round, 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 and comes and stands by hers. And it was getting to about 11. She went round again, and by 2.30 to 3, she decided to sell. And she sold and collected her money. So when we went home, I asked her, why were you going round, round, and not focusing on selling yours in the morning until the evening? And he says, in the market, there are two things. There's what you sell, agriculture produce to get money. And there's what you sell on credit. That one, you don't know when you get your, market, your money. So when you talk about agriculture markets, like we're going to talk about now, our bane in Ghana is that most of our agricultural markets are such that when I sell, I don't get my market, my money. When the Thais sell rice to us, they get their money. But when you go down the road to buy a bunch of plantain, what do you do? You either credit or you bargain down at the point where the woman will not get her money from what she's invested. So one of the things we want to tackle is agricultural markets. Unfortunately, a lot of the money we need to invest in agriculture today is in the markets. Otherwise, we can't be importing how many billions of dollars of chicken meat, tomato paste, rice, cooking oil, all these people selling to us. We pay them and we bring and the money is in the market. So we want to link these two in a manner that agricultural markets would be the bedrock for us to see the transformation we need. Please, can I have the slides? Slides, please. Right here. Great. So the first is we want to um, increase the investment in effective post-harvesting or post-harvest systems. In actual fact, it's investment in marketing and post-harvest systems. I, I'm, a, I'm a very curious person. So, in, uh, I think it should be in 2019 or 2018, I decided to travel across the country and see the investment Ghana has in post-harvest management. And I was blown away with the volume of investment that had gone in in the erstwhile Ghana Food Distribution Corporation. From, I did the travel from Lambusier. How many of us know where Lambusier is? 
just on the corner near Nandom to the Burkina border, all the way down to Accra and to Tema. And it amazes us that the infrastructure we have for post-harvest management that is just lying waste is serious. In, in Kranza and Techiman alone, we can store half a million metric tons of grains. Two facilities going to waste. So one of the things we really want to do is this is existing infrastructure, operationalizing them and giving it to private sector to run. With a private sector guy, the difference is if he doesn't make money, he can't pay himself. With a public sector guy, the thing doesn't work, he takes his salary. Attitude of these two parties are very different. The other thing we also want to look at is aggregation centers. If I grow maize in Tumu and I want to sell, I only have to wait till a market day. And somebody comes. Sometimes I carry it to the market, I don't get a buyer. So we want to create a center where if I have grains today, I can walk in and sell the grains at a price that I'll be able to make money, right? So that I can go back and do that. So that's, that's the first thing we want to do. And this, we want to build it in a system that allow us, I think we've, we've gone too far on the slides. Uh -huh. We want to build it in a system that allow us to reduce transaction cost. So that if maize is 100 cities in Tumu, it doesn't become 300 cities in Accra. Purposefully, when I have maize and I sell, I want it to be sold in a manner that it does not affect the transaction cost. That is what is killing us. Next slide, please. We also want to increase the market infrastructure for agricultural commodities. Uh, a few years ago, I used to sit in Agbogulushi market. My mother taught me something. Okro is a very uh, good money maker because you count. You see, when, when you are selling okro, you count it. So I, I used to sell, sit in Agbogulushi market to count okro. And I realized that there's not a single facility in our largest fresh produce market to hold any fresh produce in Agbogulushi. It's either on the ground or it's left rotting. So we want to purposefully look at that. I, I had the opportunity to visit an area in Turkey called Ghanem. And they had a fascinating fresh produce market. It's built as a two concentric circles. The people coming to buy come through the middle. And the people coming to sell come through the outer periphery. The market starts at 2 a.m. and by 8.39, it is closed. They have facilities to hold the produce. And the difference it makes, you know, vegetables are high value produce. High value, highly perishable, but big money makers. So it's one of the things that we want to look at and build specific infrastructure for agricultural commodities. Then we want to support private sector with medium-term credit facilities to also build modern post-harvest management facilities in the production clusters we are talking about. If you have time, you can check. In the northern part of Toronto, I think it's about a little under 100 kilometers from Toronto. There's a place called Holland Marsh. Holland Marsh is a production cluster, 7,000 7, acres only, that commands a one billion fresh produce market. One billion dollars from 7,000 acres. Why? Because they have good post-harvest management structures. You can get your onion, you put it in a place that allows the onion to stay longer. Carrots, 
they are only doing 42 crops in the 7,000. And that's one of the things that we want to look and see in Ghana. And then, after has come to us, is either we take advantage or they take advantage of us. So we want to position agriculture in a manner that it is not only taking maize to Burkina Faso or Mali or bringing onions to Mali. But even if we bring onions from Mali, we'll be able to add value to it and sell it back to them. You know what Rwanda does? I was fascinated when I saw it, that Rwanda took World Bank money, built grain processing facilities. They don't have land to grow grain. Uganda has a lot of land to grow grain. So they bring the grain from Uganda, machine dry. If you machine dry maize and you mill it as meal, you get a lot more than when the Ugandans are drying it in the sun. And the maize meal, what they use to do the ugali, Rwanda has the best quality and the lowest price. So we're looking at how we can take advantage of this. The Nigerians come to buy our rice in the north and go and power ball. Can we do that for them? There's a facility in Savlugu under his leadership that is also sitting idle, that can do very premium piebald rice. So this is one of the things that we want to do, not only selling our commodities. Then we also want to develop targeted value chains uh, to meet the after opportunities. One of the things that is emerging for sub-Saharan Africa is goat farming. Destination market, Arab world. Uganda, Kenya have taken the lead, but I think with our environment is one of the things that Ghana can uh, really build some value chains to do that, so that we keep the ghosts from sleeping on the streets, we give them decent housing, we get them turned around in not more than six months into high-value meat product. And then we also want to look at how we can expand the commodity exchange by linking them to the aggregation centers we talked about. Once we are able to take your produce and sell at a point near your village, that could be aggregated and tied in into this. I've already talked about identifying other opportunities, the EU, the Gulf states, US, for agriculture, commodities, and most especially products. We don't just want to stay with the commodities. And here, we want to really focus on the value chain approach where the other investments in transportation and other things would come in. Next slide, please. So for us to be able to do this, we need to build efficient and cost-effective transportation systems. God has blessed Ghana so much with the Volta Lake that has a good linkage for us from the north right down to the seaports. We need to take advantage of that. In the history of the world, waterways have been the driver for economic power, right? The, the one that comes to mind is the Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire became powerful because they had the Persian seas to, to navigate. Today, it's the same. If you look at the grain sector, in, in North America, especially in the U.S., all the grain is grown in the Midwest. It comes down the Mississippi River, and then it goes to the rest of the world. This is what we want to look at. Build around the Volta Lake hubs that can take our commodities. I did a small analysis on transporting fertilizers from Tema to Tumu. Back of the envelope analysis. The trucks today are charging us about 22 CDs per bag. If we went from Tema, Akosombo to Bupe, and then did the rest by road, we'll be paying less than 15 CDs. Road maintenance cost will go down, right? In the waterways, no potholes, <laughs> no tarmac, no, I don't know, no roto, 
no to booth building. So it's, it's important that we, we take that. And also the other brick, if you take OT, we could also use the OT as well as the Black Volta for road transport. Just simple badges. Okay. Now the, the technology for building badges is such that we can do it in Ghana. Okay. So it's one of the things that we really want to look at the cost-effective transportation system that allow us to move our goods in and out. And then, finally, I, we want to coordinate private sector investment for competitive transportation of goods and people on the waterways. Okay? It's important we, we start looking at that. And the networks would help us do that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Samuel, for that interesting presentation. Now we're going to open it up to the floor. Uh, I'll make comments at the end if we have opportunity to, but I want to give you a chance yeah, immediately to come up with some uh, interventions uh, and observations. Any inputs? Any questions? Yes, there's one there. Two, two, three. Just remember your number, please. Four. One, two at the back, three, four, and five. Can you help him with the microphone that works? Uh, you can come and use this one if you save time. Just give it. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Ohini Asante. Uh, please, my, my contribution has got to do with the young people. I think, um, Doc, you mentioned in your presentation, you mentioned about the young people, but I think that we should have a proper um, framework for having young people in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Because, in fact, we, the young people, actually represent the energy of the country. And we are in a country where we have a greater population of the citizens being in the youth bracket. I am looking for the next government putting young people at the forefront of agricultural productivity and also adopting technology. Because if a young person and you invite me to the farm, you tell me that I'm going to operate the drone. Look at the enthusiasm I will run to the farm. We are looking at agricultural revolution where drone technology takes over uh, land surveying instead of running young people through the bush. We are looking at a drone technology where you call me to come and drive the tractor on the farm. In fact, there is going to be some interest that will drive me to come to the farm. But the one that we have currently is, if you currently live in Google Agriculture in Africa, you will see old people in tattered cloth. But the same time, if you Google Agriculture in Europe, you will see nicely dressed overall and stuff, machinery and stuff like that. Agriculture must be professionalized in Africa. We have chartered Institute of Marketing, Institute of Chartered Accountant, and so, so, and so. Already there is existence of Chartered Institute of Agriculture. And I think that it must be given attention where we develop new te technologies and new fields like agriculture marketing. People feel respected in the various areas of agriculture productivity, processing, and the rest where Young people, we see that we have a place in policy making, Thanks. implementation, and development. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. We go back to our uh, one. Okay. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Michael Safo Kantanka. Um, Doc, the sound of um, a market oriented focus makes me so excited, having worked as um, MA consultant on EU's. A market oriented agri program in the north. Um, I made a few observations in the earlier discussions, but then it still comes across here as a very essential point. So, at the core of this whole market oriented agri program is um, what, what I call the power of concentration. All right. So, we have a country where everybody is encouraged to farm, 
there are various players within the farming sector. We have the aggregators, the input dealers, and all that. Don't we think, and I'm trying to be solution-oriented, don't we think that we should be looking at a regime where we, we try to replicate what some of these NGOs and agencies are doing out there? So for instance, GIZ with the European Union did a fantastic job. We got the results with Moab up there. Why is it that at the national scale, we leave things to chances, we leave things to individuals to operate, do where their strength can lead them? Why is it that we can have some form of a, a cooperatives? I, I, one man said it here, and I was so excited mm. that we are encouraging people to be entrepreneurs, we are encouraging people to go out there and be innovative, but they can only do as much as their strengths can lead them. Why can't we put these powers, individual powers together? Okay. I can do this, my brother can do it. Why don't we join forces okay. as our development stage allows us? Then we have a whole job creation machinery which has all these efforts well concerted, you know, to come up with that big bank um, effect we want. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Number three. Who was formerly number two? Please, the person, the lady behind you. If you excuse me, please. The lady behind you. Yes. Carry on. Please come forward and take the microphone. Uh, hello, please, Bridget Oswamante here again. Uh, I think this is a, a suggestion. I think that in our education systems, weeding is, is, is punishment for people who break laws. However, if we are able to use weeding in competitions where the best group or house um, weeds a lot of plots and then gets award, it will change the paradigms of our young ones to know that weeding is not punishment, but it is something awarding. Uh, secondly, to mm -hmm. I think that uh, the prices of foodstuffs or farm produce should be standardized. Again, I also think, um, how will we do this? If, let's say, uh, a tuber of yam weighs five grams and it's, it's being sold for like 25 CDs or let's say 15 CDs, then we know that it is general everywhere. So if the farmer has 10 tub tubers of yam, they know the end money they'll be making from it. Also, our roads too are bad because um, if the farmer is in somewhere as, like Goka mm -hmm. and he, he harvests his produce, some of them have short lifespan. So, but because of or due to poor roads, it takes much time and money for the produce to be transported into our urban uh, cities. So um, if the government put more work into our roads, then I think it will really go a long way to help the farmer to make much more money and sell the foods at a shorter period before they go bad. Thank, Thank you. you. Number three, please. The, the gentleman there. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prince Benjamin Mauto again. Thank you for your patience. When I heard uh, uh, agriculture revolution, I thought uh, we were going to hear a presentation on GMO. But thank God I never heard anything uh, about that. There is uh, some conception outside there telling us because of population growth, the way we have to go is GMO. But with the presentation, I have understood that uh, that is a deception. I want to ask, as a nation, going forward, are we going to frown on GMO or we are going to accept that system in, in our country? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Back, number five. Number five. We will, let, let's take the fifth one, then we'll, we'll do all of them together. My name is Andrew Skujuasare, a farmer as well. I started with 50 acres of land in Ashanti region. 
Uh, I have 3,000 acres of land currently. And going forward, <laughs> I see Ghana uh, one day to feed the whole of Africa. So looking at the solutions and also a concept that we can adapt, we need to revisit our forefathers, the collective synergy. Enobwa. Yes. They use it to farm cocoa farms. Based on that concept, we can also come back and also raise capital by way of forming cooperative and also contribute some capital, small, small capitals, and put them together and raise this money without going to the bank. Because going to the bank, you will see that the higher interest rate will make your farming not viable. Haircut. Yes. Okay. Then also, <laughs> let us consider the land use. You could see that litigations here and there. I quite remember I leased my land for five years, but eventually, after three seasons, I lost the land. The chief sold it to another person. So uh, I have to just come back and partner another chief to get this 3,000 acre of land. That is why I'm here with these chiefs. We need to do a proper partnership because Ghana land is not for one person so that we can align ourselves with this collective synergy with a value chain, we are ready to go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we want to give our presenter opportunity to respond to some of the issues and uh, we will also comment on some at the end. Dr. Samuel. Um, on the youth participation in agriculture, and let me stand up, I'm more comfortable. <laughs> you, you realize that today, for example, I'm doing uh, a small project on how to de-risk agriculture, and it's all technology solutions. Why do we get low yields in Ghana? We don't know anything about the soil I'm growing in. I don't have any information on how the weather is going to be next week, next month, three months down the line. I don't even know, like I said, whether my fertilizer will work or not. But today, there are technologies that can allow me to determine that to a 10 meter by 10 meter. In some jurisdiction, three meters by three meters. If my farm is only three meter by three meter, I can have that information. And then I can predict how much money I can do from that land, from maize, or if I grow soya bean, or I grow vegetables, or I grow this. And this is the tool that you can put in the hand of the youth to be able to work out. So we, it's not that we are leaving the youth out. The risk associated with agriculture today, if we don't deal with it, no youth will be attracted to it. It's a chicken and egg issue. If you want to drive the youth, the risk agriculture. It will attract them. Betting. Who is telling young people to bet? <laughs> Who? Nobody. Because it makes money. So the, the problem with agriculture and the youth is how do we position agriculture in a manner that the youth will be convinced. If I put my sweat, I get my money back. So it's one of the key things we're doing in the de-risking mechanism. And then, once I get the produce, I think Joy did uh, an interview recently on people having rice that they can sell, right? All over the north. This year, people have piles of rice that they can sell. So it's one of the things that we need to deal with, this market issue with agriculture. If you don't deal with that and you push the youth in, I'm sure we'll get some backfiring. If you put a thousand young men on a scheme and they produce vegetables and they can't sell, 
I don't think Ghana will go to sleep that night. So it's important for us to put this in context. And then the services. You see, what we are not doing with agriculture is the services. Veterinary services. Hmm? Where is it today? It's non-existent. So it's important for us to also come up, like we said, once I develop a value chain for a specific commodity, the services along that value chain is more attractive and higher return for youth participating. So we are not only going to, say, bring the youth in. We are going to be strategic in where we can draw their expertise. Okay. The other thing that we also want to look at is, yes, market-oriented agriculture. In essence, there's no money in agriculture. You know where the money is? Eh? Where? No? No? In the food. The money is in the food. If I produce and nobody consumes, it stays with me. But once I produce something and somebody wants to consume, I make money. Okay, so we are not only saying market-led. We are saying we are going to identify the opportunities in the marketplace. Tomato paste. Is it making money in Ghana? Big money. Why? Somebody saw the opportunity. Perfume rice. Making money. Frozen chicken. Making money. It's the same way. We want to also look at other markets in the sub-region and see where the opportunities are that we can market. So when we're looking at this, and then the, the, the trade today around the world is not only about what I have, but most importantly, at what price. So our competitiveness in the market. It's not that we cannot grow chicken. The only problem is that the chicken we grow is more expensive than the one that we import. Whether the taste is the same is another matter, <laughs> right? So it's important for us to understand that aspect as well. And that is why we are putting emphasis on transaction cost. The investment should be such that we can sell. Um, institutional strengthening, yes. <laughs> our cooperatives don't work, why? Why are our cooperatives not working? Ghana in the past had the largest cooperative in maize production called Masara Arnaziki. Arnaziki. Arnaziki, yes. Today it's not there. Why? Governance issue. We cannot have cooperatives working if we don't strengthen the institutional arrangements around them. GPRTU is a cooperative model, right? Why does it work? Strong institutions. If you like, mess up. They'll find you. They'll stop you from going on the road. Is that right? That's why GPRT is working. If you form agriculture cooperatives and you say, do this, do that, do people do it? No. So it's important for us to do it. That's why we're saying we need to strengthen those arrangements. When I go to the cooperative, it, it works. Uh, the school I went to, weeding was not a competition. Even today, if I mention the school, you know why we are so excelling. In our school, weeding was for two things. One was for rewarding. You keep your house clean. There's a, a, every month, there was competition. You have to weed your surroundings. Clean it up, do the carlo, you know, paint the stones, and you get an award for that. <laughs> So it's not in all secondary schools that weeding is a punishment. We had a school farm, I remember. Uh, when I was in Form 3, I had to do a bed of onions on the school farm. So uh, it has, it is. And that is what we're saying, that one of the things we want to do is in the senior high schools, the school farm and good health. School farm and good health program that will do that. Finish. Price standardization is dangerous Finish. for agricultural commodities. We know why. Adam Smith says 
there's an invincible hand. So once I reduce transaction costs, increase productivity, automatically prices go down. There's no need for government control. You have to be price control. So the best way is to enhance productivity and reduce transaction cost. Prices by themselves will go down. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. So we want to give him a big round of applause. We are going to conclude the session now. But there was one question which was asked, and I think we should pay attention to that, the GMO one. I'll address it myself, because normally when they see me, they talk about GMOs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I want to put it this way. Have you seen Ferraris in town? Has anybody banned Ferrari in town? Have you seen Ferrari traveling to the villages? They just drive them between uh, Equiafu roundabout and the uh, circle, and then they go and park them. But nobody has banned them. That is what GMO is like. GMO is the Ferrari of seed. If you can afford it, you drive it in your corner and pack it. If you can't afford it, the rest of us are using our normal cars. So there's no need to go head on banning them for Ferrari. They are, they're, they're still there. Yeah? The second part of this is that we have a big problem just dealing with the fundamentals of getting our agriculture in shape. That is what we should be concentrated on. Because without our seed industry, without the research to give normal varieties, even open pollinated, even hybrid varieties are a problem for us. Before we're talking about the Ferrari of seeds. So let's focus on the things we can do and do them well. When you have plenty of food here, you don't need to import GMO wheat, GMO grain, etc. It will be a natural buffer. So it's very important that we do the fundamentals first and don't get distracted by these side arguments. That is a debate between the Europeans and the uh, Americans. They're arguing about who can use technology to capture whose markets. Leave them to that argument. We want to bring up the basic production here to meet our needs and vent importation of food into our countries. That way, you'll be able to eat fresh food every day. I want to thank you very much for participating. And uh, we're very, all the contributions that have been made have been captured by the rapporteurs, and they, they will come back to you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Priscilla. Thank you. Dr. Up. The next, which is the last panel presentation, an important segment. For that matter, I would entreat anyone outside to, to kindly come inside. And then please, the ultimate goal of this occasion or event is for us to have guidelines, presentations, ideas from everybody gathered here so it will guide in policy formulation in some time to come. For that matter, there is a WhatsApp number that will be displayed on the screen. In case you have something that you were not able to talk on or present, kindly reach us on that WhatsApp number, put your views across, and I can tell you that a listening government is about to rule this country, and that is why We've called you all to be gathered here. Your views are very important to us. The last presentation, a very important one, and the one to moderate it is Honorable Yao Bwabin Asamoa, and that is on the issue of tourism. Tourism is one of the topics or segment of this country that is dear 
to the convener of this National Economic Summit. This is in three clusters. Cluster one, we have Mr. Kweku Lomo Maino, international consultant on tourism. Tourism, he is talking on tourism infrastructure and facilities. <laughs> Mr. Kweku, please, can you put your hands together for him? <laughs> Cluster two, Honorable Dr. Edward of Ofori Karagu, Honorable Dr. Edward Ofori Kuragu, Kuragu, sorry for that, and Tourism Development Consultant and Business Executive. He is talking or presenting on branding and marketing of Ghana as a tourist destination and human resource capacity building. Can we put our hands together for Honorable? And then cluster three, Mr. Bisa Simons, or Simons, President, Musicians Union of Ghana, Musica. He is presenting on developing the creative industry. Please, Mr. Simons, if you are here, kindly make your way to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, let us continue. Hello, thank you very much. And uh, the modern generations, Mr. Simons, you don't listen to all the music. <laughs> no, this is fine. This is fine. Thank you. So, straight away, this is the last segment to a wonderful day. Uh, perhaps an area that ends us in default, and we could do much better if we paid more attention to. So to kickstart, Kweku <laughs> Lumomeinu, please, you have the floor. Hi, y'all. Thank you very much. And um, thank you, uh, the uh, Movement for Change, headed by the Honorable His Excellency John Kojo Alan Chiramantin. Um, I've been listening with rapt attention throughout all the presentations, from industry to our Greek, and now here we are with tourism. Before I start my presentation, I would like to uh, let some of us who think that tourism is just lying on the beach and enjoying yourself in discos, having fun, and so on and so forth. So usually, the industry is not taken seriously. The budget is given to the industry and is the lowest. But let me say that tourism is so crucial for every developing country, especially developing countries. Why am I saying so? One is the industry that can catalyze development, attract investment. It's the only industry that ensures equitable distribution of income right from the airport to the village. It's the only industry that preserves the culture, our culture, not only our culture, it also preserves our historic heritage. We don't have to lose our history. Otherwise, we'll be taken aback again. It's the only industry that has proven to conserve our resources, especially the natural resources. You can provide money for the national parks and so on and so forth. But if you do not make sure that the people who live around the national parks have access to extra income apart from their farming, they will go in and destroy the fauna and flora. And the way we can prevent it 
is to introduce tourism for people to visit so that they can leave some of the dollar money at the sites. You know, Ghana has been in tourism for over 400 years. Somebody would ask me how. Yes. Ghana was a destination when the Portuguese visited and built the fort at Elmina. They lived there for 200 years. The Dutch came, lived there for 200 years. In between, the Danes, the Germans, the Swedes, and the British, they all came here. They came here for a purpose. Some would say they came to take our resources away. But I know what the devil meant for evil, God meant for our good. Now we have Africans all over the world. Latin America, North America, England, and what have you. We are there, and they are there as natives because they were brought there to develop. They were sent there to develop the land. Somebody would say that the forts, the forts and castles, 32 out of it, uh, I mean, out of the 42 globally are found, are found here. We have more than the forts and castles, like I mentioned. All these developed countries once lived here. They have links here, place names. If you go to all the um, uh, archival research, there are a lot of things that we can take advantage of and reach out to them. That's your forefathers 400 years ago came to this land. They left something here. There are place names. There are things that we can do together. There are things that you need to remind your current generation that there was a place called the Gold Coast that your people lived 200 years. Not just for the Africans in the diaspora to come and visit, but for us to have that link with the rest of the world when we're providing the gold for them, when we're providing timber for them, when, uh, when the unfortunate enslavement happened, we have to remind them. And these can be packaged and sold. It's a, it is an emotional thing for most people. But yes, we have to tap in the emotions of people if we want to draw people into Ghana and then help them to understand that what happened was for our good and not for evil. We are talking about private public uh, sector um, working together to develop these uh, places, especially the beachfront. I would say, if you look at Accra, Greater Accra, from Nungwa, Teshi, Labadi, Choko, going down, Mori to Central Region, to all those other places. It's unfortunate that those who live there are the poor in society. They don't know that they're living on a major resource, which is the sea. So what do we have to do? as public sector practitioners, as um, intellectuals, as people who have acquired knowledge over the years, have, have traveled and seen how it's done elsewhere. It's where we have to help them. To use that resources, for them to put some money into their pockets. Sometimes I don't understand why we have to go into the hinterland to create 
housing somewhere when along the beaches. We can come up with an ever renewal program where part of their land will be used as hotels and resorts, which will change their fortunes. They're the fortunes of, you know, the, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, 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 people yet unborn. That is tourism for you. Tourism is about people. It's about how people can actually make some money. The people in Ghana, people who are living along the coast. You don't go and build a resort somewhere where there's nobody there. Let the original people, the people who own the land, let them enjoy the benefits of what will come out of tourism. Next slide. We sometimes talk about uh, reduction of taxes, levies, surcharges on hotels, tourism installations to enhance their competitiveness. I say that if the right marketing is done and hotels move from the 30% occupancy that they are doing to 70, 80, and 90% occupancy, they will pay the taxes without grumbling because they will make enough money. They will be able to pay their workers without grumbling because they will make enough money. They will be able to pay the electricity that is so expensive because it's just a percentage of the total income that they get. So we need to rethink. We need to change our perception of, you know, the um, kinds of policies that we come up with. The solutions must be in the details. There must be a rethinking of how to solve problems and not just say that the taxes are sold. How are you going to solve it? What are the solutions? And that is one for you. Introduce incentives to attract foreign and domestic private investment into the tourist sector. Again, we've had incentives from day one. Some of the incentives were good. I remember when, when uh, before the uh, moving pigs, the Labadi beaches and so on and so forth, before they were built, there were some good incentives. Those incentives took the industry to another level. But we have to sustain it. And for us to sustain it, it has to be integrated with the other sectors of the economy on a very sustainable basis. How do we how do, we, uh, do this integration? For example, I heard the last uh, speakers, we were, they were talking about um, his tour around the country and seeing some infrastructure that were built in the past for storage and other things, and they are lying idle mm. for many decades. Give that to tourism. Hello. I said, give that to tourism, and it will change the fortunes of that infrastructure. If you look at the silos at Tema and Kaneshi, they've been there since I was born. Huge investment at the time. We can turn those silos into facilities that people can visit either as museums, either as, uh, or not only museums, museums, accommodation, restaurants, and so on. It's all a matter of architecture. And that can bring us money. 
They can end serious foreign exchange for this country. What have we done? We're just optimizing the resource that we have. We don't want to build something new that we don't have the money for. It's already been built. That is tourism for you. The other day, somebody was talking about um, um, some gold fields, Ashanti gold fields. You know, now they do open cast mining. So the shafts have been abandoned. In South Africa, in Joburg, they've created restaurants, museums, accommodation facilities in the shafts. So you go from below maybe 400 feet below. A lift will take you there. You go and then they serve you some wine. You come to another level. You do some other activity. Before you come up, you'll be wondering where you've been. That is tourism for you. Your fat idea will be in the Ephrisu. Nia San Shenia and a papa and make money out of it. That is the tourism industry for you. Next slide, please. When we talk about increasing investment in the development of infrastructure to facilitate and improve access to tourism sites, installations, and facilities, we have to be very creative here. I was glad when they were talking about the Volta Lake for transportation of food. And let me tell you a, um, a story that was told by um, a very good sister, the late sister of uh, Alan, Bridget, because she worked at Ministry of Economic Planning. She once told me, we were working on a tourism project. And she told me, ah, because we had a World Bank director come to Ghana some time ago. And I wanted to go to the north. So the officers, they were wondering, you know, those days in the 80s, we were wondering where to find transportation. You know, they went to the Air Force. Those days, it was only the Air Force that was flying. And he asked them, why? I can't go by the Volta Lake. And they said, ah, OK. They remember, somebody remembered that the late president of Ghana, Rawlings, had a yacht built for him, which was, which, which had been docked there, idle, and it was just for his pleasure. So they arranged Volta Lake Transport, and the guy went on a trip from Akosombo all the way to Buipe. On the, on the um, cruise, he asked the officers who went with him, so Ghana, why do you come to the World Bank? You are sitting on gold. He says, this is gold. You are sitting on gold. And when I was working on one of the national tourism plans, I spoke with Walter Lake. They said it's possible we can do something. But I went further to talk to um, the, the there, was, there was a contractor, Egypt, Egypt uh, uh, they, they came from Egypt. But they were boat builders in Egypt. So when I got to the guy's office, I said, oh, we want to find out if you can build boats for us to be able to cruise from Akosombo all the way to the north. The guy looked at me and he said, I've been in Ghana for 10 years. And this is the first time I'm hearing something that will change this country. He said, look, in Egypt, we have the pyramids. You guys, you think we make money from the pyramids? 
we don't make money from the pyramids. Because you go and see the pyramids, how much would you pay? <laughs> but the Nile, it's like we have over 2,000 boats of different sizes on the Nile. Which cruises all the way up north. And because of that, resorts have started opening along the Nile. And that is where they make their money. Because you go on one cruise, you pay like five, 500 to 2,000, depending on the class. You go and see the pyramid, just sightseeing and seeing it. You just pay some $20. We are sitting on gold. So as we are thinking of using the Volta Lake for food transportation, I would say we are coming with our boats. Because the Volta Lake is large. The waterway is so large. We can also cruise on it. I went to a tourism fair, and one of the tour operators uh, that bring tours to Africa, I just mentioned this to them. He said, when are you operating, when are you going to start operating the tours? What I'm talking about was sometime back 2010. And we still haven't done anything. The little cruise that is organized on the Volta Lake takes about almost 300 people. And any time they sail, is full. And people say there's nothing to see on the island. But can you imagine cruising all the way up north with various stops. Dija National Park is there. All kinds of uh, the uh, slave market is there. You go to Buipe, you get down, another, another group joins, it comes down, you go to the, uh, uh, the Mole National Park, you can go, you can visit other places. It makes access to facilities and services exciting because it's unique. There's no water lake anywhere in the world. It's different. If you spend three days on the water lake, every morning you see something different because the environment will change. I was telling somebody that when I did the market research on this, it would take half of the uh, conference, conference tours out of Accra because people would want to have that experience. And that is what we are talking about. When we talk about transiting the existing visa regime for entry into Ghana to an electronic authorization entry system, identify strategic countries that will be accorded visa waivers to promote and so on, and strengthening government and public sector institutions that can promote and support tourism. My take on it is that all these will have to be demand driven. We need to create an environment for people to want to come to Ghana. And I always say that we have three plus million Ghanaians living outside this country. If you take their workplace colleagues, their friends, and so on and so forth. You are looking at a target market over, of over 20 million plus. That Ghanaians, if we equip them, if we provide information to these Ghanaians who live outside, fortunately because of uh, IT, we have access to their numbers. So if you're talking about digitization, let us provide them with information so that they can bring people into Ghana and you incentivize them. That is where the incentives should go. That if you bring 10 people 
you are coming free. If you bring um, uh, uh, 50 people, your family can visit free. Who wouldn't want to do that? That is more incentive. And when you have people coming into Ghana, then it will incentivize investors to come because they would see the demand. British Airways will start flying five times, a, uh, five times a day instead of seven times uh, a, week. a week. So that these strategic thinking, strategic moves, strategic and intentional moves is what we need to be able to turn this country around with tourism. Thank you. Thank you very much. You could please hand over the mic. Give it up again. That was very interesting. Now, the second cluster, we will have Dr. Honorable Dr. Edward Ufuri Kregu, uh, a tourism development consultant and business executive. Unfortunately, Mr. Bessa Simmons is unavoidably held up. So you oblige us uh, if Dr. Kregu continues that segment on enhancing the creative aspects of tourism. Thank you. Thank you, my brother, Honorable. We were in parliament together at some stage, so <laughs> we are friends from a long time. His Excellency, I thank you for finding space in your GTP for tourism, you know, was it's such an important <laughs> subject that if you had left it out, your jobs for the people would not have worked. So here, I think this is jobs for the people big time. Yes. It will interest you to know that one in 10 of employees in the whole world, one in 10 work in the tourism industry worldwide. That's why it's so important. It creates so many jobs, not just in hotels, restaurants, etc., but in all holiday resorts, airlines, transportation, the ripple effects are many. So indeed, we must take tourism very, very seriously. In Ghana, tourism is the fourth largest foreign exchange earner as we speak, and our aim here over the next few years is to make tourism Ghana's number one foreign exchange earner, and that can be done, especially if there are forums like this. Right, so this, uh, these slides are for the creative industry. If we can have the slides on the marketing, it will help. This is for the third cluster. We want slides for marketing. But I'll start anyway. Years gone by when um, Second cluster. President Kufo took over the reins of this country. You remember there was a certain slogan. It went like the golden age of business. A lot of people talked about it. And the then tourism minister Jacob Echevilamte brought in the golden experience. He said, if you come to Ghana, you would, experience, you would have the golden experience. Many people didn't really know what the golden experience was, but as we have it, as the years have gone by, we've seen that heritage plays a big role in the golden experience. So if we were to coin a new slogan, it would be experience the golden heritage in Ghana. So that's what we are fighting for. And the Ghana Tourism Authority, GTA, is the body responsible for promoting tourism in Ghana internationally. And we are saying that we need to recalibrate, realign, and give more work to the GTA, and also take 
some other jobs from them, like the licensing, give it to other bodies. Because they really need to concentrate on the branding and marketing of Ghana. We see private organizations like CTFM, who have done good jobs with um, branding and marketing of tourism. In the next few weeks, I think, there's going to be the 2024 Heritage Caravan. I'm sure you've all heard of that. And it's a major thing, because um, we have to promote our heritage. And with the Heritage Caravan, it's booked. It's booked so many weeks before it actually takes place. So that tells you that domestic tourism is very important. Charity begins at home. We have to travel ourselves so that international visitors can also have the courage to travel and see that there's a lot to see in Ghana. We also need to leverage on the foreign missions and embassies as vehicles for branding and promoting Ghana. There are several embassies dotted all around the world. And the good news is Ghana is introducing the visa-free regime. I'm sure you must have read about it a couple of weeks ago. Firstly, to all African countries, and then eventually to our biggest markets like Germany, USA, etc. Now, Kenya have just done that, and their tourism numbers in terms of arrivals are soaring. And we want to follow what Kenya is doing to bring a lot more tourists into Ghana. As we speak, we, we, we in the tourism industry have recovered since the COVID outbreak. I think we are now around the 1.2, 1.3 million arrivals, which is what it was in 2019 before the COVID <clears throat> came in. So I'm sure in the next few months, we can hit 1.5 million, and then by December, hit up to 2 million, <clears throat> if we can promote Ghana as a heritage destination. The African-Americans are very impressed with Ghana, and they want to come. Again, when they arrive, most of them want to stay in big hotels, and very few of our hotels, especially the four-star and five-star, very few of them have 200 rooms and above. And so you can see the difficulty in putting these visitors scattered all across the country. So we need to encourage the private sector to put up more hotels and then <clears throat> accommodate these visitors when they do come. Now, engaging the Ghanaians uh, living abroad is a very good thing. You know, as we know, when we travel, we see a lot of Ghanaians. They do wear Ghanaian clothing. Um, our Kinte clothes, as our chiefs are wearing here to special events, the funerals and other things that we hold over there. Incidentally, His Excellency Alan Kujutra Mati introduced the Friday wear. Today is Friday, so let's clap for all those who are wearing Friday, Friday wear. And, and for those who didn't wear Friday wear, please, next Friday, make it a point to do so. Thank and it includes you. those in smocks as well. Very soon he'll be creating the Smokes Day. I think that will be on a Monday. So let's bear that in mind. Right, so the private sector needs to be involved. As I mentioned, uh, companies like CTFM have already taken the lead in promoting Ghana. And then we need to revamp the operations of the ones uh, brand Ghana office, which is not doing very much at the moment. So there's quite a lot to be done. Also, there is, there is GATOF, which is the Ghana Tourism Federation. It's the umbrella body for the private tourism institutions, as the car rentals, hoteliers association, and all the various sections. Also, we need to pay attention to them because they can tell the problems that the stakeholders in the tourism industry are facing so that um, <clears throat> we can address those. Some of the problems that the the hoteliers, for example, face is a multiplicity of taxes. They always complain that they pay too many taxes. That's why hotel rooms are very, very expensive, you know, because they pay so much tax, corporate tax, VAT, and so many other things. I'm sure you've heard the president of the Hotels Association 
always complaining. People say, why is Ghana an expensive destination? This is one of the reasons the taxes are too many. So we need to talk to the <clears throat> authorities if we want to take tourism seriously, to give more incentives, like earlier speakers said, to encourage private sector to have more hotels. Okay, so I think with regards to the first, the second session, this is it, I mean, time is of essence, so yeah. we just move on to the creative, okay. the creative arts now. <clears throat> oh, just one thing I, I, I skipped, the airlines, you know, once upon a time we had the Ghana Airways and um, it went down, but efforts are being made to have a new airline, a brand new airline, I think, from what I can understand, the licenses are even ready and being awarded. So I'm sure in the next few months, we shall see a new Ghana career operating and advertising Ghana. We can have the creative arts now. Oh, okay. The human resource and skills training, um, I'm sure you all heard about um, HotCut, which is not operating very well. They had some funding issues. Um, again, that is being revamped. But as we speak, University of Cape Coast are uh, doing a PhD program and most postgraduate programs. And that's where I myself, I attended, I got my PhD in UCC. So I'd encourage people who want to do further studies in tourism to do it at UCC. Also, GIMPA does undergraduate uh, degree courses. So again, that's another institution where people who want to further their education can go to. Yes, so the creative art industry is a big one, and it's been added to tourism. Um, it covers the music, the arts, the films, etc. These employ so, so much of the youth, so we need to take them very, very seriously. And more regulations are needed to tighten the loopholes, especially with the copyright administration. Now that we have good technology, we can rake in a lot of money. Every time anybody's music get, gets played, that the copyrights can do the right thing. Again, dance, drama, theater arts, music, visual arts should be put in the basic curriculum, especially with the schools, and then also the senior secondary schools, so that by the time they get to university level, most students would have developed an interest in creative arts. Also, we need to enhance and support the capacity development of the young people seeking to embark on careers in the creative arts industry. Maybe some scholarships, could be encouraged, um, that would be in the right direction. Prioritizing highlight music, in, um, intangible cultural heritage. Okay, so I mentioned about heritage. Heritage has the tangible side and it also has the intangible side. The intangible, intangible side is what we are talking about here. That's our traditions, our culture, and all those things are the intangible as well. As the, the forts and castles, uh, as you know, Ghana has the most forts and castles, 32 of them. Most of them are in ruins, but we know that Cape Coast Castle and um, uh, Elmina Castle are world heritage sites. So again, heritage comes back again. So in a nutshell, we need more incentives, um, both domestic and international, for the private industry and also to help the creative industry. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Very well. So we'll take five questions across. The, the first one will be the uh, uh, Bonifis, Abu Bakar Siddiq, Honorable. Thank you very much. I've been listening attentively uh, the submissions made by the speakers. Very interesting and very worrying. Why do I say so? In his speech, the, I think the first speaker at a point said, tourism today the tourism sector is the fourth 
foreign exchange earner. But before, it used to be the third foreign exchange earner for Ghana. So it means, Ghana, we are in trouble. But we should thank God for the convener of this program. You know, in tourism, honestly speaking, Ghana has become the most expensive tourist destination, if we care to know. Uh, even recently, I think the issue of, I think there has been some publication about some VATs is going to affect the, in, uh, the tourism industry. If we've checked, we should look at the tourism economics, the economics of tourism, and see what it will do to Ghana. Tourism is a sector where the product, like the first speaker said, is always intact. It never depreciates, unless it even appreciates more, depending on the type of tourists that come. Ghana is so expensive, if you look at who are the tourists, those who come to the Novo Hotels, Moving Peak, Kimpiskis are the business tourists. These are business tourists. In Ghana alone, you can get over 80 products of tourism. Tourism. Because if you are able to put an old cup in front of your grandfather's house, and you tell the whole world that this is the cup that my great-grandfather used to drink from and, be, and had that big name, people go and drink from that. Mm -hmm. But what has Ghana done? Ghana, we have a problem. Because right from the day you identify a particular, a particular heritage site, right from that point, you are creating employment. From employment to income. Income to what? Peace and prosperity. So that one alone is enough. And I've indicated that Ghana is the most expensive tourism destination. Now, hotels. You have a lot of people who want to come to Ghana. But how to accommodate them is the problem. When they come, they, they only remain in Accra, Kumasi, or Cape Coast. You talk of emancipation. Emancipation did not begin in Cape Coast. It started from Salaga. The largest slave market in the whole of West Africa is Salaga. We are drilling boreholes. Go to Salaga. Salaga has the largest number of boreholes in this country. Wells dug by human beings. There's a, some particular wells. You can enter one. It was in recent time I started hearing about, uh, is it bunkers? Bunkers started during the slave trade era because slaves were put in the wells. And under one well, you can walk through about 20 wells. If a slave master was coming with his people, they entered, they put them there. The slaves, warriors, will come and pass. After that, they bring them out. So if there were any invention, it should have started from Salaga for bankers. Go and see, it's still there. I have people who have gone to do a whole research. Go to Navrongo, Paga area, you have crocodiles. You can go and touch them, swim with them. Tamale, when we were kids, we called that play Kwazo, on top of rocks. We go to swim. All the crocodiles will come out and lie there. We'll go and swim with them. But who has taken advantage of it today? Kwazo, if you've been to Tamale, we have a place called United Primary. That was the school I attended. It's just by it. We have a lot of tourist attraction sites, products, but we are not taking advantage of it. We have the four, anyway, the consultants are here. The four P's in tourism, the four C's of tourism, and the four E's of tourism. I don't know whether Ghana is making anything out of them. Governments have come and gone. These things are there. You were talking of Jake Obechebilamti. We brought that idea of Ghana being the center of the world. And we were planning to drop gold. Whoever will come and dive and bring the gold out, 
will be rewarded. But we are still where we are, if not going backwards. One step forward, Two five steps, steps forward. Fantastic submission. So, please, Fantastic. thank you. Thank you. We need to do something. In fact, when I sleep and I'm looking into the skies, this is one of the topics that has brought some suit in my heart. If only we attempt doing this. Tourism alone will solve the problem of this country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, good afternoon. Please, oh, my, my submission is about event tourism and leveraging what Honorable Boniface said. Ghana is the center of the world. No one can take it from us. Not even America, India, China, and India. How do we benefit on Ghana being at the center of the world? We are the heart of the universe. My point is, we need a time where we should promote Ghana through event tourism. As we speak today, we don't even have an auditorium in Accra, the center of our country, which can host about 10,000 participants in a, in a conference. And in one of the slides on the presentation, I saw it. We should promote event tourism. And I'm ending my submission with an example from the UAE. The United Arab Emirates, with their capital city, Dubai, started being the global tourism destination. 2013, 2023, they started the World Government Summit. And as at the end of last year, 2023, according to the International Tourism Directory, UAE, Dubai, was the world's most visited country with 135 tourism development hotspots and 30 million participation every year. Ghana, what's our po population? The same 30 million. So if a country with 9 million have used tourism to develop themselves, why can't we do it? We were all traveling to UAE for the COP28. It didn't start today. It started 13, 2013 or 10 years ago. We need to promote Ghana through event tourism and build various infrastructure for tourism. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. My name is Yawa Frim JB, a fresh first year student of Unimark, formerly IJ. I want to emphasize on um, digital marketing and branding. I believe when we come to Ghana, there are a lot of talent in Ghana. We are half young people who are making Ghanaian products, that's, I mean, shoes, bags, and so forth. But we will want to leave that to buy products that, that have global um, exposure, that's a Gucci and a Prada and all that. I believe that when we invest into the Ghanaian local business, that's the SMEs, we would elevate the Ghanaian market to the global standard. Because you wouldn't want to buy Ghanaian products and leave those products that have global recognition, the, the Gucci and the Prada. I believe that when we invest in the digital marketing and then workshops for um, these local businesses, it will promote tourism. Because we have a lot of talent in Ghana. When you go to Bongre, when you go to Kumase, there are a lot of people who are making products. But because they don't have the capital and the education to invest in this, they suffer to compete with these global companies. I think according to the United Nations, according to the United Nations, um, a minute please. According to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, in, the, in their report in 2021 and 2022, we witnessed a significant 40% increase, reaching to $41 billion in their report. But this is inadequate, because when we look at the Ghanaian market, I think a lot can be done. That is true, this digital marketing. Most of these local businesses doesn't know anything about um, what digital marketing and then branding. And I believe if um, they, are want to they want to register their companies, the prices that they take could be decreased. Uh, it will help these local businesses compete with these international companies, and then that will enhance, promote the Ghanaian tourism. Thank you. Hello, my, na hello, my name shirt. is Abbas Shields. Gentleman in the red shirt, this way, please. Oh. Yes, yes. After him, you will have it. Yeah, thank After you him. very much. After him. My name is Maxwell Odu. Uh, 
think since morning, I've listened to all the presentations given. And the only word I can use is Ghana, we are confused. I'm sorry for my grammar. We are totally confused. Because the whole world, every country, especially the development countries, are practicing one form of governance. Either socialism, capitalism, or communism. So I ask myself, Ghana, what form are we practicing? That is where the problem comes. What form of governance are we practicing? Now let's take countries like US, Canada. They depend on technology to boost their economy. So we call them a service nation. Let's see Singapore depend on tourism to boost their economy. Because of that, they have or they focus on planting of flowers. Let's see Australia depend on mining. Ghana, what do we depend on? And every country that practices all the three is confused. That is where Ghana lies now. <laughs> Ghana, Thank we are totally much. confused <laughs> because we don't know where we are going. Thank you very we are totally much. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> Hello. Thank so, you very, very much. <laughs> good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name, I'm very honored to be here today um, for this exciting National Economic Summit. My name is Abba Shields, and I am in the marriage and family life arena. All I've heard today, whilst has been attractive, inspirational, and applaudable, has also given me a little bit of concern. And my concern is just one thing, customer service. We have wild, fantastic, impressive ideas but it all starts with the person, the human person, and what the person is about. A, a little example, walking to lunch today, we had lovely, attractive young ladies showing us where to go for lunch. I asked a simple question on my way to lunch. Where is the washroom? I walked past six beautiful women who couldn't answer the question. I got to my destination only to be told the washroom was exactly where I had traveled from. Now this is the basic problem I think we have in our beautiful country. With, we're sitting on a gold mine, but if the person is not trained enough to understand the simple basic customer service, to understand that my role here is not just to look good and look attractive, but to give a service, a service which will pay me my income at the end of the day, then we are wasting our time. Thank you. <laughs> that, yeah. I think, would be a wonderful conclusion. I'll give you the very last one. I'll give you the very last one. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity. I think we all have said a very brilliant ideas, and I hope it's going to be taken into consideration. I'm just adding to what my big brothers and sisters said. I'm just giving example to the attractions of tourism. And we all believe that tourism can generate a major revenue to the state or to this country. Last week, I had opportunity to visit the zoo at uh, Kumasi. And what I experienced there is totally the reason why or reason for which we are not getting the revenue as expected because the reception there is very bad, which is we are not adding value to what we have. You cannot bring somebody outside the country to experience your country if there is no added value to you. So basically, is not attracted to even we, the Ghanaians. A typical example is what I'm talking about. As we speak now, Kumasi Zoo, we don't even have a giraffe there. 
I went there, and the animals there, some are not even fed. Yeah, they are, they, are, they are screaming for the food that you are having. Secondly, when we were there, I went there with my, hello, I went there with my daughters and my nephews. The youth were taking 12 cities, and the, the youngest one was, the kids were t uh, charged two cities. What we heard from them is, they cannot take us true. It's only be given to the people that they come in bulk or mass. So this is telling us that even some of us want to go to the nearest tourist site that we have in the country, but the reception or the customer service there is not attracting to us. The question that I asked them and the answer that I had from them was, the funding is not coming. So we, that we believe that we are having a lesson in government that probably or possibly 2025 is going to lessen to this kind of things. That the revenue that we need to run this country can be allocated rightly. Thank you. Thank you. I think the last Thank two you. contributions uh, bring us to a very fitting end. Oh to the last uh, segment. Okay. The contributions speak for themselves. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, the contributions? Yes, a very brief one, please. <laughs> My name is Samuel Kwame Forsen, and I'm very passionate about local government. The reason is simple. Every economic policy, no matter how you restructure it, must have a feet on the ground. And the closest one to the to the people is a functional local government structure. After listening to the, uh, the, the takings on the tourism, I believe that it is the one sector, the functional local government structure, that will add the people aspect to this tourism policy. And I am urging that close attention be paid to the development of a functional local government structure. So, I think the contributions are self-evident. So, we will bring this session to a close. Please, let's give ourselves a hand. You want to make closing remarks? All right. So, I'll give you two minutes each. Closing remarks. Two minutes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, let me close by saying that um, we need to acknowledge what the private sector, the tourism private sector, has done in this country and is doing. And it's up to government to engage them, encourage them. You don't have to wait for them to come to you. We need to extend our extension service to the private sector. Because private investment is no joke. The other day, I had an opportunity to travel to uh, a resort near Akosombo. From the Akosombo area to the place was just 10 kilometers. It took me two hours to get to the place. It is a disincentive. So that is what I would say. Thank you. Um, if I can just add one more. Um, we all want domestic tourism to grow because we know that it is the basis to sustain international tourism. But what I have realized is that Ghanaians don't have disposable income. You mentioned um, City FM Heritage Caravan. I think they do about two buses once a year. If we are able to organize and get Ghanaians to save towards travel, leisure travel, and it's just a matter of you paying 100 cities every month, you forget about it. At the end of the year, you have 1,200. So that everybody, it's not only those who instantly have disposable income to pay, so that a lot more Ghanaians can travel. 
I'm, 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 I'm hoping, I've been talking about this for almost, almost 10 years, I'm hoping a bank or an insurance company will take advantage of this so that Ghanaians will have some money that will be underwritten for them to travel to sites in Ghana and elsewhere. Thank you. Yes, finally, it appears that uh, funding, the funding of the tourism industry is, is a problem. I know about 10 years ago, um, the tourism levy was introduced, which is only 1% um, of tax uh, from the services in hotels and restaurants. It seems that that money hasn't been able to do much. But maybe if we could ring fence that money instead of diverting it into the consolidated fund, maybe we can use that money plus a bit of seed money to create a tourism development bank, which can then lend to potential stakeholders in the tourism industry, especially in the hotel industry. But I must commend the government for two projects that I've seen completed this year. The Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, I think it was last year that it was completed, and the numbers seem very encouraging, where the art center used to be. And also, a few weeks ago, the Bonyri Kinte um, factory has been opened in Bonyri, very beautiful edifice. We pray and hope that the National Cathedral will be completed. Which, which, in my opinion, is a fantastic idea. That could really host a lot of conventions. But then again, the financing needs to be looked at. Again, I think everybody needs to contribute to that project because that's a mega one. And then finally, the Marine Drive project. That one was, was uh, the sword was cut in December 2017, and it hasn't seen the light of day. I thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, the uh, Reverend Ben will take over. Gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for them. <clears throat> Finally, we are drawing the curtains on this very important summit. And then to help us give a keynote on proceedings of the day in a summarized form. Let's make welcome Dr. Emmanuel Abe. Please put your hands together for Dr. Emmanuel Abe. Um, please permit me to sit so that I can be able to um, use my laptop. So um, I'm supposed to kind of Bring, give some highlights on everything that has been happening throughout the day. But before I do that, I would like to thank um, the organizers of this summit. It's a fantastic um, opportunity for us to see how we can put our, uh, add some meat to what is found in the Great Transformation Plan, which I've read through, and I think it's, it's something that we should, we should, we should thank um, um, the Honorable Alam Tramati for bringing up the Great Transformation Plan. And more importantly, one of the things, I'm an academic, and these are things we kind of discuss. One of the important things of this summit is that beyond what we already know, there's some evidence of what must be done to ensure that the country can indeed transform. And that's one of the things I think is very fantastic about this particular summit. So we started the day with um, a panel discussion on the macroeconomic environment. And then um, under cluster one, one of the things, so cluster one was supposed to look at inflation, um, low competitive interest rates, stable currency, and expenditure management and control. One of the things that was highlighted was for the need for us to take a comprehensive look our, at our inflation targeting regime once more. It appears a bit too much focus on the supply side, and there is the need for the framework itself to be re-looked at. And Dr. John Kwachi made a very fantastic point that one of the things that must be done is to complement it with some demand management policies. So for instance, he says, 
monetary financing of the budget should be constrict and strictly controlled. There should be comprehensive steps to stabilize the exchange rate. Some focus should be placed on stabilizing some key items in our inflation basket, which is food, fuel, transport. He feels these are things that are driving the inflation rate, and some stability should be um, ensured to ensure that it is important. So that's one of the key things under how we can manage and ensure that our inflation rates remain low. In terms of interest rates, some fantastic points were made. For instance, they said the government should reduce its borrowing from banks, so, so more or less to ensure that a private sector can get enough funds for them to be able to, to produce. Government should streamline their bank tactics to reduce associated costs. They should reduce their primary cash reserve ratio and again, the issue of relooking at the inflation targeting regime was again pinpointed. And then there is a problem with the prime rate, that the prime rate is linked to other interest rates and some caution about how, about its management should, 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 be, should be looked at. And then the last part was the BOG and government should provide some financial support to parallel and specialized financial institutions, such as the Rural Bank, National Development Bank, Afri Exim Bank, to offer subsidized loans to SMEs and strategic sectors of the economy. When it comes, when it comes to how, how to ensure that our currency remains stable, one of the things that was pinpointed again by Dr. John Kwachi was export expansion, diversification, value addition, lo local manufacture of import substitutes, and I'm happy, the, I'm happy about the discussion about import substitution and how we should look at it very carefully because of the competitiveness of our, our firms, that if we open them up too much, the chances that they will survive is relatively low. Now, under the stable currency, again, Dr. John Kwachi made the point that the BOG should enforce FX market rules. They should gradually phase out FX surrender requirements, and they should review export retention ratios and negotiated with the mining negotiated with the mining company. And then the aspect about expenditure management and control, there's the need for us to relook at, to, to, the need for public sector, um, public sector reforms to ensure that it is of the right size. There's the need to reform statutory funds to make them efficient and fit for purpose. And then the most important part is for us to increase um, capex development. You can see that throughout all the presentations that were done, infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure is one of the key things that, that was highlighted. And then in increasing CapEx development is very, very, CapEx expenditure is very important to boost growth. So let me move on to the second presentation, which was about how do we increase financing for XMEs, taxation, revenue optimization, debt sustainability management. Mr. Winslow, if you give some points about how we can increase in, increase financing to the SME sector. For instance, he made the point that we should liaise with BOG to allocate a minimum of 12% of their profit after tax to industry. He also made the point that we should provide regulatory capital incentives to banks to give credit to SMEs. And then he mentioned about the Ghana investment based risk sharing system for agriculture lending, which he feels is very important and must be emphasized to ensure that financing goes to the SME. So then he spoke about revenue optimization. One of the things he mentioned was for the application of technology in revenue maximization to adequately equip revenue collection agencies, expand the task base by drawing in other sectors, reviewing GRA's organizational structure, review the governance structure of tax administration to promote accountability and leak access to essential public services. Example, tax tax payments. So let me, let, me, let me now move on to, I think, the second part, which appears to be one of my favorite, which is about industrial transformation. Some very key points were made as to the very specific things the country can do to ensure that the industrial sector can transform. So the first presentation was by Mr. Francis Osekusi, who spoke a lot about how do we boost local production and productivity. Well, the first point that he made was for the, the need for us to review the One District 1F and provide additional resources for its operationalization. He again point, point, um, 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 made some um, elaborated on the Ghana investment based risk 
sharing system for agricultural lending. He feels it's important to provide cover for strategic industrial sectors. And then he also mentioned about how tax incentives must, must, must be provided to boost local productivity. Um, I think what is again more um, interesting about this particular presentation is the strategic anchor industry that he has identified. Indeed, I'm an academic. I come from the Institute of Statistical Social and Economic Research. And some of the sectors that he has mentioned are indeed sectors that we are focusing on and pinpointing a lot of attention on. So, for instance, he mentioned about the automobiles, vehicle assembly and then components manufacturing, garment and textiles, pharmaceuticals, petrochemicals, integrated bauxite, aluminum, iron and steel, industrial salt, assembly of electronic and electrical and electronic appliances, agro industry, one of the key sectors that I think the DTP has again put some um, light on, and then manufacturing of machinery, plant and equipment. When it comes to how the SME should develop, export promotion and develop, Mr. Tudor Makam focused ex very um, exclusively on the national export strategy. He categorized all the categories that the the, 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 the report focuses on production and supply-based expansion, export market development, manpower development, training, incentives, and regulatory framework. What is, in fact, more unique about his presentation was how he says that there should be institutional support for enterprise and development. He mentioned the case of the Ghana enterprise agencies and the need for incentives to be provided for firms to enhance their competitiveness. He focused, he highlighted the need for the financing of SMEs, and then the business development te technology support services for SMEs, product development and marketing for SMEs, and access to industrial sites for SMEs manufacturing. manufacturing. And then, um, Mr. Well, there were some comments from the floor. One of the key things that I think catch, caught our attention was the need for attitudinal and cultural change. And it's, I think it's something that in the tourism sector, when the discussion was being held on the story sector again came out. There's the need for, and then I think the Guta president said, well, production is not complete and, and, and without um, the focus on distribution. I think that the discussion on distribution wasn't very, 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 but he wasn't very clear, but he made very, very important point. And I think one of the key takeaways from the discussion on the industrial sector is for us to start progging the low hanging fruits so um, an example was made of uh, the focus on agro-processing and that there should be, uh, uh, as much as possible, minimal value addition at farm gates. And this is something that came out very clearly. Um, under the, I think let me skip this for now. Let me go straight to the third plenary session where it is on new agricultural transformation. New agricultural revolution, sorry. So... Um, Dr. Henry and Nim someone made some very fantastic points. Um, um, for instance, under how we should enhance agriculture production and productivity, he first of all focused on the need for us to introduce a differentiated agriculture credit and financing scheme to support a national agriculture revolution. I think this is a very brilliant idea. And then the second one was for us to establish a coordinated and integrated agriculture research company. The idea is that let's facilitate the establishment of this company to coordinate all agri research and innovation. And I think this is a very fantastic idea. There's a need for us to register this company as a limited liability for it to be able to promote innovations. And then it will be the main platform for the distribution of agriculture technologies. He also mentioned about how we can promote climate smart technologies to mitigate climate change effects on, on production and how we can strengthen agriculture institutions and governance, governance systems. Um, he again spoke about how we can strengthen mass participation in agriculture and agriculture activities. I particularly liked the point he made about starting, we should start operating a farm and farm for life campaigns, fostering partnership with faith-based organizations to drive mass agriculture participation momentum, collaborate with security agencies to um, become more food sufficient. And then the school farm, I think I like that particular idea about most of the 
land around the school's line fallow, and there's the need for us to use them to enhance agricultural productivity. And then he spoke about how we can promote local assembling and manufacturing of agricultural machinery and, and equipment. Again, I like this idea about agropacks. And we, we, I think some, some, some of those elements can be found in the industrial sector, but building agro parks, agriculture project, processing, agriculture production and processing clusters is a very fa um, fantastic idea. And he mentioned that there's a need for it to be supported with irrigation, input credit scheme, and a comprehensive mechaniz mechanization services. Again, Dr. Enim Soma spoke about how we can increase investments in effective marketing, and the big, the big, the big thing is about post-harvest losses. For those in the agriculture sector, they know clearly the impact that post-harvest losses have been having on their productivity. I like the idea about how he says we should identify opportunities so that we can take advantage of the after for agriculture commodities. He says we should support the private sector with medium-term credit facilities to build modern post-harvest management facilities, which is very brilliant. And then he says we should build market infrastructure for agriculture commodities. And then under agriculture marketing and distribution, he mentioned about how we can increase investments in effective marketing and post-harvest systems. Let us develop a targeted value chain to meet the after opportunities. Let us strengthen and expand the commodity exchange market. Let us identify market opportunities in external markets for agriculture promoters and let us develop targeted value chains for this identified external market. He again spoke about how we can build efficient, cost-effective transportation systems. He spoke about how we could rely on, get an alternative to road transport by using, for instance, the, the Akosomo Dam. He says, let's, let's revamp and restructure the Volta Lake Transport Company with an expanded mandate and functions to deliver efficient waterway services. Let us coordinate private sector investment and incentives for the development of, a compet of competitive transport transportation of goods and people on the waterways. Well, there were some few comments. One, of, one which caught our attention was how agriculture must be professionalized so that it can become attractive for the youth and then making, sure, making use of making good use of um, services, example, veterinary services, then how do we uh, 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 strengthen our institutions, saying clearly that cooperatives must indeed work, and it's something that we should be able to take advantage to be able to um, um, enhance productivity. And the last part about the agriculture product was the very key point that you made, that if you want prices to reduce, there are two things you do. Enhance productivity, reduce transaction costs, and agriculture products, agriculture prices will, will, will decline. In the last and the, um, the last plenary session, which was on tourism, another favorite of mine, um, some very key suggestions were made about how we could boost tourism infrastructure and support services to ensure that it can become an opportunity for us to be able to transform. The issue of PPPs were mentioned. De let us develop our beachfront properties and tourist enclaves in leading local cities. Let us intensify the private sector to be able to develop motels and other lower tier hospitality. Establish a viable tourism desk at the district level. And then the issue of taxes, that the hotels, the amount of taxes and levies that the hotels are paying are just too high and then there's a need for that to be reduced. Let us incentivize, introduce incentives to attract foreign and domestic private investments into the tourism sector and let us in incentivize major international hotel chains and investors to establish a hotel and hospitality facilities. I think one of the things that was also mentioned by Mr. Kwekulomo Menu in terms of how we can enhance tourism infrastructure and support services was for us to incentivize major international hotel chains and incentives to establish hotel and hospitality facilities, increase investments in the development of infrastructure, and indeed establish a world-class convention center to promote Ghana as a prime tourist destination. Again, in terms of how we can brand our tourism, there's the need for us to recalibrate the responsibilities of the various 
tourism organizations to ensure that there is a single organization that is focusing on the branding and marketing of Ghana as a tourist destination. And then one fantastic point that I enjoyed so much is about how we can leverage our foreign machines and embassies so that they can be vehicles for branding and promoting Ghana. And then how we can engage our uh, Ghanaians living abroad and those in the diaspora to be brand ambassadors of Ghana and how we can identify and support private sectors, private sector actors involved in the branding and marketing of tourist destination. Then there was the need for us to revamp and recapitalize the operations of the, Ghana, the brand Ghana office. Again, this um, developing humans, human resources and skill training appears very key in terms of how we can develop the tourism sector, and this was, this was captured. And then maybe just a bit on how one of the few comments that came from the floor, which I found interesting, was for us to promote event tourism, take um, digital marketing and branding a bit more seriously, and promote Ghana as a leading, a leading creative arts event location in Africa and the world, take advantage of World Jazz Festival, and all of those things to promote Ghana. I think that should be it for now. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for Doug. That's a very quick one. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, we are drawing the curtains. And next online, we have brief remarks by representative of stakeholders, interest groups. Next, on, after that, is closing remarks by Honorable Alan Chiramante, founder and leader, Movement for Change and convener of the summit. Then closing prayer, and after the closing prayer, we will have a photo session, and after the photo session, we depart from here. Now, we have from Association of Ghana Industries, we rep Mr. Sandy Osei Ajiman, Chairman of Cosmetics and Beauty Products, Cluster and former Board Chairman of Ghana Export Promotion Authority. Please let us make welcome Mr. Sandy Osei Ajiman. Then, no, come, come up, sir. then also from the Chamber of Commerce, that Ghana Chamber of Commerce, the Vice President, let's make welcome Mr. Steve Abbas from Chamber of Commerce. Then Guta, Ghana Union of Traders Association. Mr. Joseph, or Pastor Joseph Paddy, the National PRO. Put your hands together for him as well. So gentlemen, three minutes each. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. You're not tired, are you? All right, we're almost done. Um, I represent AGI, Association of Ghana Industries, and they gave me some few pointers to share with the people here, especially to the convener. And I have about eight points, simple point. This is what the AGI expects from the next leader of the country. Industry expects long-term policies that will ensure microeconomic stability. Two, policies that support local manufacturing. Three, policies to promote investor confidence to attract good investment within real sectors. Four, AGI expects to see significant investment in value chain development to ensure consistent and reliable supply of raw materials to feed industry at competitive cost. Five, we expect to see the government invest in skills development, especially technical skills. Six, industry needs financing schemes that promote medium to long-term lending. Seven, AGI expects reliable and consistent supply of electricity at competitive cost to drive our industrialization agenda. Eight, 
the need to re-examine international treaties and bilateral agreements, especially if after UK-Ghana partnership, interim partnership agreement, economic partnership agreement to support local industry. This is what I'm adding. I expect the next government to sit down with Bank of Ghana and make a structural adjustment so that interest rate will not become a single digit number. That way, that way businesses can compete. There are great things that we're talking about, they can compete. There's nowhere in the world where you borrow money at 30% as an industry and expect to survive. So the next government has to make sure that whatever the reason is, they have to sit down, even they have to bully them, they should bully them so because nobody has ever given us a reason why the, Go the Bank of Ghana start interest rate at 29%, the prime rate or whatever, 20. it doesn't make sense and it won't make sense if you have to industrialize. This is me, I'm saying this for, on behalf of AGI and this is my personal plea. The next government has to make sure that the money that we borrow to stay in business should come down to single digits. One last thing, I'm done. Why are people calling me, huh? Okay. AGI expects that any government that comes into power must implement the aforementioned policies to support local industry. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, your Excellency, um, the President of the Chamber of Commerce extends his greetings to you and sends his appreciation for the work you did with us at your, at during your time as the Minister for Trade and Industry. And he requests, he requests that moving forward, your doors, and hopefully your doors will not be closed to us so that we can always come to you as you have always had an open door policy. Let me also take this opportunity to appreciate uh, the presenters today. But amazingly, we didn't see a lot of the youth doing the presentation. And I know that you've been coming for the youth, so please next time, let's see that. On today's team, building On today's team, building a nonpartisan consensus for National Economic Development Plan, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we think that it has not come at a better date than today, but it's never too late. Um, now, it goes on to the question of what kind of governance do we, governance system, do we want as a people? Is it the one party takes all democracy? Is it the one party states as practice in China and Dubai? And my favorite one is the multi party consensus democracy, which is the coalition governance, which is practiced in Europe and, say, uh, most especially um, Israel. I want to go on to give an example. Assuming that on the issue of um, free SHS, People have been calling for its review. Because it's a one-party state, assuming that our system, our governance system was said that it was a coalition government, and a member of the coalition decided to step out of the coalition, which will make the government non-functional, obviously the government will listen. So we are looking at a state where, or a state where in Ghana, our election will be for instance, a coalition government, so that all of us can share ideas and make our country uh, move forward. Um, I want to, very soon I'll be leaving, but I want to leave a quote that I read. It says, transformation does not occur by chance. It requires bold and ambitious policy interventions. Let us not be hunted by the fear of failure, but rather by being inspired 
by the challenges of success. And this was said by his honorable, honorable Alan Kujo Chamati, the, the founder for Movement for Change and the former minister for training and industry. Last but not the least, as we left for the, the lunch, and I was sitting at the table, I realized, and it's not just today, but a lot of people have been grumbling about the economy and all of that. Honorable Your Excellency, there's one thing I've personally experienced, and I keep saying, it is better under any situation to be a citizen of a country than being a refugee on somebody's country. As we move on towards election 2024, Your Excellency and all other members of the society, our plea is that we should have peace in our country, election 24, for us to go forward. For God and country, thank you so much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Honorable Alan Kujuja Martin, let me say good evening to you all. I'm standing on behalf of my Chair President is engaged in another program. Uh, today, if I should be joyful in anything, today is my joy that we are redefining. <laughs> yes. Yes. That we are redefining politics. Because what we got, to, we know is that politics is a dirty game. That's how it's redefined. And therefore, the people who play politics then are dirty. But policy, politics is about policy making. And I believe all of us here, we are not dirty. That is why you have these good policies we saw today. Very brilliant policy that we're going to run the country with. I was walking somewhere and then people were engaged in the program. And they were talking on politics. And then they mentioned Honorable's name. And then, because I know him personally, I stood and I was listening. And they said, Honorable is too gentle to be a politician. <laughs> it's too gentle to be a politician. Because all those people in politics are dirty people. And I said, no. Then I said, the right people to be in politics are the people who are needy. Because if you give us bad policy, we'll have a bad economy. And we thank God we have such a person like this. You know, all the presentation is something Guta has been talking about. That the challenge of this country is cost of doing business. The difficulty of our country is cost of doing business. No businessman can survive under the dispensation where tax rate is about 22%. No businessman can survive when duty rate is about 50%. No businessman can survive when our corporate tax is about 25%. This is the difficulty of this country. And as we know, and we are talking today, if we are able to do something about this, some of these things, we remember we, we told Bank of Ghana governor that why can't you cap interest rate to a certain level? Because your policy rate alone is about 29%. And then interest rate is, is almost 35 to 40%. Let me pose this question. Which businessman can survive under this rate? No businessman. And that is why we are here today. We want a government who will make cost of doing business in this country extremely affordable. When we are able to get these policies, then we will grow the economy. I know a woman who is in business for almost 10 years, and he's been importing battery cars, uh, car batteries. For the past 10 years, he import one container. So if that business is not growing, how do your revenue grow? And in that battery container, he's paying 200,000 
as duty. And his profit is just about 40000 So government is making more money than the businessman who is into business. But the, if government is to take the 40000 and give the 200000 to this businesswoman, she would then import two containers. Then your revenue grows. The next year, import three containers. Then your revenue grows. But for the past 10 years, one container. So the business is standing. So businesses of these countries is not growing as a result of our high tax rate. And this is the challenge of this country. And we believe strongly that the wisdom that our honorable minister carries, if we are to bring all these good policies we've seen today on board, Ghana will move forward. And Ghana will grow. We want to come out with this, that Guta support these policies that we've seen today. And very soon, Guta is also going to present our Traders Manifesto to the Honorable Minister. Because we have nowhere to go. We will stay here and revive the economy. Ghana will grow again. Ghana will move on again. Ghana will rise again. Under the leadership of people with vision, people with ideas. In fact, we went to a meeting with the Honorable Minister one day, and we were so angry. And we were looking at a short solution. And then when we were done, then he, was, he, did, he did a presentation. And when we left the room and we were going to our cars, we started insulting ourselves. We, said, we didn't see what this man has seen. <laughs> and what he was talking about for was far better than the solution we were proposing. Put your hands together for this man. That's a great man Ghana has got. And we'll go make good, good use of him. I want to thank all of you for coming, for your time, your energy. And I want to leave you with one tourist attraction area that when we close, you are tired. You can go and book one room in Moving Peak, pay some $300, and stay here the following morning, go home. <laughs> you see, these are the difficult, these are the challenges we are talking about. But somebody traveled to Dubai, you can get a nice hotel, pay just $50 a night. And here we are paying 300 How many of you have traveled with your family and come and lodge in Moving Peak for two days? Cost of doing business in this country is high because of corporate taxes and their charges. We need to do something about this country. Ghana is so beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Says, Please, can we put our hands together? One tourism idea. I think I also have another tourism idea for you. And that tourism idea is we are, we are not just presenting Honorable Alan Tremante as, a, as an independent presidential candidate, but he alone, he's a center of tourist attraction, an iconic personality. Considering all his achievements in successive government, I think that if you and I should join hands together to preach him alone, it is enough to ignite hope, especially among the young people. Trust me, God has blessed us with a personality. And for me, it is time we call on our family, friends, for them to know that all hope is not lost yet. Ladies and gentlemen, if you agree with me, then I would highly recommend you to go to all the social media handles of Alan Tremonton, and you will find some synoptic quotes of today's event, which I would want to read some to you. I am fighting for a noble cause to bring economic prosperity to our great nation. He goes on to say, we must formulate a plan that will move Ghana from poverty to prosperity. 
all these beautiful quotes are on all the social media handles. The technical team will display all the social media handles. You can see them here. We have Facebook there. We have um, YouTube there. You can go to other social media handles and then you look for him there. And let us promote him. Let the diaspora know that there is a credible person to lead this country. A man full of ideas, a man who believes in action, he is result-oriented, and above all, his integrity is impeccable. There is no doubt about it. So, as part of the ideas for tourism, I think Alan is enough to bring revenue to this country as well. Then he goes on to say, millions of Ghanaians are deeply worried about our current economic circumstances. What they are looking for now are real solutions to our problems. Get these quotes. I have already displayed about three of them on my WhatsApp status. Equally get there, please, and then let us promote this man. Finally, he said, we must mobilize all talents for the development of our dear nation, Ghana. Our leadership must move beyond party manifest manifestos to following a national development plan. And I think that as part of that mobilization, that is why we are all gathered here. Now, I would want to encourage everybody, you equally mobilize your community, mobilize your household, mobilize every Ghanaian, because the reality or the execution of all the fantastic ideas here that we have actually talked about can only be achievable when Alan becomes the next president of Ghana, which he will become. Ladies and gentlemen, on this note, let us put our hands together and make welcome the incoming president whilst he gives us a closing remarks. Please be upstanding. Put your hands together. Acknowledge him. Put your hands together. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as I sat quietly through the presentations, I was more than convinced that the people of Ghana are yearning for a decent and constructive conversation about how we move our country forward. And I'd like to commend all of you for the very constructive insights, for the excellent presentations, and for the summary that was provided by our chief rapporteur. With the quality of that summary, I'm not sure you have any appetite for a long speech. But I'm indeed very grateful that you responded to my invitation to attend this particular event. As you are all aware, when I launched the movement for change, I made it clear to the nation that there were five dominant themes underpinning the movement. First, that it was clear that the majority of Ghanaians want to move beyond the duopoly of the two dominant parties and are tired of the divisive politics in our country. Secondly, it is clear that the majority of Ghanaians are looking for an all-inclusive government, a government by the people, for the people, and of the people. A government that would have representation not just from political parties, but from the business community, 
from our religious organizations and from various stakeholder groupings in our country. Thirdly, I made it clear also that it is evident that Ghanaians want to move beyond the manifestos of political parties and are looking for a national development plan that they can all sign up to. For I made it clear that the majority of Ghanaians are looking for behavioral and attitudinal change in Ghanaians. And last but not the least, that we are looking forward to constitutional reforms that would enhance the quality of governance in our country. I'm pleased that the good Lord has given me the foresight, the energy, and the resources to convene this summit, which is a reflection of the five dominant themes that I've just outlined. And I'm very grateful for the very kind comments from the distinguished representatives from the AGI, from the Chamber of Commerce, and from Guta. There's a point that was made, and I'd like to re-echo it, that politics is about policies. And the most powerful tool available to any government to make changes in the quality of lives of people is policy making. When in 2018, as Minister for Trade and Industry, I started talking about the need to identify new sectors that would diversify our economy away from cocoa and gold. And I listed 10 strategic sectors. And I started with the development of the auto industry. There were many people who were not convinced that it was a wise decision. But for me, it was obvious that if you look at the 10 most powerful economies in the world, they also happen to be the leading auto manufacturing countries. And you can name them from the United States to China, to Japan, to Germany, to France. So there must be something in the sector and in the industry that correlates with transformation. And because government's most powerful tool is policy making, all I needed to do, it doesn't cost money, it's just brain power, was to put together an automobile vehicle assembly policy. That was all. I didn't need to borrow to bring resources into the country, just policy. And because of the quality of the policy, within a matter of one and a half years, we have five out of the six global auto companies all assembling vehicles in Ghana. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world that for an entry-level market that you can have with a small market like ours, that you can have all the major companies competing to assemble vehicles here. And for the first time in the history of many of these companies, they are entering into a new market 
And they are not just assembling only one model. They are assembling four or five different models. Volkswagen is assembling five different models. When did you last hear of Volkswagen in Ghana? Those were the days when you see Beatles on our roads. They are assembling Taramont, uh, Tiguan, Polo, and, and, and Passat, you know. So, as lawyers, we say the matter speaks for itself. If you have a government that understands the value of policy, that country will move forward. And that is why I'm so pleased that we've had this opportunity to have a decent conversation about policies that can transform our economy. The Minister of Finance has no right to be taking credit for the marginal improvements that we are see seeing in the economy. Because it is clear that it was against Ghana going to the IMF. And I can say with pride that I was one of the few senior leaders in government that made a decision that we had gotten to a point where we had no choice. That's what leadership is about. But let us remember that we are not out of the woods yet. What the IMF intervention is doing for Ghana and will do for Ghana is to bring us to ground zero. Right now, we are under the water. The IMF package will bring us to ground zero. It's a three-year program. Now, unless we have a government that has a vision of transformation to succeed the IMF program, we'll go back underwater. And this has to happen by the beginning of 2025 to ensure that we leapfrog and have a quantum leap that will not take us back to where we came from. And that is what this whole agenda of transformation is about. Transformation is a revolutionary change. It is a significant change that allows you to absorb both domestic and external shocks. The only reason why we are where we are is because the structural vulnerabilities of our economies lend themselves to your inability to absorb any shocks that come your way. And you cannot determine the type of shocks that would occur, particularly in the external environment. So all you need is to build a strong, resilient economy that can withstand any shock, domestic or external. And that's what the transformational policies that we've discussed this evening, this evening is about. <laughs> and as I've indicated, our politics in Ghana does not allow us to harness the best talents in this country. And without people who know what to make things happen, there's no way you can go forward. So please join me to bring the best and the brightest of the best into government. And, and that is the only way, that is the only way Ghana will rise again. It begins with the right policies. 
after the policy, you enter into the path of programming and the development of projects and the costing of those projects. If you have time and you reflect soberly about the elements of what we've discussed today, you have hope for the future of our country. And so I'm going to prepare the budget for 2025 before the elections. The budget for 2025, we will work together on it before the general elections. And it will show us clearly how we are going to move this country forward. Because remember, with our current situation, we have literally exited ourselves out of the international capital markets. With a type of domestic debt exchange program that we executed, we have also exited ourselves from the domestic market. So when the three billion is finished, where is the capital going to come from? When the three billion, and remember, as it comes, it goes. So where is the capital going to come from? You cannot borrow externally, and you cannot borrow domestically. So the only window available for us is private, domestic, and foreign capital. And that is why we have to build a strong partnership with the private sector. It is the private sector that holds the key to Ghana's survival. And that is why many of these policies, policies are speaking to what it will take to create an environment that will be attractive for both domestic and external foreign capital to come into our country. I'm very hopeful for Ghana's future. But it's about leadership. And it's not just about the economy, it's also about governance. It's about infrastructure. It's about the quality of our social services delivery, our health education. And so as I explained during my opening remarks, this is just one cluster under the GTP. We have the governance cluster. And because of the importance of governance in ensuring economic progress and prosperity, our next summit will be the National Gov Governance Summit. So I like in drawing down the curtain on this excellent event, I'd like to express my profound gratitude to all of you. And I realize some of you even came from outside uh, Accra. To profoundly thank you for taking time of your very busy schedule. Friday is always a very busy day. And also for the quality of the inputs that you have provided. I'm very confident that with this kind of diverse gathering, people from the private sector, from different political parties, you, you, you heard them being announced, from our traditional leaders, from our religious leaders, 
from the young people who are the future of our country. I'm very confident that Ghana will rise again. So, thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank my colleagues who have been working um, diligently in the background to support the organization of this event. I'd also like to thank the management of Moving Pick. And then indeed, all those who have made this event what arguably has been a big success. Thank you all. God bless you. Don't exit the hall yet. We have some small chops outside, and then we we taking a photo shoot with with honourable. And then please be upstanding whilst we take the closing prayer. Let's make welcome engineer Alaji Ishak Omar whilst he give us the Islamic closing prayer. Please, can we be silent whilst we take the closing prayer? Salam alaikum. Our closing prayer for today is Assalam Allahumma salli Allah Sayyidina Naibina Muhammad wa Allah lihe wa salam. Ya Allah, we submit ourselves to you and we employ you for your wisdom and guidance. Ya Allah, put a hedge of safety around us. Protect our bodies, minds, and emotions from any kind of evil and harm. Ya Allah, penetrate our hearts with your love and reverence today and always. We pray that we never stray from the path of deeds and that you give us a future filled with your best promises. Amen. Ya Allah, bless us with good health, wellness, prosperity, and steadfastness in worshiping you alone. And please, heal the ailment of the sick among us with your sacred healings. Ya Allah, forgive us our shortcomings and forgive our parents and all past ones, all their trespasses, and grant them general to fill those. For you are the most merciful. Ya Allah. Ya Rahman. Ya Rahim. Ya Mulik. May Allah be pleased with us and accept our closing prayers. Amen. Rabbana Atina Fidriya. Asanata Ophile Rata Asanata Okina and Zabana. Sivila Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Rahman Rahim, Malik Yomidin, 
iyaka na amudu wa iyaka na astain ahedina suratal mustaqim suratal lazina al amtalin gayil waqlu ba allah wa dadalina amen thank you sir please then that is we are taking photos all the panelists will take a group photo with honorable and after that all the elders